with that kid named Sneeko. I don't know. <laughs> I did not. I can't believe Daddy Joe talked about Sneeko, bro. I can't believe it happened. What that kid thought. First of all, he's so silly for doing that, for agreeing to do that with Sean Strickland. You're about to have a really bad day. I don't know how that guy's doing yeah, right now. He's probably not doing well. I can see you can find that video because it's so hard to watch. He beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> Bro, I think you're all a little gay for liking this. This is what happens when you go online too much. You look like this goofy ass idiot. If you're a man watching this, do not turn into this. They love getting reactions like this. They want to go clip it up and they're going to make me see they're going to put intense music and I'm going to go bar. Bots do not. Oh my god, the amount of anxiety I have in my chest right now, bro, is insane. First of all, <laughs> y'all better go like this video because that was so good, bro. That was so good. Fuck, the absolute annihilation of Sneeko. I'm ready, bro. Feels good to be back. Self-help as a genre has gone through a lot of evolutions throughout my time on the internet. Mm -hmm. There's always been prophets and preachers, truth seekers and self-deceivers. With the amount of options and personalities available to you, it can be pretty easy to get lost in the sauce. The Bible says God created the world in 24 hour increments. Evolution is nonsense. Equal rights can also mean equal fucking lefts. I'm actually gonna teach you how to grow a bigger pee pee. No, there was a guy. No, I never shoot. <laughs> but uh, I'm not really interested in giving you some objective analysis of all the self-help content available to you. It doesn't really interest me. In fact, um, please take note that brown boys. Those were all brown boys, right? Was there a white boy in that? A lot of the black and brown boys have uh, come from like traditional, especially religious backgrounds. And I think there is this sort of understanding that white people got a lot more money and time and also rebellion on their hands to be a little bit more progressive, obviously. But they also have less connection with their families and also cut off like their grandmas, you know, for being a little different. But I do think that correlates and I just want to pay attention to that bubble difference is that a lot of the man and metasphere bubbles are very specific kind of white men or very specific type of black men and or brown men. And I think there's something really interesting about that. Because it also tells you like where they're coming from, why they kind of espouse sort of traditional values, but have a twist on it. Um, because uh, again, there is a twist on it. It's not exactly as traditional as some traditional, but it's got a, it's got that vibe. If I'm being completely honest, right now, well, I'm just looking for a fine. <laughs> Let's see who's there to take on. There's the Death Star Delts himself. Oh, oh butt fuck you, dude. <laughs> There's Adonis. I've been a little bitch my entire life. Wow. 
There's a testicle munching false god. The man has been eating cow testicles. I mean, there's plenty of options, really, when you think about it. Hey, Sneeko. How's it going, man? Yo, he got hazel eyes, girl? Stop. You wanna know why I picked you? It's pretty simple, really. You and I? We have a lot in common. We both got our start making Call of Duty videos. We both learned and grew. Oh, baby Sneeko. Baby Sneeko's so sweet. On YouTube, we gain popularity for our opinions, but also because we've got style. Our viewers have seen our highs and our lows. And we wear our flaws like badges of honor. Same height, same age, both addicted to coke. Hey, but that's enough about me, okay? Let's take a look at who you are. Nico is a thought leader who lives by trying Zico, to seek the truth, even though he Zico, can't explain was born what on that September truth 8th, is. When he my first joined the platform on April 9th, he to tell the truth. You don't talk about the issues. That All right, that's enough. Sneeko, you already know who you are, right? Who am I? Right? Sort of. He's on a journey. See, despite the projection that he's always tried to maintain of himself as, you know, an independent creator, a free mind, a thought leader, Sneeko has always been looking for a master, you know? Yeah, but he's been really honest with that. Just FYI, not just because, like, I know Sneeko a little bit, like, a little bit, right? You've, you guys have basically seen our interactions on the internet. Look, Sneeko has never been afraid to admit he's looking for someone to look up to. So... Just FYI, if you've ever listened to Sneeko, he's always made it clear he's dumb, he's learning, he's trying to figure shit out, and he's copying what people he admires does, and that's who he, what he's decided to do, right? So he's, he's obviously pretending to be a thought leader because that's what the men in his sphere have also done. They pretend to be thought leaders, and then they make the money because their viewers are so desperate for someone to tell them what to do that eventually they make the money they need to make to also convince their their viewers that they're justified in listening to them because look how rich they are. Someone to raise him up, to lead him down a path of success. That's right, Sneeko's always been looking for it. Daddy. You see, Sneeko, you found that with Mr. Beast. With Mr. Beast, it was crazy because I knew him for years. And then out of nowhere, he blew up. And then he hired me, which was a great opportunity. He paid me well. But nice. it hurt your ego for him to go from being your peer to your employer. I just couldn't get over the fact that I was working for them instead of with them. I didn't want to be the guy in Mr. Beast's videos. I wanted to be Mr. Beast. The last video we did together, we got crazy views. It was number one on trending. But then I didn't get the call back to work with them again that summer. His manager said, nah, you don't need to come anymore, Never mind." I don't think I'm getting the credit I deserve. So naturally, you made a exposed video on him. Right after I got fired, I was tight. I made like a, a Mr. Beast exposed video trying to like get some redemption from it. Everyone said, don't make that video. Don't try to expose him. But I did it anyway. You found that with Keemstar, I, I had an opportunity to work for him. I got the job right away. I think the reason I'm interested in Sneeko's introspection journey is I'm waiting, to real, I'm waiting for him to realize everyone does it. I'm waiting, him for, I'm waiting for him to realize you can make an exposed video about everybody you work for who is focused on materialism and ego. Anyone who's in this game for ego could be exposed. Because ego is fragile and it's built off of very shaky values. But if you go for content creators that are very thoughtful and compassionate and loving, like they're not going to fuck you over. But yeah, absolutely. If you're in it for like money and ego and clout, then you're playing a completely different game with people that could always be exposed in some way. But even the exposure is just saying, look, a human's being human. It's like, okay. Even when you expose people, you're just saying like a human's being human. And people don't care, by the way. They don't care if people are liars and scammers and they don't. They say they care. But if you look at the details of how people live their life, you can't care outside of being um, an individual. If you care as an individual, you'll live your life sort of in adjacent to that to the best of your ability. But if your community says that, the community is probably not being as honest, right? The community just wants to hate somebody. But you wanted me to do a reading. I did the reading and he didn't like it. And then when I told you, it wasn't good privately. Instead of taking that as professional criticism, I just thought, who's this guy to tell me my work isn't good? You couldn't accept the fact. He even got a deal with Andrew Schultz for a second, but then they weren't going to pay him as much as he was making as a YouTuber. Sneeko's talented. No one could argue that. The question is, is he ready to look at humility? Humility is very hard. Asking people to be humble is incredibly hard. Nobody had humility going after Hassan yesterday. Having humility is an incredibly difficult thing to do because it means you have to like recognize like it's not all about you 
and you don't have the answer for everybody. Humility is very fucking difficult. That you did a bad job. I'm the talented one. I heard I was talented my whole life. I'm glad that it was bad because I'm not on his channel right now. And then you made an exposed video about him. So I made an exposed video on him too. I wanted views and subs. And I disguised it as this whole morality thing. Like I'm too good for this content. What happened was I realized that you are not someone that I should associate with. Don't cry, dude. That isn't the reason that I didn't get the job. I don't like Keemstar. You gave me the finger. You, you disrespected me. The reason was that I just wasn't good enough. Just to show everyone here what a fucking ungrateful person you are, your channel got shut down. Me and my team sat there and worked to try to get your channel back. I'm not mad that you took my private conversation, put it out there, and because it just goes to show what a dishonest, unloyal, untrustworthy person you truly are, Sneeko. He found one in Andrew Schultz. Yeah, this happened repeatedly. Andrew oh, yeah. Schultz offered me a job, like an editing job. But he was too Jewish, so he made an exposed video about him. I'd send it's not an exposed video. I saw those videos. It was just him talking about his experience with this. Sneeko's always been very transparent. They're not like fake videos, but I do think that Sneeko doesn't have his values in it. He doesn't know his values. So he doesn't, he just knows he's upset, but he doesn't know why. And that's why he hurts people. Sneeko absolutely like mistreats women and does things that I don't think are valuable. But often people don't care about those things in people as long as like, um, like, don't date these people, right? Like, everyone knows somebody who's, like, not the greatest, like, boyfriend who, like, serial cheats or, like, is a fuck boy or whatever. Like, just don't date them. But I don't think Sneeko knows what his values are. And I think a lot of people are – he's just Sneeko-focused. But, like, a lot of people in this space, Fosh is Vosh-focused, Hassan is Hassan-focused, Destiny is Destiny-focused, Sneeko is Sneeko-focused. All these men are so in their fucking egos. And I can still find ways to be compassionate – about them and for them like I can I can understand why they got to where they are that's not difficult right but of course like they don't have any values that's why when temptation hits them they often will fuck people over because why not like why not because at the end of the day it's about like surviving as an individual like in their perspective and that's the only issue I have with these big egos is like look I can get along with all of you but like all of you got to own the fact that like when it comes down to it, you're more than happy to throw people under the bus because like your values are non-existent. Your ego is there, though. And I think that's fine. That's very human, you know, like laughing emojis when I said no. That's what you get, you cocky bitch. You fucking Waluigi looking cunt. Dave Chappelle he gave me this hundred dollar bill. Nice. Says, Dave Chappelle. But apparently he talks about trans people too much. It's weird because like he said that he made this whole thing about kindness and then did 30 minutes of trans jokes. Chappelle's last special was very mid, yo. It's just like, why do you keep talking about trans people over and over again? It's just like, yo, shut up about trans people. It feels weird. Like already the narrator is saying like Sneeko can't have an opinion. This is something different than the people who have helped him. But that's also the biggest part of the issue in the industry I find is like people want you to be friends with them, but they want you to never share your real opinion about them either. Like, that feels really strange to me. And I'm not saying Sneeko's honest about his opinion. I'm not sure he knows his own opinion. But it's also okay for him to say, like, his special was mid. But also, I like Dave. Maybe it's just his ADHD. To be honest, like, neurodivergency plays a huge role in this. Somebody left a comment on my video and says, Brittany says her inside thoughts out loud. You're not supposed to say the inside thoughts out loud, Brittany. And I was like, yeah, I think a lot of neurodivergent people would rather just say it out loud. But it also is kind of like, it can hurt your feelings. And it can be kind of mean. And it can be kind of unnecessary. And I see a lot of that in Sneeko because I, yeah, he's neurodivergent, right? So like that makes a lot of sense to me that he would say those things. So is Steven, by the way, and so is Vosh. All of those men say their inside thoughts out loud constantly. They don't have the, the right filters for the neurotypicals to handle. That's why they get in trouble a lot. This fucking idiot, that fucking idiot, you're super shameless about who you'll fucking latch on to. So he started streaming. And that was when he discovered a truly worthy sensei, a wise man who opened his eyes to the true oh nature God. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy! I want to tell you something, <gasps> my boy. Yes, Daddy? I have the biggest dick in the world. This girlfriend, I really like her, but she has these male friends. Make her choose, you are the friends. She's gonna fuck one of them eventually, otherwise. Like, what are you delaying this for? She obviously is gonna get drunk one night and suck some dick. My girlfriend's gonna suck another man's dick tonight. If I let her out of my sight. I literally agree with everything he's saying. My girlfriend's gonna 
Who the fuck do you like? Who do you look up to? I don't look up to anyone, bro. You should have a role model. Why? Every man should have a role model. So how do you act? How do you base your decisions? Interesting. Interesting. On what I think is right. Who do you think acts right and who do you think acts wrong? Someone like Tate. You think Tate acts right? Yeah. Man, people who don't understand the appeal of Tate are so out of touch with what it's like to be a teenager. Tate lives the exact lifestyle that young kids have been programmed to desire since they were fucking born. He's rich as fuck. He's a fucking kickboxing champion. Fast cars, fast fortunes. I mean, hell, mm -hmm. he's even having sex with the girls in these kids' classes. You're a hall. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck. No about me. 21, I don't care. If you were to start lying. Ugh. Men are gross and saying I'm fucking all these 15 year old nothing. He did not lose his father. Leo says Sneeko lost his father and I think that's the reason why he's kind of looking for a role model. Sneeko's dad is alive. His family's fine. I heard his family are actually pretty good people but like Sneeko doesn't he doesn't admire that. He's not like he doesn't want a normal life. He wants a Tate life. Like Sneeko's looking for materialism. That's why he's unhappy. But Sneeko's parents are alive. Like as far as I know they're alive. They were alive last year when I talked to him. They're alive. He died recently? No, really? Did he really? That's so sad. That's a bummer, dude. Losing your dad is no joke, bro. 15, sorry, 16 year old women or 18 year old women, whatever the law is in America. 18? It's 18 usually. You 18. get married at 16. I mean. All right, so in Romania, 16. Sorry. So Vivian's been with me six years. She's completely head over heels in love with me. She wants kids with me, everything, everything, everything. Men are gross. Men are gross. And we met and we felt whatever, we're in love. When I bring on new girls, I usually pair them with Vivian. Because Vivian's younger. Melissa's like 28, Vivian's like 21. Bruh. One of my main chicks has 200,000 Instagram followers and I took her virginity when she was 17. I want to earn my respect too. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be like that. So it's no wonder why kids and this idiot would defend him to the death. He's their ideal ego. An attack on Tate is an attack on their identity. Like a lot of people think like you too. They're like, I don't agree with everything he says, but some of the stuff he says. What's wrong with that, bro? That's literally called having your own opinion. I wonder if it's like so much, like so much is like, again, I don't know what Sneeko's truest, truest thoughts are or Sneeko's truest, truest desires. Um, but I would say like, just like, again, if women are willing to engage with Sneeko's, engage with Destiny's, engage with Tate's, engage with men who actively and publicly with all of their chests say they will cheat and abuse you in a different capacity, right? The spectrum. And they will do things with you. Like that is your choice. And you can try to save a hoe all you want, girl. Like I'm here for your, like you can consent to this. But I would say like that kind of like says something about you a little bit. Just tells me where you're at. No big deal. I totally get it. It's a journey. Um, but you don't have to, right? Like you don't have to date Sneeko. You don't have to date any of these people. But again, like, and all of them have different spectrums of abuse or toxicity, right? Like, Destiny and Sneeko are and sex traffickers, right? And allegedly and probably Sne uh, Tate is to some extent. I mean, I think he is, but that's my opinion. My opinion. Okay. I can have opinions. I can have thoughts. And so, again, I think on a spectrum you can choose. But if, you know, look at your life and look at the way it's going. Like, I am holding out that Sneeko in 10 years will have a completely different outlook on life. Remember that these men are in different age groups, right? I think Destiny and Tater in their 30s and Sneeko's in his 20s. So they're living completely different, like, lives right now. But yet they're all shooting for, like, status and materialism and women and all these other things. Which is, like, you do you, right? But obviously, like, I wouldn't recommend involving myself with one of the – this is my values – you don't have to get with any of them, right? Leave them alone. I am the truth. I want to spread. I can see the matrix. I don't want to get people out of it. You are all bots. Fuck a job. Fuck being a slave. We about to get rich. Video game. Figure out the system and just play against it. I'm on fucking go mode.
Watch, bro. I feel like uh, all those people that are like, fight the Matrix, don't be a part of the system, are the same things like the um, that progressive group or the like liberal group we watched the other day who like went to have a commune to be away from society and capitalism, but ended up just like engaging in capitalism anyways. It's like all these people don't want to be in the system. So they think about beating the system by being the most part of the system I've ever seen in my life. It's the irony is beautiful. I fucking love humans. Their problem solving skills are mm, good job. I quit. I go on the subway one time. It... This was fake. I'm never streaming again. You take this internet shit too far, bro. It's fake, right? I heard it was fake, right? <laughs> I got jumped. <laughs> See, I would be, I can't live with myself, but I think this is my neurodivergency too. I really struggle with lying. Like it makes me like, I used to do it a lot more in survival mode. And now I like do my hardest not to lie within my, my understanding of what I think lying is, which is like, you know, this isn't, this could be a prank. This could be a lot of things, but like, I think I'd be embarrassed about content like this, but I'm not in my twenties anymore. And he is. And I think in my twenties, I did make a lot of cringe content. Um, but this, like, this would just be embarrassing to me, but also like, I mean, like, like they said, like the numbers show that like little boys think this is funny. I love jackass growing up. I used to love doing that shit with my brothers. I even like Daniel Balzer Balzerian. Like I even thought like that was kind of cool for a minute. Like when I was young, young, I did kind of think like lots of cars and money was cool. I did think like, oh, like I want to have lots of money too. I did think that. And then I realized like this is not where peace is, bro. This is not where I'm going to feel good about myself. Like this is not where I'm going to like raise a good family or like live a good life. But you don't realize how much of it is fake. Like Dan Balzerian is so fucking faked. All his women, the money, all of it isn't real. Like that's what's the problem is like raise your eyebrow at someone's life if it looks too good to be true. Right? If it looks too good to be true, raise an eyebrow. Even Jackass, which I loved, so many of those men struggle with mental health issues, body issues, like medical problems because of their years of doing a bunch of shit just to get famous. And look at the way Bam Margera ended up. He's sick. He's it's complicated. It's nuanced. I mean, like what's his name died? Um, uh, Ryan Dunn died. So again, like there's, you know, there's all this glam and all this like, oh, I'll just have it easy. Be wary of the people who seem to be living larger than life. Because they're probably not. And ironically enough, and not to be such a little old lady, the people who are probably the happiest are probably the 100-year-old Italians who are walking 100, you know, steps a day to get in their daily walk. Okay? It's probably just old people who are holding hands and walking down the road. Those are probably the people who are living the best lives. Okay? Wish this was real. Really hope this is real, not gonna lie. What are you, a heat, eh? A bullet should have been used. You see that chat? Bots. And God's gonna frown on you forever for that. The world is healing, yeah, and you're broke. And I'm up. NPCs, bots. And this is why you need to be wary about what you do on social media and celebrate somebody's death and wish death upon them. Say like, it's, next time it should've been a bullet. Your life sucks. Nothing can happen to me. I'm a good person. I got angels watching me. You'll pray. Pray to God. God's not listening. This is the God stream. <laughs> Like, this is all acting, right? Like, none of this is real. So, like, Sneeko goes into stream. This is my thought. I don't know this. He goes into stream and thinks, okay, how can I be the most ridiculous? How can I be the most sensational? And it worked. He got famous. He got famous enough to get kicked off YouTube. And then famous enough to meet with Kanye. And famous enough to actually, like, and now he's with the Bradley Martin bubble. Like, you notice how Sneeko bubble hop to find a home because everyone rejects him? So, let's see if Bradley Martin rejects him. Because Sneeko, like, he's not... He's still finding himself. He's still a kid, bro. He doesn't know what he's doing. He might have more money than the average person, maybe. But that doesn't mean he knows what he's doing, right? So it's it's hard to look at him and not feel just like, okay, cool, you're on a journey. Like, I'm not, I don't want his money. I don't want his status. I don't want anything he has. So it's like, if you don't want anything Sneeko has, there's no reason to be upset with him. He's just literally figuring it out in a world that's a construct anyways. Like, none of this is, all of this is just built off of other people's beliefs anyways, so Sneeko's just like acting. He's just doing things, you know? Suck my dick. 
la la la, Bali You know, even Andrew Tate has a history of making fun of Islam. Everyone goes after whatever group gives them the most clout at the time. So even Andrew Tate has old tweets making fun of Islam because he went through an atheist stage. This is Sneeko going through his like making fun of Islam stage. And both of those men are grifting. Both Sneeko and Andrew Tate are hardly Muslim. Okay, I know real Muslims. They are like incredibly pious people. Once again, like very, not the rich Dubai ones. Okay, the normal people ones. They're very like different kinds of people. Muslims like, okay, there's all kinds of status in the world, but they're obviously not going to preach Bugattis, right? Like, what are we like Dubai princes? Everybody relax. I am never, ever, ever disrespecting Islam again. It's not worth it because a lot of people are very angry at me. Um, A lot of Ahmeds and Mohammeds are in my DMs. and they're, they're very, they're, I'm getting a lot of death threats, personally. Um. That happens. People are very passionate about their religion. They'll ostracize you in a different way. Muslims tend to death threats and Christians tend to take away your money, status, and jobs. Yeah, people, people are very protective about their in-group. They're very protective about their belief systems. But to be honest with you, like, I think a lot of humans are like that in different ways. I mean, I think, you know, it's just, I mean, history shows that, right? We're incredibly violent to people we don't like. Me. Islamic people take their religion very seriously. They're 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 a religion of peace, but they're told to act um, in violence if uh, if someone's disrespecting. That's that's just their rules. I have a very large Muslim audience. I, I'm losing subscribers. I'm getting a lot of messages from these people. I feel like I know this podcast, isn't it? These three guys. There are a couple of Muslim podcasts I try to pay attention to, just to like I like to bubble hop with all the different like what are people saying, thinking. What do you think that connection is? You play a stupid game, you win stupid prizes, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh... Allah is the one true God. That's the one, that's the creator of the universe, the creator of everything. Jesus was there to spread his message. Muhammad was the prophet. We are all his creation. Also, I know for a fact they're all haram, bro. All these men live in haram. All of them don't even know how to keep true. That's why I'm saying they're fake Muslims, bro. I know what the fuck you're doing. Like, if you're advocating for, like, sleeping around and, like, doing, watching porn, drinking, all that bullshit, like, haram, okay? Haram. People watching that want to be in my position. That's why I call people fake Christians. I'm so sorry. I know y'all are very protective about your little identities, and I love that. You should go hang out with the non-binaries. I love them, too. But, like, let's be real. All these fake ass Christians who are like, I'm a Christian, da, 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 and you're like reveling in sin every day. Like, girl, please. Same with the fake Muslims. Like, I love you all so much. I know everyone's on a journey. Okay, girl. But like, come on. There's a lot of bullshit religious people out here wanting the name, wanting the credit without doing any of the fucking work. And those are the people I'm annoyed the most at. <sighs> because again, like y'all want all the fucking credit without doing any of the fucking work. Like you, you do you, girl. You do you. Peace and love. wondering because the whole world's against you i could have done a hit piece we went out to lunch i could have recorded something how did you vet me how did you let me into your inner circle which is right now they are definitely he's definitely not in the inner circle he's just he definitely was not they were using him for clout they're all using each other for clout and then recently andrew tate talked shit about sneeko anyways the hardest thing to judge he might be back in there but i don't know the main reason I decided that I thought it was okay for you to come here is I realized that you've been doing a lot of content for a long time that was very pro Tate. Secondly, you know some of my friends and you were vetted. My friends stick up for you and I, I trust my friends. And thirdly, also, I'm not going to lie to you, I did have the War Room do a dossier on your real name. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. I know your name, your address, all that shit. So if you did this. Gross. Decide to do something like that, then God will teach you the lesson. I don't even need to do much. Man, that War Room is real. Yeah, no, it's yeah, no, bro, it's super real. You, If there's any fucking influencer idiot who thinks they know shit, who's all anywhere on the internet, I have his fucking address, his mom's address, his dad's address, where they all... Men are gross. Gross. Fucking live where they work, where his banking is, all the pictures of him fucking naked, his ex-girlfriends, fucking all of it, standard protocol. I got all of it. I've got all everything because I've got an organization of thousands of men who will do anything for me. You think I can't find out shit? Men are gross. Men are literally gross. Oh, my God. And I don't mean all men. Obviously, hey, guys, we love you. We love the boys in the group. Okay, these men, these kinds of men, this category of men. Gross. Ozzy, welcome to the memberships. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you. I want to join. So good to meet you, friend. 
look, when I was 15, I read all of Mario Puzo's books, The Godfather, you the author of The Godfather. And I was in love with the idea of a mafia because it felt really cool to have a bunch of people that were going to be safe and who were going to protect you no matter what. And then you read those books again. You're like, oh, everybody's like raping each other and murdering each other. And then your besties are killing each other. Look, y'all might want to be a part of a mafia because you think it's like badass. Those people are going to be the same people that will bury you one day. It's literally crazy. Like men who talk like this, men who are like this, you do you and the women who choose them, you do you. I have literally no sympathy. Now, if you're obviously tricked or sex trafficked, my heart goes out to you like that's not OK. But remember, right, like. OK, like you can be sex trafficked and then there are people who make choices. There are going to be women today that see all of this and still pick these men. You know how I know? Because there are women today who still pick Men in prison for graping people, murderers. Women chose Charles Manson. Like people choose people and that's okay. If you're a victim, I'm 100% with you. But I believe in people's like, they do sometimes just choose these people as well. And I think that plays a role. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And <laughs> social media influencer andrew yo yeah yeah membership for nine months cupcake in the chat miss andrew for miss andrew let's go cupcake in the chat guys cupcake in the chat for miss andrew <laughs> hate has been arrested in <laughs> romania on suspicion of human trafficking rape and forming and sorry for not sex trafficking human trafficking organized crime group the matrix. it's different right human trafficking is different than sex trafficking Human trafficking has attacked me. He literally admits the Matrix has, a has attacked me. Oh, look, our other favorite serial cheater. <laughs> In the video, he talks about how you can lie about how much taxes you're paying on behalf of them to steal. Like we love him. We we he's our she's our favorite out of all of them. A bigger Sorry. crowd than what they're aware of because they're too stupid to figure it out otherwise. What law is that breaking? Press it's release. illegal to make girls fall in love with you for the express purpose of bringing them back to another country to make them work as camp. Steven's right on this front, obviously. Like, I, I do think Andrew Tate is definitely sex slash human trafficker. Absolutely. I'm girls? Yes. Fuckboy manipulative to a T, right? Raiders membership for 14 fucking months. Let's go. Indiana and cupcake emoji. Let's go. Oh, sex trafficking. That's yeah. not sex trafficking. That's called pimping. Yes. Uh, you never had a girl okay. fall in love with you. Tate actually say he took their passports? Yes, he did say that. Okay, so that's how they can't leave. Yeah, Tate's already saying he's doxing you, has all your, or not doxing you, but could, has all your information, knows your, like, mom's name, whatever. He's a piece of shit, bro. Don't trust him. If you're attracted to that kind of a person, I wouldn't trust you, bro. You know, I trust you to be a human, you know, and I have faith maybe one day you won't be such a piece of shit. But yeah, it's pretty piece of shit behavior, right? Then. He actually takes the passports. And he probably lies and he says it's for tax reasons. They could have asked for it back. <laughs> actually, we would make a great double date. I like you on the left. Girls, I want to kiss you guys. How old are you? Zerka is also a mess. Oh my God, Zerka. What a mess these people are. But that, that I'm saying, they don't have values. Like when I say they don't have values, I mean... They're willing to change what they're doing based off the circumstance, which is a form of value. But when I say values, I mean when temptation strikes, they don't have a right or wrong. That's what I mean by values. So like Sneeko and Zerka, from my understanding, don't seem to have a right or wrong. They have like some sense of it. Steven has some values. He he understands a right or wrong and tries to do his best in his regard. I believe that. And then um, uh, Andrew Tate, same. I don't think he has values of right or wrong i think he pretends to in a very different way so i would say like sneeko and zerka don't seem to have like a value system they rely on that would deny them from doing something um I, i'm pretty sure like with the right price they would do it right and if you have a price for you willing to do something like you don't really have that much value like you don't have values right like there are things you'd be willing to do for the right number Unlike like someone like Steven, who I might disagree with how he treats women, but also in himself, by the way. But also, I think Steven has enough value in him in himself and enough limits in his actions that I could trust him to not do certain things to people. Um, but I still think he's focused on himself and only himself in the end, which is still the same category, but different, like different reasoning, which is why the why matters so much, because everyone's kind of self invested. But to what extent? Right. There's something, there's something here. Uh, guess says, uh, or their values are to prioritize money. Well, uh, maybe, uh, that could be one of their values. Yes, they could have the value of prioritizing money and themselves, 
But that means that there's no, again, there's no values to fall back on when it comes to when things are right or wrong. That's not like that's a limited value. So they can't be trusted. Like I can't trust Sneeko to make a right or wrong decision because I don't, he doesn't have any consistency with his values outside of like me, 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 right? At least I can trust Steven in some aspects to make some right or wrong decisions, just not with most things. And Zerka, I can't trust at all because same thing. It's like they have shown through their content over the 10 years or five years or six years or two years they've been doing their content, depending on the content creator, what I can expect of them, right? That I think would be like within understanding of their character. And that's what I'm looking at. So that's what I mean. You can prioritize money, but that doesn't tell me much. Like people who have great senses of values can prioritize money. There still would be a limit to what they're willing to sell their soul for, right? Something like that. Underage. Well, oh. you just... Like, just, yeah, like how, how how underage though? Like, <laughs> like your birthday's next week type shit? And I will be turning 15 in a month. Change my state of mind. Ladies and gentlemen. Hang up. That's gross. Um, Wait, hold on. Don't we just trust them to prioritize themselves? I prioritize myself. Always. That's not the same thing as what they're doing. They're not just prioritizing themselves. They are prioritizing themselves to such a degree that they will do unspeakable things um, that like, cause they have no values to say otherwise. Like there are things I just will not do even when prioritizing myself. I prioritize myself more like than anyone, but my values won't allow me to do certain things, whether I like it or not, whether I'm prioritizing myself or not, which are a construct, they're not objective, right? So they don't have to have the same values. But when someone has like an honor code, like, do they have an honor code? Like, obviously, even in this video essay, it, it showed us that Sneeko doesn't seem to have an honor code. So is there an honor code? Is there some consistency? Is there something you can expect from them? When you can just expect people to be kind of messy or crazy, that's not really a, a value to me. I'm, I'm wondering like, oh, yeah, they have really strong values. I can trust them to do X, Y, Z. Versus, oh, they don't seem to have strong values. I can trust them to do X, Y, Z. It's like, it's same thing, but different. Different, the different perspective. Look, here's the most important thing to understand about mm -hmm. Sneeko. Mm -hmm. He is who he talks to. He's a chameleon, constantly trying to fit in with whoever interests him that week. Yeah. I mean, there is a reason this meme exists. In an effort to catch every wave, he'll have... Yeah, I think that makes sense. Fully accept programming from anyone around him who he thinks is cool. Scrapping his prior code like a good robot. I mean, he talks to this guy. The bot is somebody that runs on autopilot. It's somebody that runs... Sneeko's not running on autopilot. That's such a mischaracterization. He's not running on autopilot. He's literally trying to figure it out. And he wants a certain thing from life. So he's going to the people. You... I just... He is so exceptional in so many ways that he could be a version of a bot, but he's not like what he is referencing as a bot, right? Like he's obviously looking for something, but he it's not just for nothing that he's meeting people and changing when he meets them. Um, that's a very specific thing that he's doing. We just don't know why he's doing it. So they're saying it's because like, oh, he's maybe bot like. I think it's something different. I think he's looking for something. I just don't think he's found it yet. But I don't see it as like something that's thoughtless. I think the worst part about Sneeko is that he's being, he's putting in thought. I think he is mistreating women in, in knowing he's doing that. And he can't decide if it's bad or not. But I, I think he knows it is. But I can't, I don't think he can own up to that fact. Just like people who serial cheat don't want to own up to the fact that they mistreat women because it's not how they see themselves. None of these men see themselves as villains or mistreating women, but they're, I would say, all mistreating women. And I'm saying, why are they doing that? If they're smart enough to be famous, smart enough to be rich, smart enough to be at the status, and they are, why would they mistreat women and then not own the fact that they mistreat women? Because it doesn't work with their image. They're willing to do whatever it takes to get popular and famous and rise, like make their ego bigger, but they're not willing to face themselves to also seek out humility. Steven, Sneeko, and Tate lack humility. They play humility. They pretend sometimes, but it's not the same. And reminder that Sneeko is 25 and all the rest of them are 35 or older, I think. I think Tate, how old is Tate, guys? Andrew, Tate, age. Okay, he's 37. Destiny's 35 and Sneeko's 25. So just remember 
like how much we're holding the 25 year old accountable in comparison to the people he surrounded himself with who are 10 or so years older, right? On a script, a script that's been pro. How do you define the word values? Just curious. Values are your, your like, like your 10 commandments, like your code that you stand by in temptation. There's survival values, things you're willing to do when you're surviving that were within reason and things you do outside of surviving. They're like your 10 commandments, like your sense of code, like thou shall not kill, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. Like think about things that even when given into temptation, you do not do. Obviously, like I would say don't kill people, but obviously within reason we can kill people. We do as a society, we do as a global like world. But generally speaking, as an individual, it is rarely justifiable to kill people. So you could say survival allows you to kill people in self-defense. But if you're in a living situation and you don't need to kill someone, going out to kill somebody is immoral, right? Or unethical, but well, immoral, right? Because these are your personal morals, right? So again, like when we're having this conversation, uh, when I say values, I don't think any of these men have like a 10 commandments, right? Not to be so religious, but they don't have like a code or a creed they stand by. And I, as an atheist, I've obviously made my own, but yeah. Cool Hater says, but wouldn't your values change? Sure. Absolutely. Like very possibly. Totally. I think I didn't solidify my values to my 30s, which is why I'm pretty lenient on Sneeko because he's 25. Like absolutely, right? Like absolutely your values could change. The question is, not only are they allowed to change, the question is, do you still adhere to them in moments of temptation? Right? And are you willing to own up to the fact that, yeah, you don't care if you mistreat women or your partners, you don't care if you lie or cheat, you don't care if you spread STIs, you don't care if you abuse people, you don't care if you're heartless. Like, as long as you say that, I don't care. If somebody can't, like, I do care. But like, at least, you know, you're owning up to it to an extent. I think people who own up to their shit, honestly, are more respectable than people that pretend they're not doing it, right? Kay says he doesn't have values as guardrails for his exploration. So his exploration is more prone to falling into complete ideologies. If you aim for nothing, you'll always hit it. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. Guess says, couldn't the code be to make money and be with lots of women? I don't think it's a good code, but wouldn't that be the code? That's a goal. That's not a code. That's a goal. That's a goal. Those are not codes. So making lots of money and having lots of women, those are goals. That, have n that has nothing to do with values. You can make lots of money and be with lots of women and still have a code. So codes are different. A code you live by has nothing to do with your goals. Well, I mean, it could have something to do with your goals. I take that back. Of course, it could have something to do with your goals or how you shape them. But th that's the difference, right? Kay says, but he's aiming for things like money and power, but he also wants joy. So that's where the incompleteness comes from. I agree. I think Sneeko is looking for like a joy, but he doesn't know how to find it and he's never seen it in his life. So he doesn't know where it is. And that could take another long time to find. Most people don't want joy. They want other things. So to be fair, he wouldn't be unlike most of the world. Most of the world is not seeking joy. Most of the world wants to be mad at Hassan for saying he was tired. Most of the world does not care about joy, right? Program. Imagine caring what? people think. I see so many people worried about other people's opinion. What other people think? What other people think? Who gives a fuck what the NPCs think? Who gives a fuck what the peasants think? We run this shit. And you know what? The peasants, the NPCs, even with my level system, links in the description, being a two is not a bad thing. People only think being a two is a bad thing because they really want to believe like they're better than other people. You're only better than other people through your perception. I agree with you. I think I'm better than a rapist through my values. But what does that even mean, right? You have to, these are philosophy questions, guys. These are not political questions. I'm not a political debater. I'm literally challenging you to challenge how you even came up with that idea in the first place, right? Like this is very specific. People don't even know why they wake up every morning. They just know that they have to. Why? People do not ask themselves why. They just want the easiest question the easiest answer, the easiest path, which is reasonable, but also, hmm. What they're afraid to say, a lot of these smart dudes who've made it out of the matrix, the, the broke people, bots. Most of you are bots and you're stupid. See, this is all fake. I don't believe any of these men believe anything they're saying. I think they're all grifters doing pyramid schemes and making money off people. I don't think any of these people believe anything that they're saying. I think they're all just like grifting. I think it's all a joke. 
which to be fair, even people in the debate space, they're doing the same thing. They're just making money off the debates, but they don't even care. When they go back to their regular lives, they don't fucking care. It's just like their job, bro. And that's the thing. It's just their job. This is just their job. Their job is to be weird. Suddenly he's talking about how everyone's in the matrix and we're all bots. Bot, bot, bot. You are bot, a servant to the matrix. He watches a Matt Walsh documentary. And Matt Walsh, I want to get him on my stream so bad for an interview. Matt Walsh, you need to get him on stream, man. Come on, man. And Matt Walsh, let me interview you on my stream. Suddenly he's talking about trans people nonstop. Trans, woke, woke, tra trans, but trans, woke. And I think this is proven the matrix. Trans, trans people, woke, trans, trans and woke. Trans, trans activation. I identify as your husband and you owe me pussy right now. Even though a couple months before that, he was calling out Dave Chappelle for doing the exact same thing. Chappelle like, I can't tell if Sneeko's like a 2A or a 3, but he's obviously something. He could be a jaded 4 who's pretending to be a 2, but he's pro he could be, but he could also just be a 2A. I can't decide. Has he shattered all the bubbles so he's like making up bubbles and like making up everything? Or is he actually just like a 2A who realizes like there is nothing so you make up the game, but he doesn't have the wisdom to like, not that any of us have the wisdom, but he doesn't have the wisdom to realize, like, you could go on a different path. Yeah, I don't know with him yet. I don't know. I think in 10 years we'll know much better where Sneeko is mentally. Yeah, and hopefully he'll be better off than the people he is associating with, right? Matt Walsh is a freak. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, all these religious grifters, all these people. Like, Tucker Carlson is great at his job because his job is to be famous and make money and spread misinformation. But I also think, like, he's contributing to definitely the conflicts of the world. But I think most people are also contributing to it. Like, look, no matter where you go, people hate people and people love people. People are great everywhere and there's parts of them that suck. No matter where I've been in the life, there's always a group everybody hates. There's always an idea people hate. There's always like people, there's always something. You know what I mean? So again, like this idea that like you can dislike anybody through your own values, but remember it's only through your perception. So also remember that. Ask yourself, damn, why do I hate this person? You know? Kayla says, you don't think he's a four anymore? Well, I don't know because I've never talked to him enough to know. I think I thought he was a four because it almost he's almost acting like a rebellious four who's performing as a two, but he could be a three performing as a two or he could be a two A performing or he could be a two B, but he doesn't seem to hold on to an ideology. So I would argue he's more possibly a two A. I would have to talk to him in great length, but he won't tell me anything because I think whatever he's doing internally, he hasn't told anyone. I truly think whatever is happening internally in Sneeko's consciousness, he hasn't told anybody. I don't think anyone knows what Sneeko's doing. From what I've understood about the little I've talked to Sneeko or the people in his life, I think everyone is just as lost about Sneeko as Sneeko seems to make everybody else lost about him. You know what I mean? So I don't know what he's doing, but I don't know. He could be a four performing as a two. He could also be a two or three performing as a two. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know. Tell's last special was very mid, yo. This is like, why do you keep talking about trans people over and over again? It's like, yo, shut up about trans people. I feel like he likes playing it. <clears throat> okay, wait, Cam Cam says he's just fake. He's not fake in the way that I see fake. You know what I see fake as, guys? To me, fakeness is like pretending you're something you're not in a believable manner, but you're not really that thing. That's what I think fake is. Sneeko is not believable. He's not believable enough to be fake. It feels like he's just giving us information that's so obvious. You know what I mean? Fake people to me are people that like it's hard to tell they're fake. But if you can obviously tell someone's fake, then my brain is like, so what are you doing then? You know, what are these numbers? I create a level system of introspection. Links down below. It's called the levels. If you guys want to check it out, it's like my little work because I like philosophy stuff. And I created a level system. So that's what the numbers are referencing. Um, do you guys get what I mean? Like he doesn't feel fake to me. He feels like a performer. But who's like doing theater. I think fake people are people that are convincing. And then you realize like holy fuck you've been fake this whole time. Sneeko doesn't feel fake. He feels something else. I don't know. I don't know. But there's something about it. Kim Kim says fake is not just presenting the real you purposefully. Fake is just not presenting the real you purposely. Well, then everybody's fake. I guess everyone's fake on a spectrum. I would agree that everyone's fake on a spectrum because obviously we're not presenting the real us ever. 
When are we ever presenting the real us unless we're alone? And even then, I just had a whole conversation with Kidology. She can't even face the real her when she's home alone. Most people can't even face themselves like at home alone. So like, I don't even know what that means. Like you're presenting yourself. Like if you can't face yourself, like what does that mean? Yes, Emmy. He feels hidden, not fake. Agree. Ooh, Emmy. Yes, girl. He feels hidden, not fake. 1000% agree. I feel like he's keeping the trueness of his authenticity very close, very deeply hidden in his like consciousness. But it's not like it's yes, I agree to that. He feels very hidden to me. But yeah, not fake, but he is obviously performing. So there's theater involved. You know what I mean? So there's something there. So I think you could argue it's fake in your language, but my bubble agrees the differences between fake and hidden are very specific. And again, I think this nuance needs to be had in conversation, at least on my channel, because again, we're looking for the why answers. Most of society would tell you, who cares, Brittany? He's awful. Exactly. You keep thinking that way and fuck off because I want to know the reason why. I actually want to know why, though, because I want the real information. That's why I say I'm obsessed with the objective T truth, even though I think we won't find it. Most people don't give a fuck. Like most people don't give a fuck. They're like, who cares? He's bad. Move on. I'm like, it's not so fucking brain dead, but it's not brain dead because it's how the world has literally been since forever. So excuse me if I don't want to be like the whole world has been like, how can you advocate for the world to change and then keep doing the same shit? Right. Right. Kayla says, I agree with camp camp and Brittany seems to have different meanings to many words. I do not that it's bad thing, but something to keep in mind when hearing her. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And he says, I think he uses the theater to stay hidden while revealing himself in a safe way. It gives him cover. A thousand percent agree. Uh, and again, bubbles are words. Words mean something to me. And I also think like, again, I'm, I'm like trying to problem solve in my own language. We all use language differently. That's why like the world is in conflict because we don't mean the same things when we say it, you know? Um, Seema says, girl, I relate so hard. Let's go. Priestly says, perhaps he has reduced sense of self or no internal sense of self. Ooh, like someone with BPD. He's searching for the identity and beliefs that feel right to him. Very possible. That could be a good example as well. Often people with BPD do feel that way. They mimic the people they're with. They automatically start acting like them. They're looking for the answers, but they don't know who they are. They try on lots of different like attitudes and belief systems. There's a very high probability of that. People with ADHD and autism who don't get proper treatment growing up often have tendencies to feel abandoned and or traumatized or suffer from PTSD growing up in adolescence. And Sneeko is a part of that. And he's a theater kid and he's in his feelings and he's more feminine. So yeah, I think there's a high probability that he experienced like a real sense of outcast, like feeling like an outcast and very confused about that just based off of his content over the last decade or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lexi, uh, Lexi, Lexi, Lexi says, I feel the same a thing about or similarly about Trisha, even when she's clearly trolling, it still somehow feels so genuinely hurt. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see that. I also have hope for Trisha. I'm holding out hope for Sneeko, Sneak, Steven and Trisha. Those are my three I'm holding out hope for. Steven just needs the right kind of therapy. Sneeko needs the right kind of philosophy epiphany. And Trisha needs the right kind of therapy and philosophy epiphany. I think they're more likely to be much more introspective in the long term. Because I think they're a lot more curious than they let on. Steven's not curious, but a little bit of trauma would go, a trauma uh, help would go a long way with him. So I'm holding out for all three of them, but obviously they can do whatever they want. But let's see where they're all at in 20 years. Because I'm going to still be here and I want to know. I am so, ooh, it's like my favorite Netflix show, People's Real Fucking Lives. Mm into the controversy a little too much. Like he likes cancel culture. He wants to stay relevant and, and be in the pop culture. So he's constantly poking at what makes people like overly sensitive right now. Then he talks to this guy. Homosexuals are going to hell, right? If uh, and it's gonna be a party. Don't repent, don't forget that. And so are effeminate men. What? It's the heights of depravity. It's a complete absence of- Yo, if effeminate men are going to hell, Andrew Tate, Sneeko, they definitely going to hell. Uh, it also manifests itself in like mass murder. It's just another flip. Ooh, Leo, 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 Leo says, okay, my fear is asking about the why and how we might forget to hold people accountable. I think you can hold the people accountable with knowing where they're like, you can hold people accountable and forgive them at the same time. You can know where people are coming from and hold them accountable. I feel like people just don't know how to do that. And that's why it seems scary. Like, that's why it's difficult. Okay, I forgave my rapists. I forgave them. I don't know who they are, but I forgive them. That doesn't mean they don't have to serve time in prison. I forgive you. 
for being a human. It humans, like grape is a part of nature. Graping, murdering, pillaging, monster behavior, that's a part of being a human. I forgive you. I recognize you're a person on a journey, as am I. We came in contact. You attacked me. And I know that was a part of your journey, right? I forgive you for being a person. I still think you should go to prison and serve your life sentence or do rehabilitation work and figure out where rapist can be in recovery in society, right? Obviously, that is a personal decision I have made because I know they're humans on a journey. I also think they should be held accountable. I'm not a big prison system kind of person, but I think rehabilitation, therapy, community service, uh, being away from society in some capacity, absolutely necessary. We were all humans on a journey. I fully accept it. That doesn't mean you're not going to be held accountable. It just means I am not going to bear the burden of your actions in my soul for the rest of my life. It was not my journey to bear the burden of your decision for the rest of my life. So I will let it go. And that's that. Flavor of depravity. Yeah. And suddenly he feels the same way about gay people. I like the LGBT thing. It's just deviant acts. It's perverted. I, I really think it's something that's demonic. And I think a lot of these people are actually. I think people who believe in demons and religions are valid, but shouldn't be associated with secular society. Genuinely, like if you believe in demons and magic and like in gods, I do think religious society should be religious and secular society should be secular. And I do think there's a way for secular and religious people to live together. Those people actually do really well together. Um, but if you're a person who like is going to let your religion dictate how other people live their lives, I really think I believe in religious countries and religious states. You do you. Go away. Go away. OK, because the world isn't, you know, religious in that way universally. So I would say that I am absolutely 100% in favor of religious freedom. I just think if you really are having a relationship with the supernatural, much like people have a relationship with gender, which I love, you should be in your own little community. I just feel like it's really, really immoral to use your religion or unethical, sorry, unethical to use your religion to um, uh, torture or punish people who don't think like you. You know, I just think it's really inappropriate, you know. Gay people can't reproduce, so they reproduce by coming for the children. They don't want kids. They don't want straight kids. They want more gay people. That's why it's not about acceptance. Yeah, you know, I think some gay people do fall into that same pattern that straight people do, which is they want straight kids and gay people want gay kids and everyone wants their kids to be like them. I think that's just like the problem with humanity is we have an evolved past recognizing that our kids aren't us. They are a product of us or maybe adopted by us, but they're not us. They're their own people. You know what I mean? We haven't gone past that as a species. So gay people are going to suffer from that the same way straight people do. You know, um, Kenny says, I've been meditating on if I can forgive my rapist. I give them the grace of being human and understand why it happened, but I've been working on forgiveness for years and I'm not there yet. So fair. I mean, I'm still working on my PTSD, which is like a mental health issue. I think the reason it's not as bad as it was before is because I did let go of that. But again, that does not make what they did right. Humans on a journey do horrible, horrible things to one another. Just because it's a part of being a human doesn't mean you can't be held accountable. I want to make that very fucking clear. I'm not giving leniency to people. But I don't also believe in punishment because I don't want to be a person who tortures somebody. I want to be a person that holds out hope to give dignity, to show dignity even to my enemies in whatever way is necessary. It's not that I don't have those feelings or I have those thoughts where I'm like, holy fuck, like kill them all, right? I get that. But that is not a good place to be. I don't want to be a human that is like violent. I don't want to be a human that's doing that kind of behavior. But I understand the emotional place you're going to be in. Um, because I've been there, bro. I sometimes, oh my God, when I was seeing, um, Israelis attacked, I got really upset when I saw Palestinians attacked. I got really fucking upset, but at the end of the day, like humans going to human and that's what they're doing. And at the end of the day, like we really be out here justifying the murder of children every day because that's just like what we do. Right. And so again, I have to let go of the fact that that's just humans and also be open to the fact that we can do better, but we don't, you know, it's a journey. FD Signifier in the chat, bro. I'm so sorry I have not emailed you. My spoons be low these days, but I've been thinking about you. <laughs> and we're going to watch your video next after the Sneeko video. Happy to see you here. Very excited about your video. I hear you killed it. So we're stoked to watch it. Thank you for being here, FD. I appreciate that. Okay. 
So peace and love to people, but it's a journey, you know? Uh, Priest uh, says, um, that's the mindset of how I move past my essay as well, recognizing that we are struggling with addiction and their own trauma and that they hurt themselves in the action as well. Exactly. You can forgive people while still holding people accountable. Peace and love, like I can hold you accountable and still recognize like you're a person on a journey. And that is a very difficult place to get to because there's so many good reasons to be hateful. I just, I don't think it's in the long run the best thing for you, just personally, you know? It's about making everybody gay. They get more gay people by touching a kid. Even though he struggled with his sexuality for years. But like when I was like 14, yeah. I thought I was gay. I watched gay porn. Bro, I went to I went to a gay nightclub with my gay friends. I saw a muscular dude twerking, and I know that I'm not gay. It's not for me. I went to a rave for the I wonder if Sneeko is like um see he's so open. Like it takes a really open-minded person to even try that. Which is why I say he's open-minded. And even Dr. K said that. Because, like, he just doesn't know who he is. But he he was willing to do that. Which means he is open. Like, how many guys are if, like would be willing to do that? You know what I'm saying? And I'm looking at him. And I don't know if he's... Maybe he's just... I always thought he was so comfortable in himself before. But now I'm realizing, like, he's so unaware of who he is as a consciousness. That he's trying on everything. Even the gay bubble. I love that so much. But, like... You know, God, mm, so oof, oof, oof. First time last night. I've never been to a rave before. It was queer night at the at the rave. There's fun for everyone. It's going to be more gay guys than usual. And they're going to be. FD says, cool, circle back. Just peep the title. I haven't seen any responses to it yet. But yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm I I'm sure it's awesome, bro. I can't wait to check it out. Making out, but you get to still have fun. I, 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 I don't have a problem. There's girls there, but the two friends I was with are kind of homophobic. They're standing around. They're like, nah, we, we, we got to leave. I'm like, dude, we just got rejected from the first one. Close your eyes a little bit. See, I feel like Sneakle bubble hopped a lot. He bubble hopped and bubble hopped and bubble hopped and tried to figure out like, who am I? Am I these people? Am I these people? I just feel like Sneakle bubble hopped so hard, but didn't bubble hop enough or he stayed. That's what I mean. I'm so confused how this man bubble hopped so much and then chose the tape bubble. Like, he bubble hopped so much and then chose the Muslim bubble. Like, he bubble hopped so much. But, like, you can do that. Like, sometimes people's lives be like that. Find a girl. Like, you, you do not be comfortable around a couple gay people. Like, whatever. I, I don't have a problem. Dude, I'd rather be around a bunch of gay guys making out ignoring me than sweaty straight guys ignoring me. I see a gay guy over there with, like, his piercings Woo! and shit. Woo! Bottom G! So I'm like, hey, like your hair. <laughs> Mm, cutie or whatever i'm like you got a cigarette he's like yeah for you i take a cigarette and i'm like okay i'm gonna go to my friends he's like oh okay bye and i just take the cig and leave i flirted with the <laughs> you know i flirted with the gay guy to get a cigarette i don't even smoke like that but <laughs> maybe we could have finessed some free drinks for these gay guys are you gay someone asked i'm not gay i'm not gay being gay would be kind of cool though you wouldn't have to deal with women <laughs> but then you got to be friends with them he talks to this guy. But what do you think of other people who race mixed? I, I honestly, I don't really approve. He thinks that white people should stick to white people. Most of my friends growing up were Jews. My best friends were black people and Jewish people. Which sounds racist. <laughs> the end of every conspiracy theory, you go down the rabbit holes, always Jews. It's real. I mean, and suddenly he's feeling a little bit racist. Silly ass hat on your head covering. Uh, whoa, whoa. Go back to synagogue. Stop trying to fucking be a YouTuber, bro. Even though almost a week before talking to him, he was getting mad at a random chatter. I mean, go back to synagogue isn't really racist, but like, I mean, go back to the mosque. You know what I'm saying? Being racist. Woman, enemy. Don't say. Sounds like he likes the attention and validation. I think Sneeko is incredibly insecure, which makes a lot of sense, right? I think he's deeply insecure. And so I do think he bubble hops to seek validation because he's trying to see his value reflected back. I do think he's attention seeking and validation seeking, which is I will continue to say in my work that that is the problem, that the problem is being validation seeking from outside of yourself in a very deep way. Like he needs to deeply validate himself and I don't see that from him yet. And I'm waiting to see if he can get there, you know? Fuck you, you fucking racist in the chat. Yo, mods ban these fucking racists in here. It's not about race, you idiot. You sat up. Oh, Doom says Def, uh, Sneeko Def knows he's bubble hopping. I don't think he's trying to find himself. I think he's just in a phase where he feels like he needs to acquire as much as possible. That's very possible. Okay, good, good inside Dooms. I could see that as a very big possibility. Mm. That's white boy in the chat who doesn't get any pussy calling a black girl a fucking monkey. Ban him right now. You're stupid. 
and his whips. And actually, you're more demonic than the girl in the chat. Shut the suck my fucking dick, bitch. Now he's instantly cool with a guy who says this. Black people are violent, you know? Send the military into these black neighborhoods. Men are violent. I agree with that. Be them black or white or whatever this guy is. Okay, Fuentes. I just love people that like blacks are violent. Men are violent. Women are violent. Guys, humans are violent. I don't know if you've gotten the memo. Why do white people ever like to pretend that they're any less violent than anyone else? As if, why does anyone do that? Why does anyone do that? You know, even women, we have participated in much of violence in the world. Okay. Maybe not to the same extent because men be out here being crazy, but like just humans be violent. Okay. Hoods. They'll complain about it. It doesn't matter. They're never going to vote for us. He doesn't seem racist at all. I've never met a, a woman who's just, hey, I dream about you and then I see you. So it's monkey like, wifey. <laughs> um, what did he say? We're going to have African Americans voting 50% for Republicans and we're going to flood the zone with Wait, Hold up. A white guy saying the N word? That still goes against his code. <laughs> I'm not getting paid. I'm banned from all the banks. I'm Turkish payment process. You're about to fly that. to fucking Florida now. Cuba is a genetic trait. It's a heritable trait. Of course that is a genetic. Because there could be totally different. You can break apart the fucking, what are they, G-Wasp? You can just get appropriate jobs and allow them to earn more money. I appreciate the free speech and everything, but you can't drop the N-word. You can't do that anymore on the stream. I just said it one time, on accident. Just don't do it again. I know it was I know, I know. Just yeah. Since he said it once, do I get one pass or am I just like, no, no. Steven says the N-word all the fucking time on stream. Abba and I were there in the chat one time, and Abba's like, you're on your own on this one. I was like, bro, you're on your own on this one. Steven loves to say the N-word. I don't know why we're even playing. I don't know how he gets away with it on stream. I mean, I love that for him. I mean, I I love that for him. No judgment. <laughs> time, that was an A. That was Unbelievable. An R, never wow. <laughs> just kidding. New programming just dropped. Now we're hosting clan meetings. Shut up, you all made it. <laughs> Keep running the clip, you Who's that weird that can't speak? Breach is crying right now, swinging from a monkey branch. It's a little hardcore even for me. I'm glad yeah. you didn't show up in a, in a white hood neck optics, you know? Your head. No, no, no. Raise your head. No, 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 no. No, 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 yeah, I think it's round two. And then this Coke drinker tells him the Earth is flat. If the Earth's a globe, the Bible's not real. If the Earth had dinosaurs, the Bible's not real. Literally every angle is an attack on the Bible. If the Bible had a verse. Okay, you know how like conservatives will make fun of like um people who sound like they took too much acid? They're like, bro, you sound like a hippie. You took too much acid. Now you just sound crazy. That's what these people sound like to me. They sound like they took too, too much like Bible acid. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. You know what I mean? It feels like they're just trying to say the most like crazy shit. And I'm like, huh, like it's just perform. It's not real. They're like, what is the crazy shit I could say today? I swear to God. It's like, what is the crazy shit I could say to gay? T to gay. Wow, Brittany, good job. To gay. Great job. Monet says the consistent uh, denigration of black women specifically is so weird to me. It's literally like low hanging fruit is so boring and lazy. Um, yeah, I think that people pick on black women um, slightly because the, ir the irony is like they pick on black women. Okay, this might be totally off. Maybe this isn't true. But I kind of feel like men who pick on black women are actually incredibly jealous that they're not as good as them. Because, like, black women can be the backbone of whole communities, can raise kids, can, like, work at the same time. They do more work technically than the men counterparts that hate them so much. And I think that a part of it is probably envy in a way, at least in the American bubble, because there's no way around it. Like, the same men that say they they work too much to take care of the kids will see black women do both those things and then not care. Or, like, Black women in general are obviously so like you I think they're like universally hated because of envy. I could be wrong, but I think the envy is misplaced and accurately placed. I don't know if this is true, right? I don't know all the bubbles in the world. I don't know all the belief systems in the world, but I do get a deep sense of like envy from people the way they talk about black women where I'm like, why are you being such an asshole right now? Like, what is it? What, like, what threat? When people feel like they're threatened by you for just existing my brain is like, huh, 
Like, why are you doing that? I don't know. There's something about it that I could be wrong, but it feels very like, like they're threatened somehow, I think, or maybe, maybe an envious or maybe even a jealousy of losing status, which is why I think a lot of men are mad that women aren't dating them because they're jealous of like, they're afraid of losing status and they're jealous of women for gaining status. And so I think a part of it is that as well. And then they tell themselves like they could be better off if it wasn't for women. But obviously you're then saying women are better than you because women found a way to like overturn, I guess, what you think the patriarchy is. I don't know. There's something, there's some cognitive dissonance happening, I think, of some kind. But I'm not really sure. And even white women that are jealous of black women, there's definitely like a sense of belittling, a sense of like you'll never be good enough for like like we are. And I think when they are thinking that, I think it is also coming from a place of like they don't want to lose to someone, but they also know like there's something there that's really ugly, but I can't figure out what it actually is because it it sort of is global, but I don't know what it is, bro. I got to say jealousy and envy be the root of all evil. I'll tell you, you know, there's something, something about that. I think, I think, I don't know. I could be very wrong. Um, um, let me see. Uh, Ari says black women are usually more educated and better off financially than black men in the U S statistically. I could see that. Um, Gamey says rejection is a young man from black women. They're still holding on to that shit. I mean, maybe trauma be trauma. Uh, Bezos is black men envy us because we can be more masculine than them. I said it. I mean, very possibly like you can do both. Like black men hold the belief system that they can only be masculine. And I wonder if there's a threat to people who can hold both feminine and masculine. And since a lot of black women can do both, I mean, I feel like I strive every day to do both, like hold masculine and feminine energy. People tend to, men really don't get along with me sometimes. Most of the men who get along with me are men who pretty, actually pretty well handle both. I would say my dad's up, has enough feminine energy to hold a lot of balance. He's very caretaking and nurturing and loves hanging out with his kids and doesn't call it babysitting and loves making food for us and loves like caretaking. Um, All my brothers that are like really in tune with their feminine and masculine sides, like, yeah, they're not like annoyed with me and my like ability to hold both. They think it's like really good. But I think men who can only hold the masculine um, or deny their feminine, they probably are a little bit more jealous and envious of anyone who can hold both. And maybe black women hold both. Ooh, and white women, a lot of white women strive to only hold their femininity and none of their masculinity. So I wonder if that's where the jealousy comes in. But then the white women who also hold masculine and feminine traits, which is beautiful, I think balance is beautiful. I think they're also people who get on the nerves of people who only hold one or the other, especially with gender role expectations being like, hold your feminine energy, hold your masculine. Like, I think that's a big part of it. I do find that women that are all like, um, a manifest else community keeps calling me like unfeminine. They keep saying I'm jealous of her. I keep getting new comments every day and I'm just like so shocked by this bubble. I'm like, what is this bubble? But they're like, you need to be in your feminine energy and you're not in it. And like, that's why you hate Manifestel. And I'm like, I just feel like you should be in both energies. I don't know. You know, there's something about it. I think like, yeah, I think people who are more likely to hold both are better off. But who knows? Who knows? where it says the earth is moving and rotating do you know that they would never make the earth a ball the psyop would be a cube he said we don't believe in evolution we believe in the opposite they keep mirroring it things are inverted beings it's not just evil they just they do what we do opposite it is inverted. see like Sneagle can't follow half the shit people say to him because he knows it's bullshit but he's trying to like find a way to make it funny yeah, type of one if you're a globe tar two if you're flat pilled so it's a lot of twos I would say it's 80% twos <laughs> sun flat earth Black sun, dome. That's what it is? Electromagnetic, the... Uh, yeah, and the stars are fixed in the dome. And what do you know? The Earth is flat. Can we just stop pretending that it's a globe? Nonsense. Have you ever held a tennis ball? Yeah, I play tennis. Where's the flat part of the tennis ball? There's none. It's round everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's always curved. Yeah. The ball. Every time you hold the ball. That's what I'm saying. So why? What, what, what? <laughs> Even Fousey Tube's like, what? <laughs>
Oh man. Oh, oh, boy. That, that metaphor made no sense. You know you're lost in the sauce when this guy is the voice of reason. Oh my god, Fusi. Oh my god, Fusi. Oh. I'm beginning annoyed. Hell, he's so open to programming, he'll let his own chat write some code. Sir, what's your name? Tang Tang. Tang Tang. Thank you so much. Dude, this elephant's stinky. <laughs> stinky. I don't know if it's you or the elephant, but someone's thinking. Palm the back of his head, no. I mean. Bro, I, I need one dollar to do that. Chess, I'm saying Thomas head. He's, he's not gonna know what's happening. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, sorry. Hello, no, no, no fit the head, nah. No, no, this is no. No head. Yeah, oh, no. sorry. Yeah, you no good, nah. Oh, sorry. you no good. You no good, nah. You no good. Sorry, sorry. Mm. I don't like you. Nah. Consent violators be consent violators, bro. They think they're funny. Like, this is, like, the kind of pranks and stuff I don't like personally. I'm okay with some pranks. Like, there are a lot of different kinds of pranks I don't mind, which are sort of consent violations. Like, you know, popping up and being a bush is sort of like a consent violation. But I think, like, they're, like, okay, like, we can kind of get away with those ones. But, like, touching people and being, like, weird and, like, that's not, I don't like that. Sorry. Chat, come on, though. I know, friend, you. I older than 55. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. You were no food. Yeah, like, respecting your elders, I do think is, like, heavily ingrained in my brain. Even though, like, look, adults don't be disrespecting me, okay? Bro, like, I'm an adult. But at the same time, like, I do kind of think, like, you should respect your elders. Depending on the atmosphere. Obviously, you should just respect people, but, like, mm. Okay, sorry, sorry. Tong tong. Uh... <laughs> Chat, oh, that's for a dollar. Yeah. Why did I listen to you, chat? And the list goes on and on. So I could spend a ton of time bashing Sneeko's character. And I'm going to. But when he says things like this. What they choose to get angry at is the messenger instead of the message. What they should be angry at is the elites, bro. The government, the powerful people. But that's how bot-minded people are. That's how programmed they are. He's right. You see, when someone like Critical makes fun of him for being a cuck, you are a cuck, self-admitted. Oh, he was literally in the bed watching his- Has loved what a cuck is. I hate that nobody knows what cucking is. Like it just, my neurodivergency really fucking hates that nobody knows what that word means. Sneeko is not a cuck. He's a swinger at most. Not the same thing. Like that's not what cucking is. I've seen my partners in the past have sex with other people. We weren't doing cuck holding. I'm not into cucking. Cucking has a very specific kink dynamic. It has a very specific purpose. Sneeko is not a cuck. It's calling him a cuck is such like a vanilla way of not knowing what terms mean, but okay, I love the bubbles. I love it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. His girl get fucked by a different man. And you allowed the love of your life to get fucked by another man. What? He can just say that he regrets being in an open relationship. Around three years ago, when I was 21 years old, I went to a swinger party with one of my girlfriends and joked about how traumatizing it was on a podcast. I don't do it anymore. I don't recommend it. When he gets attacked because Cuties is his favorite movie. Cuties was a Netflix film that used real child actresses in sexual situations. So they sexualized real children. He can just say that he agrees with the Muslim values that it presents. She goes from a good Muslim girl to a degenerate wokey, lying, twerking, and fighting, and it blows up in her face and her family's disappointed, and eventually she reverts back to Islam. When you call him a fake alpha male, he himself is not great when it comes to relationships and all these things. He can just say he's an aspiring alpha male. Wanna be alpha male Sneeko? Whoa, this alpha male? I don't think I'm an alpha male. I've never once called myself that. If you call him stupid, he'll just say, I'm stupid. And he'd be right, but the point is, it's his message that he's always leaning on to validate what he's saying. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at that message and the people who've been rewriting his code along the way. Cause uh, yeah, when it comes to these guys, at the end of the day, their goal is to program you. So where better to start than by asking the simple question of, what is a man? It's just funny because when this guy talks about what men are, it's such a fucking self-report. How come I'm with like in college and I'm with a girl who's like, you know, good girlfriend or whatever, nothing crazy. It's a Ooh, great question. Lee says, why do people sex shame instead of talking about the other things he's done, like threaten people? Because it's easy and because they're secretly prudes. I'm telling you. And cuckolding is a very specific kink, guys, where you get off on sort of the emasculation of the fact that, like, someone's sleeping with your wife or fucking your wife and it's not you, right? So it's kind of like a, oh, my God, like, I, my dick's not big enough and, like, that's how she has to sleep with you type thing. It's a very specific, like, mind fuck, okay? 
It was a specific kink. It has to be practiced a particular way. What Sneeko was doing was swinging. It's different. You're just swapping partners, having sex. Not a big deal. But obviously, if you're a prude and you don't know anything about sex positive culture, you're going to have that sort of like response of like, ha ha, you're a cuck. Ha, ha. Because like a lot of men probably would see it that way or like a lot of people would see it that way. But also there are tons of people around the world. We just watched a swinging documentary or swinging like video the other day. Lots of people swing and it's perfectly like functional and it makes sense. Lots of people have poly relationships or open relationships. It's not fucking weird. It's just on the internet. A lot of people are doing things that they don't think they're doing or they don't even know how to use the right terminology because they just use it because it works for them. So they call him a cuck because it's easy to insult him. They call Destiny Polly when he's not. They like, you know, they they have all these things, this misconception about the world because it just doesn't, they don't understand how to have like thorough ideas about how people are living different lives. Based, it, it, and it's normal. It's just very normal. It's just how humans operate, okay? They, they don't understand the nuance of people. But it's just like, okay, it is what it is, right? Doom says it's funny how in every video trying to cancel him, are just repeating the same exact things of other videos. Can people trying to cancel him bring something original to their case of canceling him? Um, no, because to them it should be enough. But what does canceling even mean? I honestly think like people should just like understand the person they're watching, like, I, and understand that there's like some. How do I say this? There's, I think the problem is like people want to watch content creators they feel like they always agree with, or. People feel like the content creators you watch say something about you or people feel there's just so many things that go into why people keep criticizing Sneeko. And that's that's the thing is like. I, it's just good content, you know, why not? Fuck it. I like it. The, the video is great. Why not? College girlfriend, I'm like, I want to cheat all the time. I just want to keep cheating. Like When I would do that, people would say like, oh, you're just yeah, Sneeko's a cheater. Destiny's a cheater. Uh, Andrew Tate, like all those people. Well, maybe not Andrew Tate. I think he does it differently, but I would consider him a cheater. But like, I think all those men are just going to do whatever it takes, no matter what their partners think. And they openly talk about it. Like Sneeko openly talks about it. Steven openly talks about it. And again, that's why I compare Sneeko and Destiny. I know people hate when I do that, including Steven himself, but like my bro, I'm just saying, okay, Sneeko's obviously 10 years younger than you and going on his own journey. You're 10 years older and claim you figured your shit out, but yet you can't stop cheating. So there's obviously something you haven't figured out, you know, but like, that's cool. You do you. You're on a journey, my bro. You know what I mean? Discord says, doesn't Destiny call himself Polly? Only when he's making a mistake. He's actually in an open relationship. And he literally said on the Ice Coffee Hour recently, because I love Graham Stephan. Oh, my God. Great podcast. He literally said, like, he assumes his next relationship will fail as well because most relationships fail. Like, that's not Polly. Polly's many loves, committed relationships, like deep, deep relationships with many people. He's not even monogamous. He literally assumes his next relationships will fail. He just likes fucking. Keep fucking, my bro. He's open and he knows that, you know. But and also, yeah, good point, Discord, that Sneeko has been canceled. He's banned off Twitch and YouTube. He has been canceled. We just like making content and watching content about him because it's kind of fun to watch. A Again, I love watching YouTubers because it's like real life. Fuck reality TV. Watch YouTubers. Guys, fuck reality TV. Watch YouTubers. Literally, I love reality TV, but YouTube is so much more like, mm. we're just watching Sneeko's life like I watch Love is Blind. I'm watching Steven's life like I watch Love is Blind. Let's see what they do. Let's see what they do. It's immature. You need to settle down. I'm not a bad person because I want to cheat. That's something natural. Mm. I do think it is probably within human nature to cheat. That's why we do it. But everything is within human nature. So the question is, are you disciplined? I think cheaters are undisciplined. And I do think that if you cheat, and again, cheating only can occur if you've agreed not to cheat, which means like if you're going to preach discipline and say you're a disciplined person, you obviously can't cheat, right? That seems very silly. Like discipline's on a spectrum as well. But like how hard is it just to say like, hey, I don't want to commit to you and I want to sleep with whoever I want and I want absolutely no chances of you know i want no commitments right but they can't because they want to be they want to feel like they're upstanding citizens they want to feel like they're they're good people and maybe they are good people i think good people can cheat i just think you're doing a really bad thing because you're like over promising and being dishonest and lying and i think that's probably not a good thing monogamy is for women masculinity is when you cheat on your partner you can't 
maintain your masculinity and give head to a woman. Masculinity is when having. Yeah, these are just like, see, I don't. The reason I also don't take uh, Sneeko seriously is because like all of this is not real. They're just talking points by guys in these bubbles. I don't even think these podcast guys are for real. DJ Khaled also says he doesn't go down on his wife. Some people are just weird, bro. Sex with a woman makes you feel gay. Men make sense. They're the ones teaching the books. You should be fucking playing Legos with the five-year-old. Make a macaroni piece, bro. Like, stop trying to fucking, I, I have a book, shut up. Masculinity is when you can read books. There's studies that show that the sources so women want to nurture, men want to fuck. Masculinity is when the women around you don't want to fuck. Like, Sneeko, the idea that men don't want to nurture is so fucking brain rotten. And it's such a reflection of how shallow and disgusting your fucking character is. Straight up worms in your brain, bro. Rip them out. Yeah, if it's not obvious to you, Sneeko has no intention of actually teaching young men how to treat women. I mean, half the time he doesn't even mean what he's saying, yeah. okay? That comment he made about not eating out your girl because it's not masculine. Yeah, this was him a couple months before that. I'm tired of these fucking manosphere people saying, Ugh, I never eat pussy. Are you kidding me? When you find the right one, yo, ma, come here, yeah. These guys were the ones to rewrite his code on that. I don't yeah. want to do it. And I won't do it uh, because women derive far more satisfaction from a relationship than just sexual pleasure. Sorry, feel me? You put it, and then I can't recreate that motion right now and still maintain yeah, masculinity. Yeah, I mean, he rode the women hating wave super hard while he was getting popular. But when the critics, the con he's just like Pearl. All these people are like Pearl. They're all grifters. Fresh and Fit might be less of a grift. I think Myron in particular, but I, I do think like they're all basically grifters. And they're just trying to say sensational shit. Man, I feel like, what should I be, should I do this? Should I grift? What should my grift be? I always think about this. Like, if I did grift, what would the grift be? What would be the thing that I would fake? What would be my thing? What would be my thing? See, that's the problem is I can't keep the, the mask on long enough. Um, oh, what is it? Mm -hmm. Contradictions and... The consequences caught up with them. There's a war going on on masculinity. Well, now it's about uh, preserving masculinity and doing what's best for the youth. They want you to be weak. Men are being men anymore and women are becoming- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Priestley says when- uh, No, no, no. Sorry. Alex says, a sneaker reminds me of the people I knew in high school that were mean in front of large groups, but nice one-on-one. -on -one. True. Literally Sneeko to the T. He's so nice and private and he's just the biggest asshole on the internet. Yeah, it's very true. Men. Now the Matrix is attacking him. The Matrix is real. And he's taking responsibility for the dangers of big tech. Big tech CEOs are running the world. These people have all the control. This shit is a real problem. And guess what? I agree with all of these things. But Sneeko and Tate knew that these pretty... Wait, he agrees with all of these things. It's hard to be a man, also hard to be a woman. Wage labor can incredibly... Be incredibly alienating. Porn is bad for your brain. <gasps> I disagree. Going to the gym is great for your phys physical and mental health. Agree. There's nothing inherently wrong with being a man. Fixating on identity can lead to deepened alienation and narcissism. Social media platforms have a way too much influence on our culture. universally accepted truths weren't enough to gain a massive audience they needed a competitive advantage and what better way is there to attract teenagers to your courses than by giving them someone to hate to validate their victim complexes not by taking a look at the real reasons for their disenfranchisement. <gasps> Kayla says you can grift on hating on other BPDs they'll eat it up oh bro that'd be so cruel though that would be so cruel Oh, they would eat that up. People be hating, bro. That'd be cruel, though. Chisement? No. By scapegoating modern... No, you see, you don't understand. Sneeko gets slandered all the time. He actually loves women. He said it himself. I'd rather ask and let people look dumb than, you know, show how much I hate women. <laughs> because I do hate women. I spent a day as Sneeko's intern. <laughs> I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that Sneeko says in his videos, but I do really feel like he's doing something on the internet that's very different from anyone else. And I think he has the potential to have a very positive digital impact. Consciously making the wrong decision and talking about hating women. You know what I mean? It's, it's... Do you really hate women though? Yeah. 
Really, Sneeko? Is that right? But I don't think that you actually hate women. If you actually did, I wouldn't be friends with you. That makes you feel better. <laughs> he just doesn't like those back-talking type women, you know what I mean? The ones who value their independence a little bit too much. What I want you to do is just be pleasant and smile and comply and obey. I want you to shut up and clean and stay home and don't do anything. Just be an object in the crib. <laughs> Is it not what guys really want? But we're just all afraid to ask for it. Masculinity is when you want to have sex with a Roomba. You know what I've been asking on dating apps recently? Some girl will message me, Oh my god, can you want to go get a drink? And I'm just like, head? Question mark? And then get triggered to respond, Do you like it? And then you just get them triggered, blah, blah, blah. And if she gets mad, okay, don't waste my time, because you got nothing else to offer. Talk to women like this, and the ones who still respond after that, they will definitely confirm your negative biases. And then the sex is already established. I don't need to pretend like I like you and your bangs. I just want a head. And so even if she laughs it off or something like that, we can have a good combo. We already know why I'm here. I don't care about you. You're not interesting. I want- mm, Hannah says Tate's misogyny feels genuine, but Sneeko's feels performative. I don't think Sneeko hates women. I actually think Sneeko isn't a misogynist. I think Sneeko, again, lacks values and un misunderstands philosophy. I don't think Sneeko is an, a misogynist in his heart. I think Sneeko loves women and hates that about himself. I think he wants to be a good man. Look, he was in modeling. He was hanging out with gay people. He was doing progressive lifestyle stuff. Sneeko, like, was – he's what his girlfriends were educated. Like – I don't think he's a misogynist, like a real misogynist. Like when I say that I don't think his internal working is misogynistic in the same way um, that I don't think a lot of women's internal working is misandrist. But I do think that he is so lost in the sauce. He doesn't know what he's doing except he's just grifting because that feels like what everyone around him is doing. Uh, I was watching Bradley Martin talk about how so many of the influencers – at the gyms are like on roids and say they're natural. How many of the fit fitness influencers as well, not from Bradley, but from other people are saying like they're fake. Like even in the fitness industry, everyone is grifting. They're taking pictures of themselves like chiseled out and posting it year around. So people think they're in shape year round when they're not. So I would say that social media does distort for the bigger content creators um, sort of like what is real. So again, when you see somebody who looks like they're living a very particular life, just like keep in mind they might not be because again, you know, that is what social media wants you to do. That's what the brand wants you to do. And I think that's just happening in all bubbles. And the question is, are you part of that group or a different group? And that's the question. Like, are you part of the group that is going to lie to the audience to make money? Because I think there's an audience that wants you to lie to them. And I think that that's fair. Are you part of the audience that doesn't want to be lied to? Well, then I think you should go that route. And I think that's the problem is I don't have a problem with um, marketing lying to people. I have a problem with, well, I have a problem with it from like a values perspective, but not from like the way society runs perspective. And because society seems to run on lies and wants to be lied to, it feels really weird for me to be mad at them for wanting that when like that's a choice you can make. Um, but yeah, do you think he'll outgrow any out of this? I don't know because I can never predict people's future, but I'd like to think in 10 years, Sneeko and I will be having conversations that are really introspective and interesting. And I hope by that point, he's apologized to all the people he's hurt, especially the women in his life. I don't know if he'll outgrow this though. I never know what anyone's going to do, but obviously I'm holding out hope. I don't know if Trisha is ever going to face the issues that are still at hand. I don't know if Steven's ever going to face them. I don't know if any of these people are ever going to do anything. But I hope so. I hope they do that. It would be interesting to see. Um, but it's their life. They don't have to. Ahead. Hey, remember, kids. In life, a lot of the times, you get exactly what you're looking for. If you want cheap, transactional, hollow relationships, well... Don't complain when you get exactly that. And you can be gay as a woman and it's fine, we'll still fuck, but if you're ever gay as a man, bye. Huh. You need to understand women and feminine nature, but you can never act feminine because as soon as they see that, they sniff blood. Women hate feminine men. Some women do hate feminine men. Some men do hate masculine women. That is true. Some women do hate mas feminine men. I'm not one of those women, but some women do. They hate it. It's disgusting to them. 
some people. Yeah, I think some people, some women don't like feminine men. I think that is true. Okay, but like, this is the category of women who like feminine men, right? Yeah, lots of women like feminine men. Not all women. A lot of my girlfriends are not into the same guys I'm into. I'm into feminine men. I'm into all, all kind of men, but mostly like men with a little bit of femininity in them. Some of my girlfriends just don't find it attractive. They just don't. I think that's valid. Sneeko looking fine as hell in these ads, bro. I like Sneeko being pretty. He would have made a pretty bottom for some really top mommy. You feel me? Mm. Honestly, this guy has borrowed so many stinky ass opinions. If only there was someone to clown on him every time he tries to push this cringe programming on his audience. Kenny says, thank you for admitting that. Thank you for not gaslighting us. I think every kind of person exists on the planet. People who like masculine women, people who like feminine women, people who like masculine men, people who like feminine, like ma feminine men. I think every kind of person exists on the planet and you've got to find that person that's into you for you instead of a person who like instead of changing yourself to be for other people and at the same time improving on yourself. There's a difference, guys, between faking who you are to win a mate and actually becoming a better version of yourself to attract the right partner. Yes, we agree there's a difference between faking who you are to attract a mate and being the best version of yourself in order to attract the right partner, right? Like these are two very different games, right? I think the world primarily in dating advice teaches you to fake it. And I think that's why the world sucks. Even on Love on the Spectrum, I swear to God, they keep trying to make them date like neurotypicals and it's pissing me the fuck off. Because like, I don't date like a neurotypical. I don't date neurotypical. I'm not neurotypical. So like I, you know, everyone always says, I don't like the way you date, Brittany. You're not my husband. You know who was my husband? A neurodivergent. So fuck off. <laughs> I still see your shadows in my You're a bot. Do something. You care so much about women. Where your money at? You make me angry. I want to release all my hate on you. Everybody gonna know what is a woman after I'm done with you. Quantity over quality with hoes. Because as soon as they stop making sense, you call the other one over. But so try to get pussy as quick as possible and dip. Why does cheating? I don't, I don't get the obsession with modern women. You actually care about your. Ooh, um, Toes says I personally want to see neurotypical and neurodivergent relationships because that's what me and my husband, uh, our boyfriend, our sorry boyfriend. I have a. Uh, ooh, I want to show you guys this TikTok from a, that same dynamic, a neurotypical and a neurodivergent dating, and uh, my partner and I watched it and like, oh, I want to watch it with you guys. Okay, I gotta remember to show you that. Remember, Sneeko's neurodivergent trying to be in a neurotypical world. Though, I don't know if Myron and all those people are neurodivergent. Your wife so much that you get a second phone, get a hotel room, maybe another apartment to protect your feelings. That's love. Cheating is love. <laughs> no, I agree with you. They sound like actual kids, bro. They sounded like me when I was eight. Uh, women do not want to have to think independent and masculine like we do. So women are always, they're at their best when they operate like children. That's true. That, I mean, oh God, just sit there. <laughs> So why, you see how they let you believe that Aiden literally picks his nose on stream like a child. Gross. This grooming thing is like terrible. Like why is that bad? Whoa. Look at you. Saying that confidently on camera, look at you. See, Aiden knows. Aiden's like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? What happened? Who brainwashed you? Who told you that was okay to say in an interview? Disgusting. Haram. Yeah, I would say the average American girl. <laughs> Am I just dumb? Yes! Okay. It's a good fit. This, this is my favorite one. And you know, I'm pretty sure I could just sneak, sneak on a fight. Like, if I had to say, I put $10 million down on me. I'm pretty sure I could take sneak on a fight. Like, two Sneekos, honestly, and a bear. Like, I just feel like Sneeko, look at those skinny-ass legs, bro. Look at those little tiny-ass arms, bro. I feel like I get... I feel like I could lead beef patty him into the fucking floor. You feel me? I love what he's wearing. I, it's just, it's so poetic. Uh, 
Sneeko's a deeply insecure individual. Okay, True. he's constantly looking for validation with True. everything he does. Just True. take a look at his reaction to Amaranth rejecting him on a dating show for being too broke to provide for her. You're a very beautiful girl, but I would need to have more than one, but you could be one of them. Okay, Sneeko definitely out because I just don't think that he could be the provider that he says he Good luck with the OnlyFans. I ain't mad at it. I'm not mad at it, bro. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Oh. Oh, never mind. He's not mad. I'm, I'm not even mad at it, bro. And that shit got in the head. Even on that note, saying that shit, bro, that, that gets in the head. Maybe he's just bitter because when he got nude photos taken of him, well, it didn't make him a millionaire. I should have lied, but you're right. W Donalds, I should have just lied about how much I make. I don't know why I answered honestly. Well, not enough for you? Just take a look at how he treats his girlfriends. This is Lily. Ooh, I don't love him going over his past girlfriends since some of them aren't content creators or still on the internet. So I don't love that. Do you know what I mean? If they were content creators, cool, but they're not content creators anymore. Uh... I really hate this part. This is the part I never know what to do as a content creator. But also, it is on the internet and it is past content. And to, okay, to be fair, we've got it. Yeah, we've got to show that Sneeko has a pattern. Okay, this is what I did with Vosh. I know some people said like not to go over his past issues, but you got to show a pattern. All right, we're going to see the pattern of behavior. It's true. Sneeko definitely misused and abused, I think, his past girlfriends. Sneeko dated her a couple of years ago. And when they couldn't see each other for a while, well, he immediately tried to shoehorn an open relationship out of her. What is it like being in an open relationship? We'll say we were. I might have talked about it on a podcast. But on the podcast, but not with me. Talk about it, but did we... Did Man, she's beautiful, bro. Did we put it in effect? I don't think so. We didn't? No. It's not cheating, but I was sleeping around and I was lying about it because I didn't think she could handle it. Nah, he's just a good guy. I'm like 99% sure that we had an open relationship. You decide that. Meet Maria. What's worse? A guy saying, hey, we're in an open relationship and I'm still going to manage to cheat multiple times and guarantee my next relationship will probably fail because like, you know what I'm saying? Like these men, that's what I'm saying. If you got a serial, if you got a longevity, like if you're just openly bragging about cheating, bro, like don't women stop fucking these men, bro, unless you just hose, bro. But I think they think like I can save him, you know? I think he get in to be fair, Nico be out here lying the fuck they'd be lying the fuck out of these girls. But like I really like uh Maria. Like I really he mistreated the fuck out of her. Like she's a smart and really capable person. Um so that sucks. We've streamed together because at the time I was talking to Sneeko, so um, but damn. Yeah, this is the girl that Sneeko would go to sex parties with. John's like, how do you find these girls? Like, you don't. You, you need to turn them. Was yeah. she comfortable with the sex parties? Or? Before, before me, no, bro. And even she said after, like, if we break up, like, I can never be in a monogamous relationship again. Like, I changed her ideas of relationships well, she, forever. And eventually, he decided to bring her to swinger parties. We do threesomes all the time, and she's not even that bisexual. So I'm like, this is a place where she could exercise the open relationship. Don't believe anything men say about their girlfriends. If Sneeko's lying, you think he's not lying about this? Shit. Whatever happens inside that party, it just stays at the party. Like, yeah. So I saw her, I've, I've seen her fuck other men. First time, as soon as I saw like three pumps in, I just got up and walked out. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do that. I wanted to hit him. I was, I was just getting tight. I'm gonna be real. I think that this took massive balls to share that story, knowing he was gonna get roasted. I remember thinking like, wow. Genuinely, when I watched it, I was like, damn bro, respect. And while Maria seemed empathetic about it. What really like made it feel like I was closer to her was that as soon as I left, she knew that I was uncomfortable when she left too. If I'm not comfortable with it, she didn't want to partake in it. Yeah. yeah, like Maria was really good to him and he was really bad to her. But I will say Sneeko is deeply insecure and he's willing to try a lot of things. He's very open minded. So he's willing to try a lot of things, but he's deeply insecure about the consequences of those decisions. Yeah, we felt we were, we we're close after that. For real. The rest of the Internet, uh, <laughs> they weren't quite as polite. Watched another guy have sex with your girlfriend. What kind of cock shit is that? I feel like this experience, along with Andrew Tate, just really soured your brain, bro. Fuck you, bro! Before jumping onto the red pill wave, Sneeko describes not being in an open relationship as... That's toxic masculinity. Like, I should be able to get past that. But I wanted to, to, to share this and talk about it because I, I feel like you should try to see your girl get dicked down. No, I, think I should, don't. I, think, I, don't I, think you should, I think it will really test your ego. It's going to test your masculinity. Ideally, you'd want to have three girlfriends. Did you ever say that to your girl? Yeah, I've told her that. But like, that's not realistic. That? She doesn't want that. And then after he started getting heat for this clip, 
because he started saying things like this. That moment. This guy was so stuck in being a limp cuck. Thanks so much. This is a cuck. What studies? Is it true? What study? Evolution, you fucking cuck. Suddenly, he was eager to. I like how these guys want to reference evolution when it comes to cheating and and like sleeping around, but nothing else. That's what I mean. People love to pick and choose when shit works for them, bro. I have multiple girlfriends. Muslims, please, can I join y'all? I want four wives. Islam sounds dope. You get four of them, they don't complain too much, and they're not gonna cheat. And Maria put up with it. Girl, how does she feel about you having other girls, and does she ever want you to stop, or would she ever care if you don't stop? I don't really care, as long as it's respectfully. Yeah, I have a, a couple girlfriends right now. I know it's haram, but one of them- I know it's haram. These fake-ass Muslims. These fake ass Christians. I know it's haram, but let me do it. Fake ass Christians, fake ass Muslims, fake ass bitch. It's my Discord server, and I have one that wants to become my assistant, and I'm training her to run my accounting. The other one, working on traveling with her, she helps me find other girls as well. And the other one needs work, but all of them add something to my life, and all of them play their role properly. If they were completely useless, I think that it's not worth my time or theirs. Which leads us to Rumble Wifey. I don't even know this girl's name. I don't really care. You would basically just bring her on to bash women and uh, talk about having sex with other people in front of her. I would have a million reasons as to why men are better than women. Like, more physically capable, smarter, faster, more capable of leading, built better, pregnant for nine months and get all emotional once a month. There's just, I can... Are you monogamous? Yeah. I, I can't even have, like, one little thing on the side. Just a little spinach, you know? Like, you're the steak, I just want a little bit of spinach. Because you get the side, the, the, but you're the main course. I understand. Aw, oh, such a gentleman. Can I get some wine with that steak, too? What? Ari says, I'm still struggling to understand how Sneeko isn't a cuck after watching this. Look, cuck is very specific in the kink bubbles. Cucking is a type of kink that's very specific. But I think in the vanilla bubbles, cucking is just like when you let other men sleep with your wife. So like, I'll give it to the vanilla bubble that if they think cucking is just like letting your wife sleep with somebody else or your girlfriend sleep with somebody else, fine. But in my bubble where I'm from, like cuckolding is a very specific kink that's very like specific like, you can do swinging activity. You can have other people sleep with your wife or girlfriend and it not be cucking. But in the vanilla bubble, it sounds like it's always cuck holding no matter what. So I think that's the problem with the bubbles is, like, I think we're having, like, when I hear it, I'm like, this isn't what that means. But, like, okay, it could mean, yeah, like, cuck, cucks are into it. Like, it's, but it's a specific kink as well. Usually about, like, like, it's not, again, like, it doesn't seem like he's, I don't know. My my bubble is like so specific with that word but it has nothing to do with like letting your wife sleep with somebody else that's neutral cucking can be outside of that different from that but it sounds like in the vanilla bubble if you let that happen it's always cucking yeah another girlfriend was xena sneeko apparently refused to say her name in public when he was listing all of his girlfriends referring to just refer to her as the girl that runs his discord but one of them runs my discord server because she used to have an only fans i'm xena xena then relationships taken uh, uh body count right. you know, move on move on move <laughs> that's on. none of your business chris how'd you meet this person well you see First the thing is, you, you, you don't need to talk, you have to talk to him. Okay. You don't need to talk to him. Don't talk to her. Hello. Oh, is it you? No, just don't talk to her. Yeah, she made a lot of claims about him when he cast her. Cena, I love her, but she's obviously in that toxic cycle stage, which she knows I've talked to her about this. Um, I said this with Darius when she was dating him. Like, she probably finds that really hot when Sneeko's like, don't talk to her. Don't talk to her. Um, that's my girl. Don't talk to her. The problem is, like, again, if you keep dating Sneeko's and Darius and Destiny's, like, guys, just fucking stop dating these loser men, bros. They're like, they're so sweet. I love them all. I'd give them all noogies and I'd all help them if they ask for help. But like, don't fucking date these men, bro. They're not going to fucking treat you right. Okay. If you date these men, you're toxic, period. To the side. I don't really care if they're true or not, but him getting. In my opinion, which if it doesn't matter to you, shut the fuck up. Someone this pissed off, it kind of speaks to how he treats his women, right? They're not my girls, and I never fucking said they were. Just because a girl falls in love with me doesn't mean I'm responsible for them. That's literally the biggest cult I've ever heard. Why? Is, you know how many girls are- gonna burn in hell for that one. Sure. How did she fall in love? Was she just a stranger, pen pal? Pretty, bro, a lot of the, a lot of the girls- I'm, She was an adversity. I'm not even talking about one what person. What a liar. I'm talking about many girls that fall in love with me. Uh, I don't do anything. This was a big part of his attempt to fight off the cuck charges, okay? 
He would lie or manipulate information to try and make himself look better. He even made this claim. So I get called a cuck for going to a swinger party three years ago. I'm not in that relationship anymore. When in reality, he was literally traveling with her in Japan when he was making his response to most critical. His desperation was most obvious when he straight up lied about his own friend's wife trying to sleep with him. I consider you a friend. A woman who he was also friends with. Yeah, I should have said that stuff like on the podcast. His wife has been messaging me. She's been messaging me. The eyes emojis, I've never seen that not been flirting before. No, it was, it was like, actually what the because, fuck? because you typed an entire thing out and then you deleted it and I was like, what the fuck? And why did he do that? Just to distract people from making fun of him for being a cuck. Destiny still actively has a cuck relationship. It's ironic that I get called a cuck more, even though I have a, I have a couple girlfriends. They're, they are monogamous to me. They do not talk to other men. I made a lot of them delete social media. They don't sell their body online. They are loyal to me. I mean, honestly, you tell me, okay? Who seems more secure? The guy who said this? I could be made fun of by these two guys in the podcast and be okay with it because my relationship with my girl is way more secure than anything that, that people are gonna try to troll me for. Or the guy desperately trying to convince his audience that they should be making fun of his friend instead of him. But I will get continue to be called a cuck more for that one podcast clip where I was honest and talking about something that I hated than somebody who actively engages in it. And when that same friend posts this meme, he decides to call him a deadbeat dad. Braska Steve left his kid, and you talk about how red pillars are misogynists and have bad relationships. Where's your kid? Nebraska rat, yeah. So you called this kid a rat? Bro, he, he's there saying like, we're smug and, and all this stuff and saying- So hold on, if someone says, hey, you're smug, you immediately call their child a rat. <laughs> yeah, when this Coke drinker tells you to chill, you know you're crossing the line. But then when it's mentioned that his daddy Tate's father was also a deadbeat dad, he immediately jumps to run defense. Andrew Tate's father was poor. Andrew Tate's father was a chess grandmaster and he was traveling around the world playing chess to go and make a little bit of money. Like he had a, a job translating uh, languages for the CIA and some people like conspiracy like it, but no, there's, there's no conspiracy about that to be honest, I've asked about it. <laughs> Man, he loves getting personal with people when they criticize his character. He had a fun game where he'd pull up his critics' girlfriends on stream and let his chat call him ugly. He famously did this to Critical. This is his girl. She's very cute. She's not a 10, but is anybody? Nobody's a 10, by the way. You're only a 10 in your heart. She's very cute, though. They match. They actually look really good together. They have good energy together. You know, she's really cute. But obviously, like, Sneeko's people wouldn't find her attractive in the same way that Sneeko's people wouldn't find me attractive. They would literally call me a man or whatever. Like, again, like, everyone thinks everyone is ugly or a 10 or pretty or, like, whatever. But, like, Obviously, if I went on Fresh and Fit, they would also think I was ugly. They'd probably call me, like, all kinds of names because, like, I don't look like any of those girls. And even the girls, like, they make fun of the girls even – like, everyone wants to pretend they have a baddie. But, like, your baddie is the person you're in love with, bro. You, like, love your partner. They're, like, a 20 to you. You just love who you love. Who cares? But, like, if you're shallow, sure. And that's what Sneeko does. He, like, makes personal attacks, which, to be fair, like, the, like, the bluntness of my brain wants to be like, oh, are we rating people's looks? Because I love doing that, but it hurts people's feelings. So there you go. And he did it to this guy, but in that case, it wasn't his girlfriend. Oh. It was his underage daughter. Oh! That is very bad. This is very bad. <sighs> Just put it. Ooh, wait. Kenny says if Sneeko's bisexual, it would explain up in a part. His insecurity doesn't excuse his words, but it sure explains the cuck or chunk. Sorry, chunk of his problems. Oops. He could be bisexual, honestly, or like some sort of something, you know, right? Yeah, I don't know. You know, Being on screen talking a lot about women. I'm not saying nothing. Did I mention that this guy loves talk true KO? Even the baddies get called ugly when they reject those men. So true. Targeting kid. Sneeko loves talking to kids. I got a bunch of, you know, immature boys watching, so I got to turn it up a little bit. They're inexperienced, impressionable, and best of all. No, no, no don't get me wrong, Freya. Freya says, Brittany, you're, ac you're actually super pretty, though, and you have an OF and that people pay for, so obviously above average. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I do think I'm slightly above average, and I do think I'm pretty. I think most people are pretty. I think most people are attractive in most ways, right? Because I think most people are attractive. Like, I don't know. 
But I also like again when you're trying to say like, are you a model? Like, if I was a model, my OnlyFans would be point one percent. You know, my OnlyFans is good and it's it's doing better than most people's OnlyFans are going to do. But like, the models are making. You know what I'm saying? Like they're pulling in like six figures a month. You know what I mean? Some people are pulling in like 10, 20, 50 K a month. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's just the market. The market wants what the market wants. But I do think like, like, uh, who is it? KO who said it? Even the women who are like baddies, like if they reject them, these men insult them. It doesn't even matter what people look like. They'll just find a reason to insult you. You know what I mean? So... Allow me to simulate what your uh, TikTok feed looked like if you were a 15-year-old in September of last year. Ah, oh, you cheater, you cheating. It's bang out the machete, boom in her face. What's up, bitch? I expect absolute loyalty from my women. You know what's so attractive about younger women? I would not see my infidelity anywhere near even 1% as disgusting as female infidelity. Female infidelity involves emotion. I believe that women are beautiful creatures. I just don't think that they're as emotionally calm as men. Yo, bro, you got a napkin? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think unconditional love is possible in a romantic relationship? Nope. You're one paycheck away from her leaving you. Quantity over quality with hoes. Because as soon as they stop making sense, you call the other one over. Love, it's just, it's nonsensical, man. There's no point. But your girlfriend, these hoes, you can't talk to them. You can't. Women will never empathize with men. That's just how the cookie crumbles. That's how the, uh... That's how the tongue, that's how it crumbles. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Oh, you hurt, you black filled poor girl. No, 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 that a huge part of the world, the patriarchy, has tried to convince the world not to trust women. It's not new with Sneeko. Like, that's the thing that people have to remember. Sneeko isn't sharing things to young children that, like, your religious leaders aren't also sharing or your favorite Republican, like, radio host isn't also sharing about trans people and, like, women. So, you know. Ruining their chances of ever being in a true, honest, trusting relationship and i mean this was the plan all along okay sneeko knew that targeting kids was the easiest and fastest way to get clout and money so he leaned into it saying all the things he knew they wanted to hear she wants your money they're like leech <laughs> all they do is take 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 now to be fair i do think there are a lot of women that just want your money and i do think there are a lot of women who these men tend to date that do want your money don't date those women. Don't date these men. That's what I'm saying. Like, all these people act like these are the only people that are available. You know what I mean? Like, all these people act like these are the only people you can date. You know there are other people you can date, right? There are other people you can date. Just, just so you know. And they get happier and we get sadder. You had to earn that money. She takes it. You are better. I had a boy today, 11, turn to a girl. And tell her she uses men to get money and at least he's a hard-working man and he works for his money what is he 11 slap him i'm just kidding <laughs> don't hit kids i'm gonna start being in this category there's gonna be teachers pretty soon saying this shit about me i don't know that kid seems pretty base to me no cook me a meal and shut up if you're thinking about going to college don't just, just, women need to be objectified she's an object and you're everything else also i just want to shout out all the bad parents who are letting their kids watch sneak on tape including my parents who did not pay attention to their youngest boys. And some of them fell into the tape bubble, one of them in particular. And honestly, I do blame my parents. I blame them for being boomers who didn't pay attention to the internet culture because they were too religious. I do. I put a lot of responsibility on the parents. I'm so sorry. Are you too stressed to have kids? You should have aborted them. Oh, well, like that's his opinion though. Yeah. That's his opinion. He's just speaking his mind. You know what I mean? Hey, Sneeko, did nobody tell you? Opinions? They're like assholes, okay? Everyone's got one. You just so happen to have uh, an especially dirty, disgusting, unwiped asshole. Keep it away from kids. What, what state are you in? 
Uh, I live in Canada, actually. Even worse. Canada is like it's like five steps ahead in terms of wokeness in America. Him trying to take himself seriously as an anti-woke advocate or whatever is one of the most cringe things I've ever seen. You're 15, you're, you're a freshman. What type of wokeness is being pushed in your school? Honestly, I can't really speak to that because my school is pretty good. You go to a private school? No. Bartholomew asked if I grew up Muslim. No, I grew up Catholic. Uh, my parents are immigrants from Iraq, and they have 10 kids together in the States. Um, but they're Catholic. They're really super Catholic. Public school. Public school? So yeah. there's there's nothing like that yet? No. Okay. Yeah, make another video talking to your wall, bro. A lot of the crazy stuff is highlighted, so people may get this view that, like, everything is super, as you call it, woke. Not everything is like that. Most schools that I know of are all right. I don't know, maybe it paints a picture that things might be a little bit further than they actually are. Yeah, social media shows the most polarizing content. Yeah. A lot of people, myself included. Look, I think if boys are going to go in a direction or men are going to go in the direction of hating women and women are going in the direction of hating men, it was like what it was always meant to be. You want to bring up evolution like all these red pills love to do? Social evolution, evolution in general. That's just how it's going to go, girl. That's just how it's going to go. If you are not presenting yourself as a proper like specimen to mate with and have offspring with, you failed and that's on you. So there you go. If you're unable to get a mate, you can keep blaming women for it, but it looks like you're not pretty enough of a bird to keep cuckooing. Sneak will be pretty, but he can't cuckoo, you know? Tend to underestimate kids, but they're often a lot smarter than they let on. So maybe that it's it's being polarized and it's just my view of modern schools is just like filtered by conservative accounts that just highlight the worst parts of it. Oh, you think? Unfortunately though, kids are also smart enough- But everyone does that too. Everyone's also highlighting Sneeko as like, this is every kid, every boy is going through this. Not every boy even knows who Sneeko is, bro. Enough to understand the real message that Sneeko's trying to put. Like how much is Sneeko impacting the youth in a real way? It's all bubbled. Like it's depending on if parents are letting them do that. Are parents getting them phones? Do you need phones? Are you in public school? Like so much of this is so much like, we're doing the same thing. If conservatives are convincing you the liberals and progressives are worse than they are, then liberals and progressives are also convincing you conservatives are worse than they are. And then somewhere in the middle, you both fucking suck. Push. What did you say? Fuck the team. woman. Fuck the woman. What? <laughs> we love women. Freya, it's not about keeping your kids away from technology. You said, I don't know how you could even keep your kids away from online stuff like Tate when all their friends have phones. It's not about keeping them away from it. It's about being aware that it's happening and having the right discussions at home with your kids, raising your kids with a good foundation. Most parents that I have seen, maybe it's anecdotal, but like they're not raising their kids with good foundations. They're thinking their kids will figure it out on their own. So many millennial parents I know just think their kids are going to figure it the fuck out somehow. Lots of boomers that I saw raise their kids just thought their kids would figure it the fuck out. That somehow it would make sense. So it's not about keeping them away from the media. If anything, you should watch it and dissect it with them. If anything, you should show them the media and then dissect it and discuss it and have philosophy discussions about it. But people aren't doing that. And so I think that that's been the biggest problem more than anything. We love women. But not, not like transgenders. Yes, sir. We love everybody. No, no. All gay yeah, for God. Gay. What have I done? Exactly what you set out to do. Yeah, like a lot of religious people I know. That's what I mean. Like, I could start blaming Sneeko, but I'd rather blame institutions. Like, yeah, Sneeko is a product. Like, if everyone is the product of the institution, if literally like people in poverty are products of the institution, it was like everyone's a product of everything. So in order to evoke free will and do something different, we have to have a relationship with your individual consciousness, right? So... If I'm looking at religious institutions as actually the issue because there are billions of people, of course I'm more concerned about that than Sneeko, right? But people get more concerned with Sneeko or Tate. But the problem is, is like you're letting Sneeko Tate grift in your religious institutions because you slightly agree more with their message than you're willing to admit. Like if Muslims really cared about not being associated with these two, they would literally say they are not our spokesperson and we invite them into Islam, but we do not want them re like repping islam but they let them do it and so it's kind of like the christians like and all these like people like i'm just gonna be real with you no individual is a good representation of a group and every group is a representation of the collective and in terms of groups religious people tend to be homophobic and misogynistic to some degree and that's just what it is 
One of the only apologies that I've seen Sneeko make was to the Islamic community after he did this. Because he's afraid of them. Did he apologize because he was actually sorry? Eh, not really. It seemed more like he was scared. It's not worth it. They're a religion of peace, but they're told to act in violence if someone's disrespecting. Not just for his life, but that he'd alienate his own audience. I'm losing. Gatsu says, didn't Sneeko scam people with his marketing course? Nope, marketing courses are not scams. They're only scams if you don't think the information in them are helping you. Marketing courses all work the same. I had some of my audience members get the course and tell me about it. They said, yeah, it's basically like any course I've ever taken, like Ali Abdul's course or Crash Course or anything. The information is already out there. They just put it into a file so you can buy the course and get it all like in a file. That sounds like every fucking course I've ever been sold. If I ever made a course, it would follow the same formula because that's what people want. A photography course, a language course, all that shit is already out in the world. If you get a course, you get it compiled into a document or into a product. That's what a course is. You can't scam people out of a... Guys, courses are just information compiled in a particular way so you don't have to go look for it. That's what a course is. So again, I don't know how you're getting scammed with a course. How do you not know what it is when you buy it? Losing subscribers. I have a very long Unless you buy it and feel like none of the information was prevalent. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Large Muslim audience. You see, the gays, Jews, women, whatever, all those bridges have been burned. But Islamic kids still think he's cool. Salah, Habibi, my brother Sneeko. We got your fans out here in Scotland. And, I mean, when he said this... Muslims, please, can I join y'all? I want four wives! Hey. Islam sounds dope. Good women, you get four of them, they don't complain too much, and they're not gonna cheat. He really wasn't. Yo, in Islam, if you have multiple wives, if you even practice that version of Islam, bro, you gotta provide for all those wives and do right by those women. Sneeko can't ever do that. Joking. So, people like... He's too haram, bro. Me and talk too much about wanting to have four wives and it's falsely representing Islam. God says very clearly, like, if you can't be just and you can't provide and give everything to all of them equally, and just have one. And if you can't even do that to one, then don't even have one at all. A fucking man, bray. A fucking man. So get money and then you could have four wives. After converting, he's tried extra hard to flex his relationships with women. I have a, a couple girlfriends right now, I know it's wrong. But then, when the new meta is to talk about having a virgin wife... Wifey needs to be virgin and vaccinated. If you're gonna marry virgin Muslims, what are you gonna do with uh, all of my girlfriends, kinda haram, to turn them and build them away? Eh, you know, well, it is what it is, man. I'm just toxic! I'm toxic! It's fun for them, it's a little game to make no fucking sense and to be evil. Toxic is evil! Why are you proud of being a bad person, demon bitch? It's also no surprise to me that right after he converted, he would talk non-stop about gay rights. It's cause people like Sneeko and his friend Don... Homosexuals are going to hell, and so are effeminate men. What? Use religion to validate the resentful opinions they already had. God does not like feminine men. God wants masculine men. He even made it a law that you're not supposed to shave off your beard. You shave off a lion's mane, he looks like a lioness. Hmm? I feel like constantly leveraging it as a way to justify- Yo, balding men, you fucked, bruh. High testosterone men, you fucked, bro. You can't grow a beard, bro? hate shows that the worship of your god is secondary to your political agenda right i had long dreadlocks clean shaven now i'm bald with a beard if you keep god's commandments the only end result would be you becoming a masculine man masculinity is when bald and beard it's the heights of depravity this is exactly why i started believing god don yeah people who use god as a weapon <sighs> they don't tend to usually really care about the truth okay they pick a side and they work backward to justify it. But hey, I mean, that's just ideology, right? They take what they like, ignore the parts they don't, get all the social capital for championing the trendy opinions. But the second that it becomes inconvenient... Muslims can't buy real estate? No, because, no, because no, of no, 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 I don't drink. I'm, I, come on, man. How much stuff do I have to give up? Pork, fun, alcohol, women, gambling. Right. Can't even invest my money? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'll read my Quran. I'll talk to scholars. I don't want to live in a mosque. Get off of my dick. So what do you do for a living? Porn. By yourself? With dudes. You could be one of them. I want to meet up as and soon as possible. Haram. There's only two things that matter, and that's clout and cash.
You know, it's just fun. You want to speed up the video? <laughs> Can we speed it up, girl? <laughs> we still have an hour of this, an hour of this left. Funny Damn. because a lot of people hit Sneeko with the, oh my God, who hurt you? Who hurt man. you, Sneeko? Yeah, who hurt you? No empathy, no understanding of what men are like. For me, when I see guys like that. I was in private school my entire life off of scholarships. I never oh, got like the black talk. It's Kyla. Talk. That's suspended for bullying a kid. Cyberbullying doesn't even count. Saying things like this. I just want to take your bun and a fist and then slam it down like I'm mashing butter. You would never have the fucking balls to say that shit to me. Cause you- Look, it's Ryan. No, you would get smacked up. Chad Chad, me and you, we get in the- I like Chad Chad. Cage, who's winning in a fight? Make me. I'm winning in a fight. Fuck you, Sneeko. He knows I could take him in a fight. That's why he runs. You feel big? Your bangs aren't gonna protect you. You're gonna lose. You are weaker. Your dumb mouth that I wanna I, that it's something. Threatening this guy, threatening that guy. He hasn't been properly. <clears throat> Shut up. Yeah, come here. Come here. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. And she's gonna go. <laughs> I find it's very rarely the case that there's some deep hurt that's making them say that. I'm handsome. I'm tall. I'm in shape. You wish you was me. I will tie my. Bartholomew says he's a private kid. A uh, private school kid makes sense. Makes a lot of sense now. Not only is a private, he's a private school kid. His parents are still together, and he comes from a really good family background. He's a spoiled kid who had a pretty easy life. His ADHD was taken care of, as far as I know. He was given opportunities. He was told he could do whatever he wanted. He he grew up pretty privileged. And uh, he just didn't feel good there, you know? So it is one of those things where he's like looking for who he is. But as far as I know, Sneeko's background is he got pretty fucking lucky. He got a good draw of the cards. But he wants to make his life hard so he can feel like he's earned something. And that's what he's doing. So he's going to make his life hard. Let's see if he does something with it. Shout out to... Uh, Go gone, go gone, gone, bro. I don't even know how to say your name, but your video is really good, and I'm glad that I'm here, <laughs> and I'm glad that we're able to watch it, and that you're here. That's really nice. Uh, Kicking door says, "Who would you trust, Vosh or Sneeko? Sneeko, obviously. Vosh, bless him, is way the way he his cognitive dissonance is so special, bro. No, Sneeko, obviously, but trust them with what is always the next question." Because I don't really trust, I trust people to be themselves. I trust Vosh to be Vosh. I trust Destiny to be Destiny. I trust Sneeko to be Sneeko. I trust Hassan to be Hassan. I trust everybody to be themselves. So when we say, well, like, who do you trust more, Vosh or Sneeko? What are you really asking? Because I only trust people to be themselves. Okay? I've let go of the attachment of tr expecting more of people than they are. People are just who they are. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go. I 1.5 sped it up. If it is too fast, let me know. My ADHD ears in the audience, we like it fast. Okay. Right hand behind my back and fuck you up with my left hand in Minecraft. But when someone your own size comes along. Brandon Buckingham is down to meet Sneeko. He's there to box him. Just like I'd rather sit at home and yell at a camera, tell jokes, than risk my manhood falling flat, you know, if I lose the fight. If anything, it's just obvious that uh, they haven't been hurt enough. Hold more, pussy. I would beat the fuck out of you. Soy boy. I hope you get banned. I can genuinely, I think people like you need to get smacked up in Minecraft. Just one time. The pride of your face right now. Somebody who hasn't been bullied enough. One of my biggest insecurities is that I've never knocked anybody out. I've never been knocked out either, ever. I've been a reminder that I could take Sneeko in a fight. Little fights, but nobody got hurt, so I'm gay. <laughs> Don't just get in the gym and lift weights because you're doing that to get the, the perception, the, yeah, the aesthetic, which is which is gay. <laughs> Chad, you're gay for looking at that one. Yo, Chad, this is gay, yes or no? <laughs> I'm putting bananas in his hole. Bodybuilding competitions are gay. Sports are gay, right? <laughs> Being an artist is gay. There's no artist in history who's ever even straight. They're so f***ing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Marlon Brando was sucking. If everybody was gay, then they would have nothing. They take satisfaction in doing something you're not supposed to do. They enjoy being deviant. Being a deviant is your entire brand, buddy. Really think it's something that's demonic, and I think a lot of these people are actually possessed. So you think if someone's gay? I think that's something that's really actually important, is a lot of the most deviant people be calling out deviant people. And I think there's something about that that is so dishonest. It's almost to distract you from their deviancy. And that's the part that I'm like, don't do that, bro. You know you deviant too. Haram. 
they were just wrong? I don't think anyone was born gay. Pussy's just like an open wound. It's a gaping hole in a woman's body. If you're gay, you're gay. The fuck are you gonna do trying to hide it? Live a lie? You gonna homeschool your daughter? Yes. All the way? 100%. Uh, mom commented on my last LGBTQ video and said, like, I'm glad you're spreading this information for Gen Z. This is the same reason I pulled my child out of school and homeschooling. Bro, it's becoming very popular. <laughs> we, we used to have gay kids, right, who had to be homeschooled because of how brutally they were bullied. Nowadays, we have kids being homeschooled. What? Because they have to learn, learn that gay people exist? Who's the fucking snowflake? That's why my brother's homeschooling. Three queer siblings. One of them lives with him. Mark lives with him, my brother. My brother, Mark. And like, yeah, he homeschools his kids so they don't get corrupted by the LGBTs. But not really. They just are more Catholic. But yeah, that's a whole narrative. Listen, I really do think the world is diverse for a reason. And I, you know, especially with the death of that non-binary teen recently in schools getting beat up at her at their school. Oops, I did it at their school. They're really effing sucks, bro. And so I do think in some ways, like we either need to integrate kids better together to get along or maybe we do need to separate for a bit. But man, there's some heavy violence. Not that it, violence didn't occur before. Right. But it is kind of insane. It's you, by the way. You're the fucking snowflake. It used to be that the homeschool kid was the weirdo. Now you're telling who's the weirdo? You. Gay people does not produce anything good. It, like, that's just the truth. Oh, yeah. What about a gay family that adopted a bunch of kids? And them yeah, but that kid's gonna grow up weird because it's not gonna have the proper family dynamic. What? what? You can't make this up. This is the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Yeah, the foster system's a much better alternative. Hey, do we think Andrew Tate grew up uh, properly? Do you think Andrew Tate grew up properly having a father that ditched his family to go pursue his own dreams and ignored the fact that he was a father and his responsibilities? Do you think that Andrew Tate had a good upbringing growing up in one of the most, like, violent and poverty-stricken towns? in his area and had to struggle by doing illegal activity in order to survive because his father ditched his family. Do we think that that is what a father is and that is what a good family is? Who, why are we playing around, guys? Why are we playing around? But from zero to five, I don't need to do it all the time. I don't even think I should live at the home. I don't want to smell the poop and the diapers. And I'll be there. I'll be there two days out of the week. You make absolutely no sense. You're not complicated. You act like a child. Yeah, and this is the guy talking about how to properly raise a kid. If you're in the West now and you're only around liberal schools, it's better to homeschool your children because the teachers nowadays in schools will brainwash your kids to believe in a bunch of garbage. Yeah, I'm sure a guy like you homeschooling them won't make them weird at all. And you have a daughter. She's 18. Would you let her date a 42 year old man? So go? No, I would not. I just want, I don't even think that I want her to date. I just want her to get married. So Sneeko, you would allow your 18-year-old daughter to marry a 42-year-old? If you, if I believe that he'd be a good husband for her, yeah, 100%. What? Oh, that's grooming. That's literally grooming. Like that, so why, that, you see how they let you believe that this grooming thing is like terrible? Like, why is that bad? Whoa, it is terrible! But! Bruh. Someone send this to your father. There's a quote, I don't think, I don't know who it's from, but um, I think it's a Greek philosopher said that nudity will destroy society. <laughs> right, because Greek philosophers are notorious for having a problem with nudity. Everyone starts to be sexually liberated. That is the This woman here. This woman, she's one of those conservative talking point women. And she just regurgitates the most like conservative talking points ever. No original thoughts in this woman's head. She's lovely. And I've seen her review a bunch of people or interview a bunch of people. But there's like no original. She's a she's a script through and through, which so is Sneeko. So it works. Destruction of a society in real time happened in Rome. Mm -hmm. And when they started doing all the same sex stuff. I'm going to project my delusional reality onto everybody else because I'm confident. Yeah, if anybody ever says this to you, uh, feel free to call them a fucking idiot to their face. All right, this is a lame brain little lie devised by idiots like this who want to push an agenda. There's absolutely zero correlation between gayness and the fall of Rome. Anybody saying otherwise should probably not be taken seriously. Yo, 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 the gays were absolutely the reason Rome fell. 100% fell into glory. I'm just kidding, I'm just fucking around. Ever. Allow me to give you a quick history lesson. Being gay was never normalized among the plebeians of Rome, and among the leadership it was practiced since the empire's inception, with some of the most highly regarded emperors being openly gay. Sneeko promotes all these ideas so that he can bring up religion as the cure to a corrupt society. He'll say those things not knowing that the Roman Empire actually converted to Christianity 200 years before the Western Empire's collapse. Historically speaking, on a mass scale, religion can't cure a collapsing society. It's a tool used to control the masses. It can pacify and possess, act as an opium or an inspiration, but it's never an antidote to a society with a rotten foundation, one built on the backs of millions of slaves that have no loyalty to the empire where they relied on military expansion to maintain the lavish lifestyle of the elites, leaving them to spread their resources too thin, where those elites' greed brought brutal instability and corruption among the leadership. I think my Roman Empire is men's obsession with the Roman Empire, and also conservative men's obsession with thinking the Roman Empire wasn't full of baby fuckers, bro. That's the fucking irony, is these men are so afraid of the gays fucking kids. Nah, they just be doing it anyways. The straights be doing it anyways. With those in charge being chosen on the basis of opportunism and inheritance. I was saying this for a long time. I remember when the gay marriage thing came up, and I'm like, this should be gay marriage. And then all the religious people were like, no, this is God warned us about this. They said it in the Bible. They were like, hold up signs. Pray for Jesus. Jesus. They were right. Look at the slippery slope that they were warning us about. It happened. It went too far, and it started because we started allowing gay marriage. 
Religion didn't save the Empire, and you scapegoating gays or Jews and falling for the distraction sure as hell won't save yours. So take your hate and shove it up your fucking ass, you piece of garbage, rotten little weasel, puppet dunk. <laughs> he who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. What do we do with all the men? And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. Who's there? Who the fuck's there? Who are you? Great question. I guess you could call me your room? Wallmates. We're, we're, we're wallmates. I'm living inside your wall. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, uh... Look, I don't give a fuck. Look, I don't care, okay? Just... Please, just pay me rent. Oh, yeah, I see. You don't even care about getting to know me, eh? You just want my money. It's all about money and status for you, isn't it? Read the room, bro. I literally I don't want to deal with you. Really, dude? You think I'm the problem? I've been living in your walls peacefully, minding my own business for four months. You're the one that's been rambling for 40 minutes straight about some e-celeb everyone forgot about a couple months ago. Look, I I can't afford rent right now, but I actually just invested in a course. And I think that if you give me a little bit of time... Um... Yeah, just, you know what? Forget I asked, okay? Here, take this. He's cute. What's his name? His name's name Hubert. Oh, uh, by the way, what? All that stuff you're saying seems really negative. Like, you're using a bunch of people that you don't like on the internet to justify your anger, and then, you know, channeling that anger towards just tearing them down. It might resonate with immature, angry people who are happy that you're angry at the same person that they're angry at. But there's no way to grow when your livelihood depends on having something to hate. Yo, look at the bubble popping. Like, um, okay, okay, based. Maybe you should try looking inwards before you post all that angry stuff online. Ooh. Seems kind of unhealthy. You yeah. know, you might have a point. Hey, you gonna piss or, or what? <laughs> okay, okay. There's a decent amount of people who compare Sneeko to Kanye, and that might be true if, you know, you take away all the... Yo, uh, I want to rewatch the Kanye West and Alex Jones conversation. Because apparently some people definitely think... Oh my god, I got pizza all over my face. Croatian pizza for the win, guys. Um, Some people think he definitely has autism and has PDA. And I kind of wonder if that's true and his hyper focus or his special interest is music because I I do wonder that, you know. So I think we might rewatch that maybe one day if we can. Um cuz I'm curious. I'm curious. Remember the Sneeko's neurodivergent? Remember all these kids are neurodivergent, bro, and they're fucking struggling and they grew up in a society that expected things of them that didn't work with like how they saw themselves. And in order to like appeal to these men bubbles, they have to like kind of deny their own neurodivergency in a lot of ways. I don't know. I don't know. But lately, uh, 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 lately, uh, uh, Kanye has been talking about how he has autism. And I'm like, do you have autism? Because honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Good music and leave whatever's left. I said, there's a lot of things that I love about Hitler. A lot of things. Yeah, they're exactly alike. You're right. Yeah. I love it. I'm like, did he really? Am I hearing this? <laughs> what, what were you thinking? Uh, well, it wasn't really surprising because those were some conversations that have been going on for the past couple of weeks. So for us, it wasn't really anything yeah. new. Now, for those who don't fully understand the concept of being a white nationalist, people like this guy, people who basically, you know, if they had their way, there'd only be one race, right? In theory, their ideas are impractical, illogical, and worst of all, cringe. Let's go! Nick Fuentes is in the house! Let's, go. Let's live and go! Boss, all of them, just mid whites with nothing to do in their life, bro. Just what are you doing? The whole age of consent thing is really a feminist social construct. I gotta find everything is a social construct. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Okay. There are women who are going to sleep and date with these date these men. Listen to me. <clears throat> There are women that are going to be attracted to these men. Just remember that. Just remember that. In my 16-year-old life, probably when I turn 30 or something, let's say I get married to a 18-year-old. When I turn 40, she's going to be 34. Ew. I want a 16-year-old that's untouched, untouched, pristine, uncorrupted, innocent. That's what we all want. Masculinity is when you want to fuck kids. But uh, in practice, well... <laughs> It's just genocide. One more election where white people can make the decision. The white people got to make the right decision and then Trump's got to get in there and never leave. That, to me, at this point, is a pathway. We need to uh, have something like a white uprising, um, politically speaking. 
Yeah, despite their best efforts, usually goobers like this are pretty bad at hiding their true intentions, but that doesn't stop them from just lying about their positions. Okay, they'll say that they're pro-democracy or pro-free speech, yet don't fall for it. Are we even pro-free speech? No, of course not, but we have to use this platform in order. So we're being radically... It's Richard Spencer from way back in the day. And I would say, like, um, a lot of people do this. That's what I'm saying. Like, pay attention to people that are using, like, marketing tactics or tactics to move you in a direction. And that's how you figure out, like, okay, where is the authenticity? I mean, if people sound too much like a script, it's because they're following one. But also, we're taught to follow social scripts as a neurodivergent person. Like, trust me, understand what the scripts are. But also, there's always, like, this question of, like, why are we following the script? Is it for good intentions or bad? In Richard Spencer's case, it would be bad. Honest here. Yes, yeah. radically pragmatic. Yeah, it's very easy to be pro-free speech when you have no power. You know, it's gotten to the point where people now associate the right with freedom of speech, which uh, is historically insane. Most of them aren't even against cancel culture today. And back in the day, they were all for silencing opposition or banning subversive material. But nowadays, honestly, just lip service is enough to fool a lot of people, mm -hmm. including... Oh, oh, damn it. Bro, nah, fuck this dude for saying that Haitians are low IQ, bro. Suck a dick. Come on. Bro, are there any Haitians in here? You tolerating that? What did you mean about Haitian IQ? Oh, well, no. Hispanics, hey, blacks, you saying Haitians have the lowest, the lowest, like, Hispanics and blacks have the lowest IQs? Uh, uh, yeah, blacks are the lowest on average Hispanics. Wow. Have. Racial thing, like, it's an inherent thing with your race, or is it just based on the circumstances? Um, it's genetic. It's almost entirely genetic, is what the research says. Because they do twin studies. He's really a good student. <laughs> but just the, you know, the overall. The average is lower, okay. Yeah, you're your dumbass self. You could be got cozy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? This is my uh, new friend, Nick Fuentes. How do you feel about interracial marriages? I'm, I'm against it. My mom's Filipino, my dad's Haitian. Okay. And uh, Nick Fuentes is, is the future? Yeah. Little laugh. Yo, isn't Nick Fuentes Hispanic and white? Like, Hispanic, like, and white? Isn't, are these all mixed kids, bro? Aren't they all literally mixed kids, bro? That's what I'm saying. It's so silly. But Fuentes drives me nuts. Like, Think about Nick Fuentes. He was willing to get barred from banks, flying into certain countries, flying in general. Nick Fuentes went to such a degree with his tactics that he was willing to basically say no to society. But ironically enough, he's not a one. On my introspection system, links in the description, he's not a one because he's actually got a whole community of people that believe in him. He's able to associate with really big names like Ye. He's willing and able to like, farm a community that follows him so he is of service to himself and his community which puts him at 2b or 2a status i'm not sure which but nick fuentes was willing to play such a poor political game in so many ways that he was willing to risk getting barred from banks for something that he, a part of me he must know is not true right you know what i mean so like he must know what he's saying isn't true true but then lots of people say things like this and they do think it's true. I just don't believe Nick thinks any of it is true. But at the same time, he was willing to get barred from like society in order to like, it's just such a weird decision to make, you know, just such a weird decision to make. I just don't get it. <clears throat> Yo, what up, Curious? Uh, you said first stream I've been present for. Well, you're live, Brittany. I'm autistic and just diagnosed two years ago when I was 25. Congratulations on the diagnosis. It's nice to know more about yourself. Um, that's good to hear. I love knowing more about myself. There's just like, that's what's so great about living in a world where we're paying attention to the nuances like that. But yeah, what makes Nick, what do, like, I know, yay, it's like mental health and a lot of other things. With Sneeko, it's like rebellion. But with Nick, what is Nick's why? Why would he do that? You know? Ooh, our... Ari, you think Nick Fuentes is a true believer? Really? I mean, God, he must be to some to some extent. I don't know, bro. Dog Sneeko. The problem globally is, is shadow banking. And who's behind it? Well, <laughs> we talked about a Sneeko. A lot of Jews. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it's true. Get on your knees and bark, boy. I did. Before this goes viral, I know this is going to look bad on Nick Fuentes. You can see him throwing a sprite in the in and out, but... <laughs> it's really incredible the lengths this guy would go to to serve a fucking dude who thinks he's genetically inferior. Just no shame. I mean, the thing about Hitler is he was an extremely competent leader. Yeah, he lost the war, bro. Why does it matter what Hitler's perspective is? He was evil, right? 
I don't know if he was evil. I haven't met the guy. He fucking killed over six million fucking Jews. But you can look past that and you can look at the good that they have done and you can look at how they push for freedoms. I think that you have the potential to be the future president of the United States. Genuinely. Man, Sneeko really likes this guy. And you kind of have this like 50s, a James Dean, like a man who's drinking Coca-Cola. Yeah, he says, is it extreme virtue signaling to be the right, maybe? Mm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, ooh, Discord got pizza too. Let's go, Discord. Nice. That's a nice looking pizza, bro. Yo, that's a good looking pizza, bro. I need the fuck out of that pizza. Burger, milkshake, like and the ice rink that he's at. It's all white people. And I'm like, that's the America <laughs> that Nick wants. Uh, June says, do you think it's a fair hit piece, Brittany? Um, I think so far the information has been pretty accurate in relation to Sneeko and what I know of Sneeko. I would say there's some things that nobody can know unless you know the behind the scenes stuff. So that stuff always irks me. Like my eye twitches a little bit when I'm like, mm, but like it's a fine. Okay. okay. Until someone gives me permission to spill. Girl, the tea. Um, I will say that so far, I, I you guys watch Sneeko. You guys watch me do collabs with Sneeko. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking fair. Like I love Sneeko. I am rooting for him, not his content, not what he does. I love him as a consciousness and I am hoping that and many years from now, we can talk in detail about this very messy era of his life. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty fair so far. What do you guys think? You know what I mean? Um, has anything stood out as not fair? You know? Mm. Is it getting hot in here? We're in a holy war, and I will tell you this. We will make man die in the holy war. <laughs> The enemies of Christ have no future in this world. Thank you. God bless you. Good night. Oh my God. This is, bro. I didn't even know about this. Nicholas J. Point says he's going to be the future president of the United States. I know that they're. You know what I? You know what my deepest theory is? My deepest theory. This is so dumb. So I don't think this is true. But I wonder if a bunch of these people are just using each other to get very famous, to actually get Nick Fuentes to be president one day in kind of the way that Trump ended up president because it would just be funny. You know what I'm, do you know what I'm saying? What if this, this is the longest funny con of human history? Because if anyone was going to pull it off, it would be Sneeko and Nick Fuentes. Because it's just so weird, bro. It's just such a weird decision to make with your life. Even Because even the bubble is a new bubble. Like, everything's a bubble. We all live in bubbles. But this particular crossover is such a unique bubble. You know, there's always the self-hating black, the self-hating woman, the self-hating self -hating gay, the self-hating minority that will, like, appeal to the majority. But Sneeko isn't self-hating in terms of his ethnicity. He's just a middle guy who had a middle life. So I wonder about that. June, welcome to the memberships. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it so much. I'm so, so, so curious if this is like a long con joke, game, plan. I don't even know how they got this far. I also thought Nick Fuentes was never going to get popular when he was talking to Destiny. I don't even know why Destiny was talking to him. I was like, he's never going to get famous. And then I forgot how dumb humans are. I love us so much. I always have such faith in humans. And then they made him famous. And I was like, he was like hanging out with Ye, and I was like, oh my God. Oh, I did not see this coming. Andrew Tate too. Before I was like, ah, Andrew Tate's not a threat. He's just a douchebag. And then I, even after everything's come out, people still love him. I'm like, even my little brother, my little brother does not like Sneeko very much. He thinks he's kind of weird, but he likes Tate and he likes uh, uh, Aiden. And to be fair, Aiden Ross is so funny, but so like in a bubble. They're all in the bubble. We're all in a bubbles, Okay. But you know what I mean? Like, they're really, like, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even get through to them if I wanted to. But this, this pairing up, what bubble is, like, what game is Sneeko playing with Nick Fuentes? They got, and Zerka, too. Zerka's playing his own game. Zerka's playing a game. They're all playing games. But what game is Sneeko and Nick Fuentes playing? I'm telling you. There's something here that doesn't feel authentic enough to me to think they're really, really doing it. Like, Ben Shapiro is obviously authentically, like, sharing his belief systems. I believe that. Joe Rogan is authentic, regardless of whatever version of authentic we're talking about. But Sneeko and Fuentes don't feel like Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro to me. Even though those two guys, like, say bullshit, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. They're, there's someone, there's something different. 
trying to make this look scary, but I just can't stop laughing. This guy is such a simp. Look, if there's one thing that I've learned over my many years on the internet now, it's that anti-Semitism, in the way that it usually manifests, is just anti-capitalism for the dumbest people on the planet. If your life's shitty, you're broke, you hate the elite, you hate the wealthy, you hate banks, but you don't want to hate capitalism, that's not cool. But hating Ooh. Jews, that's easy. That's cool. Instead of targeting your rage at the underlying- That's a pretty good thought. Wait, I never thought that. Mmm, that's a pretty good thought. Because they don't feel anti-Semitic to me in a real way. But they obviously paired anti-Semitism and I'm always like, what are you doing? Okay, that's interesting. Ooh, I think that is an int- Yo, I just got my bubble pop. That's a good- Mmm. It's anti-Semitism hating the elites for the conservatives. Whatever that means to them. Like, is that their conspiracy? That's interesting. Mm. PG says Zerka and Nick know the game they're playing, but I don't think Sneeko knows. I think he's still trying to figure it out. I, I agree with that. I do. Oh, interesting. System. You look for some big other to just feel a conspiracy against. I mean, even Nietzsche, who you know got co-opted by uh, pointed out that anti-Semitism is just baked in with slave morality. Okay, a lot of fucking resentment at play when you have opinions like that. As useless as that, because the Jews are the entire problem. Well, how do you solve that problem? And despite all of that, the system will be completely unfazed. Nothing will change. A lot of rich people also love these narratives because it allows them to look subversive, you know, red-pilled without actually jeopardizing their position as the dominant class. Any politics based on the inferiority or superiority of race only acts as a veil to protect the people in charge from having too many questions pointed toward them, okay? It's a lot easier to blame some fucking ethnicity, some vague concept of a type of person for any problems facing society than it is to look directly in the fucking eyes of those who control it and challenge the underlying structures that are perpetuating those problems. There's plenty of examples of this throughout history, okay? Scapegoating people of a certain race is a very useful tactic for politicians whose constituents are very genuinely disenfranchised. Don't fucking fall for it. Mm. Wait, are you a cat or a dog person? Dog. Yeah, of course you are. Hey, Why cats. cats are for pussies, be honest. Cats are feminine. Hey, okay. cats. Shadow? I want to eat your cat, bro. I want some Asian shit. Let me eat your cat. It's okay, Shadow. You're safe with me. I was going to eat his cat. I meant I want to, like, literally... But cook his cat and eat it. I want to use it for calories. I should have said that. God damn it. <laughs> oh, the potential put to waste to be both martyr and maker of your own annihilation. Damn, bro. Yes. When you're diagnosed with a poor woman with a tired dose of <laughs> Yeah, shut up. Are you sure you'd have the brains not to advertise that scandalous prescription? Oops, I need that. When you danced with the lion little louses, big brave ideas. <laughs> I thought certainly you aren't dense enough to broadcast that betrothal. He doesn't seem racist at all. And yet, time and time again, with each and every day that passed, blinded by the polished rubbish praised upon you, your fat head filled with foul fumes, inflated until the stink spread to the nostrils of some miserly musket who came and popped your pathetic little parlay. Today, I want to briefly talk about the content creator Sneeko and ask YouTube to ban him from the platform. Sneeko has grossly violated YouTube's terms of service and qualifies for removal from the website. You know what they oh my god, I didn't know he did that. I didn't know that. I just remember waking up and finding out Sneeko was banned, sending him a message and saying, sorry, bro, because that sucks. But I didn't know people like it's not um, not so green or green is gay or green is something. It's not that guy. Oh, my God. Who doesn't know when to quit? I made more money in the last two months than I made in the past two years. You need to get smacked in Minecraft. But just one. That's the mark of a bot. There's a war going on on masculinity. They want you to be weak. They don't want you to hear this. I'm on everybody's TikTok for you page. My face is everywhere. They will try to silence you if you say this. Want to get to the truth. I just want to bully this guy. Like, <laughs> greed and grandiosity. Those were your gods. Any semblance of truth was certainly an afterthought. People will follow the truth. I'm one of the most honest people I know. Truth will always prevail. So honest, I think that's why they have to ban me on YouTube. And now, where are you? Alone in your castle. This is the first year I'm not going home for Christmas. Blue hair, woke family, they don't mess talk about politics at all. Been like uninvited for Christmas. So I boy, help me get banned. Little manlet, I would beat the fuck out of you. You watching my stream? Chat safe. But you are an NPC creator. Shut up your throne of lies. Everyone starts to be sexually liberated. That is the destruction of a society. Was I having wrong when they started doing all the same sex stuff? I mean, the thing about Hitler is he was an extremely competent leader. You have to call him horrible because of the Holocaust, but you can't look at how he brought Germany back together. Was he right? Mm, yeah, remember that Sneak was a liar? And they're all lying to you. Like, everybody's just lying. Okay, that's like what everybody does. 
So, like, there was a lot of people who was like, his family uninvited him from Christmas. How do you know that? If Sneeko's a liar, why are you believing him? Oh, my God, that sucks. Like, even Sneeko's family doesn't love him anymore. How do you know that? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I'm not going to partake in this group thing. Performing like a monkey. So he started dancing around with a gun and threatening to come shoot me. What, what, why is your finger on the trigger, man? You want to watch my clips? Watch my clips. But the one thing we fixate on is the six million Jews. It has a lot more to do with the Jews than it has to do with Hitler. Day 24 to Jack. In the company of a bunch of bloody degenerates. Why is it that on Rumble or maybe just my stream, it's just straight up Nazi autism for the whole time? Congratulations on everything. Thank you. I am very proud of this man here. Trump is telling Ye. I'm really impressed with Nick. If a woman gets beat, bro, W spam the whole chat. Chat chat. Me and you. We get in the cage. Who's winning that fight? If someone says Whitler for one second, ironically, like the whole chat goes crazy. Nine, 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 nine. I think, um, I don't know how Jen Z learned about the Holocaust, if I'm going to be honest. But the way millennials learned about the Holocaust, guys, was like documentary after documentary, survivor testimony, museum visits, um, like... The way we learned about the Holocaust was it was like ingrained in us to learn about it because it was a devastating, devastating recent thing in history. Mm. And so I think if Gen Z isn't, is Gen Z learning about it? Like, do they watch Schindler's List? Do they watch like even Hollywood films about it? I wonder if they're even having a connection to it in the way that we had to as millennials. I am curious about that. Like my parents, because they're Catholic and minorities from Iraq, they even like we watched so many movies about the Holocaust or about Hitler. So there was no like you could meme about Hitler, but there was obviously an understanding that what Hitler did, did was bad. Right. Like what what happened was horrible. But I wonder if Gen Z even has that connection to them. You know. Oh, we know J-Reg. Okay, the J-Reg cameo was edited. Okay, nice, nice. We, we, um, we like J-Reg over here. Okay, interesting. What is wrong with you guys? You've made your bed, boy. Now lie in it. Ooh, that voice sounds like One Piece. Sounds like, uh, the drag queen. But Adam. English. Adam. Now, I might be a bit warped, okay, a bit twisted, because for me, if I know that somebody is not saying something that they actually believe, they're intending it as a joke, or they're just, you know, fucking around, then I just won't really care. I won't take it very seriously. You can blame those boys for doing that to me, okay? They practically raised me. So when Sneeko says, seek truth through funny. You have to seek truth through funny, that's my motto. I think anybody who's funny or who's entertaining, they understand the truth because you can't laugh at things that, that are false. And he's just giving like all these unironically fucking brutal pieces of advice, takes, opinions, whatever. You can just say anything and it can be written off as a joke. No, that's not in my mind how it works, all right? You can say your opinion in a funny way. I'm still gonna judge the fucking opinion. Because at that point, it's actually kind of an argument you're making. You're trying to sway people, you're trying to influence them. And that takes it beyond a joke. Not beyond comedy though. That's, a, that's a, probably a crucial component of comedy. For me personally, one of the most interesting parts of edgy humor is the transgression. It can be a way to challenge or test power because, hey, you might elicit a reaction. Ah, oh, that voice voice acted by the YouTuber Colossal is crazy. Okay, love that. I think I know that username actually. Colossal is crazy. That sounds familiar. It reminds me of the, the sub sound of the drag queen on One Piece. I forget everyone's names. Faco, Ivaco, Vaco. Anyways. Action. You might get punished. It's a way to test the line. That's why you probably notice that when untalented people get banned, they start saying and doing some of the most outrageous shit possible. It's because there's no longer an edge. They've already fallen off the cliff. And once you've fallen into the abyss, the only way to get people to come and look down at you is to scream at the top of your lungs. I think transgender should die in the holy war. I think they're a fucking virus of society, dude. What if oh my god, who gives a fuck about Leafy, bro? Leafy, what a little cesspool of a human. Him and Chud Logic should m get married. Like, ugh, these drama YouTubers, him, Keemstar, Chud, the threesome of the century. We'd all subscribe to that OF. I just feel like they're so, just like, they all need a spanking from their mothers. If it was just a joke, what if I jokingly say that I think that I want to fucking bash someone with a baseball bat over the head? And if I'm being completely honest, I think it's pathetic. Bro, do you think I'm writing, writing the line pretty closely with Rumble? Ooh, Bon Clay. No, not Bon Clay. No. The king of the gays. The drag, not Bon Clay, guys. Bon Clay is a fabulous fairy. Bon Clay is gender fluid. I'm not talking about Bon Clay. Guys, we need One Piece historians in the chat, please. Well, you think I, you think I... Ivanko. Ivankov. Oh, I was right. Okay, there we go. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to get banned or anything like that? 
Well, I, I think when you say uh, we should, yeah, when you say something like that, it's it's hard to justify as a joke. What do you mean? Joe Biden put up a transgender flag in the White House, bro. Edgy humor is most interesting because of the rules, not in spite of them. What do you do when there's virus in your system, bro? You kill it, you remove it. Chemotherapy, right, bro. Um, Chemotherapy, bro. Okay. But you said like we should um, delete transgenders. Because I saw we what happened after January 6th. Is this the right war to fight? Against gay people? Yes. They got me banned and I fucking hate them for it. That's the truth, bro. I don't like them. Kill anybody. That's a joke, that was just a joke. Obviously, I'm not talking about we should chemotherapy, you know, transgenders, bro. The way I see it, people like Leafy, they're the embodiment of what happens when you allow resentments to control your life. And if there's any lesson to be learned, it's that holding on to bitterness will always bring you closer to beast than beauty. Yeah, so the second that Sneeko started getting popular for jumping on the Tate wave, the opportunists started circling like vultures. And some of the smartest guys that you'll see in these red pill spaces are the finance bros. <laughs> you know, not because they're geniuses or anything, more so because they're very good. Look, when I made my first hundred million, it was a humbling experience. But to be honest with you, it wasn't that hard. Good at capitalizing on attention. Meet Luke Belmar, the real life Neo. Uh, Chad, this is Luke. This is uh, the real life Neo. This man is Neo. <laughs> I'm serious. He managed to escape the Matrix by selling $16 million in sanitation products at the start of the pandemic. Like, okay, let me redesign sanitation in house cleaning products for pets. And then um, parlaying that into the crypto market before it boomed. You're a worthless piece of shit. That is the truth. You are a substanceless, worthless piece of shit. When I first talked to Luke, he was calling me a peasant to my face. And I'm like, you're, you're right. Brokey, like he's looking at me. Yeah, you're broke. I'm like, yeah. So let me listen up. This isn't for money. It's to wake people up and trying to help other people. That's his genuine intention. It's good intentions. Now, out of the kindness of his heart and the course he's trying to sell, he's going to teach you to escape the matrix too. You want to become a millionaire, you have to become a millionaire. Like, I don't know how to explain it more fucking easy than that. You don't know what you don't know. So the goal is to know so you can know. So what you know, the better off you'll be. And the information in school is, it's a waste of time. Oh. It's a waste of time. That's the information you should be receiving. School's a waste of time. I heard something about crypto. Yeah, crypto is extremely important. So I 40 x my net worth all through crypto. All that I did was have the right information before the peasants. And when the peasants got excited about it, I left. Uh, Chad, this is Luke. This is uh, the real life Neo. This guy is one of the smartest guys I've met. I called Sneeko about it yesterday. I was like, dude, you have like such a cool responsibility for a lot of these kids. They don't have role models. Like the world's fucked. We can all agree on that. One thing you told me in Puerto Rico is that I need to start dressing better. I need to buy more expensive shirts. You said I dress like a scrum. Because no, your shorts have holes in them. I was like, bro, like why do you have new shorts in your shorts? Oh man, you can't have holes in your clothes and escape the matrix? <laughs> Damn. Nice. I have commitment. Broke people have commitments, bro. With his knowledge, he's making the world a better place. You create the problem, yeah, and you create the solution, and you make it very easy to solve the problem. Is Luke legit, bro? Is he? I've seen him around. He drives me crazy, bro. I haven't gone into the Luke content. I, I've seen him, but I haven't loved him. I watch all these, like, finance podcasts. I watch all these bros just to see if anyone's legit. Obviously, everyone's figured out something for their own field and niche, but also a lot of people inflate themselves, so I never know. You know what I mean? And you make it difficult for everybody else to solve the problem. Exactly. And you say that everybody else is shredded to solve the problem, except you. Just listen to his satisfied customers. I was shredding the slopes here in Zermatt. You know, I'm paired up with this random kid, 16-year-old. Worked his ass off to be in a situation where he could get a nice college scholarship. Young man, what do you want to study? Well, I want to study engineering. Excuse me? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be studying engineering. I'm going to be able to make ends meet. I'm going to have a really good paying job. I said, let me ask you a question. Wait, this guy didn't try to talk the kid out of becoming an engineer, right? By the time you graduate, will artificial intelligence replace your newfound skill set? Because when it comes to mathematics, precision, numbers, artificial intelligence is a lot more powerful than any human alive. Will you be consumed by artificial intelligence? Live with this bullshit idea that college and university will be worth it? Or understand where the world is going 20 years from now? We need to be building companies of the future. We need to be doing things of tomorrow. You made your money dropshipping products for a pandemic you didn't even think was real, bro. My girl, she used to be a doctor. Now she's told her because it's a waste of time. Being a doctor is a waste of time. Just in doctor, doctor nation, right? Play on words right there. Being an engineer is a waste of time. Whether you're white, you're Asian, you're Filipino, you're Norwegian, doesn't matter. What matters is the value that you provide to society. But devoting your life to crypto and maximizing your wealth. I yeah, what is this bullshit, uh, bro? If I get, oh, if you want to know one of my biggest pet peeves, bro, I am so annoyed at people that are like, you have to be like useful to society. First of all, how do you escape the matrix if the matrix is in society? Second of all, if you want to be good to society, you need to be good to yourself and good to your neighbors and good to the people around you. And how are you going to do that if we're all doing the same thing? We can't all be in crypto. We can't all be in something. We can't all... You have to have a diversified society to have it run. You have to have fast food workers that are paid correctly and they have to be able to afford housing. You have to have people that become stay-at-home parents. You have to become teachers. You have to have engineers in society. Like you have to have people who do these things. I think the narrative they're mostly pushing is that the exceptional people will do exceptional things. But I think exceptional people come in all shapes and sizes, Avi. But I think they're just selling like Bugattis and trying to be like popular, selling materialism. Which, again, you study philosophy, you study religion. If you study anything about introspection, you're going to know that materialism is just like a dead end. But, like, you do you. You know, like, you do you. 
No work, dude. I'll live under a bridge before I work. That's useful. I gotta go get this guy tucked in bed. That's gay. Never mind. I'm not tucking him in bed. These guys program Sneeko. Sneeko programs you. I want you to think about the last two years of your life and now evaluate where you are today. If things have not changed, it's completely your fault. And I'm not talking, ladies and gentlemen, about micro change. I'm not talking about, oh, I got two new friends that make money. Oh, I got a couple more dollars. No, no. The last two years, ladies and gentlemen, tens of trillions of dollars were printed out of thin air. How much did you take home? If the answer is zero or under 10 per year, at least. Oh, look, 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 you're a fucking peasant. I'll be teaching you guys how to master sexual transmutation on a different live stream. Meet Iman Godzi, the early 20s millionaire who escaped the Matrix by, uh, uh, having an ad agency that he closed down and now makes most of his money selling courses on how to run an ad agency? That's okay. I'm telling you, that's okay. Mm. Listen to me. Whether they're men or women, because I've been in both, whether they're men or women, tell, I'm telling you right the fuck now. I'm telling you. There is a formula in this. There's a formula in this bubble. And the formula is do something enough to become successful enough to make a YouTube video about it. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Do something enough to be slightly successful enough to make videos on it and then talk about it and then you make most of your money off talking about it. That's why people told me to like sensationalize my life and like make money talking about it, but I just can't, I can't live with myself as a content creator and do it. I can't. It just feels so, it feels slimy. And I think some people do it in a way that's not slimy, okay? But but this is the model. That is the model. And so part of me is like not mad about the model, but just pay attention to the fact, like Graham Stephan talked about this the other day, how so many people did real, did real, like uh, were realtors for just long enough to make money talking about being realtors and then they stopped doing it because making content did better for them. So again, it's like, yeah, it's like... I get it. It's interesting. I mean, I, like I said, I love Graham Stephan. I watch all these podcasts. But if there's one thing I'm sick of listening to the podcast about is like them making their monies and no longer working in the industries in quite the same way. So I feel like, I don't know, it's like, it's good. It's good content, but it's also the formula to their business now is to make money. Make That's why Graham makes the same videos every year. I some content creators make the same content every year and then people keep because it's like this people want you know what I'm saying like oh how much money do you need to have in the bank at what age to buy this house when those videos are never going to get old so if you have any credibility in the sphere and you make those videos enough there's always a new audience who will watch them and I'm not shitting on it I'm just letting you know that's the business model yeah. This is a guy that's like probably 20 times my net worth. And not just a guy who got lucky on crypto, a guy who put in the work. Iman, well, what do you I, I did get lucky on crypto. I am the biggest fan of cryptocurrency. I invested $1 million into crypto in early December of 2020. Rode that portfolio up to almost $7 million. And most of your network is from your boring businesses, as you said. Yeah. E learning, advertising agency. Not just a bunch of internet scams. Now, out of the kindness of his heart and the course he's trying to sell, he's going to teach you how to prepare for the upcoming economic collapse. You need to get rich. And you need to get rich quick. The puppet masters are about to have you right where they want you. Mm -hmm. There's what? a top secret undeclared war going on behind the scenes right now. Mm -hmm. Forget your property rights. Forget your future. Forget your liberty. Mm -hmm. The, this is why conspiracy talk bothers me. This is why Jordan Peterson bothers me. Anyone who's afraid, anyone who's selling you a fear-based like, do this before it crash, do this before this, do this. I'm, you're giving me anxiety and I know it's bullshit. Like it's just like a marketing technique. I can hear it in my head. It's a marketing technique and I hate being marketed to. And I know it's all marketing. Everything's marketing and I love that. But like, I don't want to know. I don't. Shh. Be quiet. I just, well, do this before. Just look at the history of the world, guys. Look at the history of the world, right? You'll be fine. Said to themselves, you will own nothing. You will oh. So you should spend the last two years building in order to have financial freedom, location freedom. But if you haven't done that yet, well, there's actually still one last light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, it's his course, obviously. And while, yeah, sure, these finance bros, they're all technically different from each other. But they all share a kind of similar formula, okay? It's pretty simple. Step one is to point out all the symptoms caused by having a government run by corporations. 80% of Americans are in debt. They live paycheck to paycheck and depend on the income from next month to pay this month's bills. And the thing is, the way debt is set up is literally for you not to be able to pay it. The max yearly interest rate that could be charged was 3%. Today, we have have credit card interests ranging anywhere from 15 to 25 percent wealthy people started buying up lots and lots and lots of assets assets like houses so for the normal person right now we're facing rampant inflation how much it costs for your groceries really just the cost of living step two is to advertise themselves as people who are above these symptoms when i had one of my uk bank accounts closed i mean yeah sure almost a million pounds it sucks but i've prepared for years that if something like that happens 
I still sleep easy at night. But every day I have Why the fuck did that happen? What do you mean? He lost a million pounds? For what reason? What illegal bullshit was he doing? What? I mean, it happens like I had a friend get scammed out of $50,000 from their bank account and their bank um, basically didn't secure the amount and they basically have been in a two-year battle to get that money back. But what did, what did, what? Did a million pounds really just disappear? I mean, I guess it's possible, but. 20, 20 grand on me. I dripped 20 grand. I've been to 40 countries. I've been around the world. I speak three languages. And step three is to tell them that the best way to combat an individualistic, you know, greedy corporate run society is to be the most individualistic, greedy motherfucker around. But here's the thing, in order to buy- I mean, that is a, t that is a way to do it. By assets, you need cash flow. And those that take advantage of it will experience the climb in social hierarchy like never before seen in human mankind. And it's I want to see these boys' banks accounts and I want to see their tax returns. Society run by money, you got to be running the fastest. I'm speaking to you guys because I truly care. So I want you to know that I'm watching from afar as a big brother of sorts. So when this 22-year-old self-made millionaire extraordinaire started talking about the puppet masters who want to keep you weak, broke, feminine, whatever, he made sure to say, there's a big chance that I get all of my accounts taken down for talking about stuff like this, the millions and millions of dollars that I put on the line because I talk about the stuff that other people are so afraid to address. No matter how many bank accounts I have to go through in order to get this message to you, I don't care. And really, he was just regurgitating some lukewarm buzzwords to attract the red pill crowd and get them to buy his thousand dollar court. Guys, I need to tell you something that no one's willing to tell you. It's all a construct. All of it. So you might as well be one of these guys. Just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like, yeah, what is this? Like, I have something. To, I'm going to tell you something. No one ever. That's such a good marketing technique. They're going to shut me down. They're going to shut me down. Um, You're still on the air. Relax. Like, you know, relax. Of course. Woke celebrities, a cancellation, or a peasant slave. Slave, slave, slave. You're basically, they're slave. slave to the system. Revolution. I need to wake you. I love how these people are like, there's no victim mentalities. You're not a victim. Victim mentality is not the way to go. It's a slave labor, bro. You're literally being controlled by the Matrix, bro. You are. However, believe it or not, his video actually did get taken down. <laughs> but not by the puppet masters. By himself. He, he took it down. And then he claimed that YouTube was censoring him. Apparently not knowing that YouTube literally states when you private your own video. <laughs> Simon, I f up and I'm sorry because I tried to perception manage. The plan from the beginning was always to delete these videos, but then I decided to lean into the narrative that they were deleted. And I'll put on screen the Instagram. Oh, oh, what an L. Bro, L in the chat, bro. Like, that's crazy, bro. That's so funny. I'm telling you, people be fucking lying out here, bro. That's cringe. Do, oh, I have so many YouTube stories. I have so many stories about this from YouTube content creators. I am so shocked when YouTube content creators are willing to go to such lengths. That's what I mean, bro. My record's so clean, bro. My record's so clean. <laughs> I How embarrassing. <laughs> I am stories that I put out to sort of insinuate this. I truly am sorry. I became no better than the puppet masters I was warning you about. This is the genius you're supposed to buy $1,000 course from, by the Holy way. So he lied fuck. to his young audience in order to promote a ripoff course. And Sneeko, being the useful idiot that he is, immediately ran to his defense. Genius marketing. This is just what... Yes, in the marketing scam bubble, good job, buddy. But also not good job because you fucked up your own marketing and had to apologize, bro. Like, that's what's so funny. Oh, my God. I fucking love it. I love it. I mean, I, if these guys, I just, oh, I have so many things. But it is. Get over yourself. Dumb losers like this are just so stupid for the fact that you just figured out how to market for the first time. He apologized because he didn't actually do the video. He just did it himself. Okay, move on. Nah, Iman definitely a fraud. Oh. Take a look at his company filings. You can see his company never earned the money he claims. He's lying to sell courses, which is where his main revenue comes from. This is everybody. Like, you, th you think Trump is really a billionaire? No, probably not. Fake. Yeah. Dumb Okay, this is what I say about Sneeko that makes me wonder. Because look, the truth is, guys, like when I started getting into politics and I realized like all these people are fucking liars, bro. When I got into YouTube, I'm like, oh, you guys are fucking liars. And like, I'm like, why are you lying? I'm too, I'm so neurodivergent that I'm like, why are we lying? Why don't we just say it out loud? And like, you can't say that out loud, Brittany. I was like, I can't keep this up, bro. I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to be real with you. I'm not a mean autist. I can't keep it up. I'm not an autist, but you know what I mean? Not yet. But like, yeah, I can't keep it up, bro. But let me tell you, I think, I feel like Sneeko did find out everyone was lying. He's like, oh, so this is the game I should play. And I'm like, no, 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 don't play that game with them. And he's like, but they have money. And I was like, okay, that's true. I didn't have the money to seduce Sneeko to my side. That's true. I don't have a million dollars. That's very true. And it's true. All these guys were making millions of dollars. They're fucking lying, bro. They're fucking lying. King Indoor said, I thought you said marketing courses aren't scams. Marketing courses aren't scams. Courses aren't scams. The scam is if the, 
okay, a scam would be getting something different than what you paid for. If you're paying for a course, you know the, the, you know the, you know everybody sells a course, right? Schools sell courses, beauty gurus sell courses, working out training, Lean Beef Patty sells a course, like people sell courses. The, the Green Brothers, like John and Hank Green, they sell a course. You know people sell courses. Like people sell courses. It's very normal. So the course itself is not what the scam is. The scam is is the like the the scam is around the storytelling. The scam is around the overpromising. The scam is around what they're telling. It's not I okay, I got sponsored for a course. And I went to this course and it was like a $25,000 course or something. And it's a marketing course for like whatever. It was a really good experience. But yeah, there was nothing in that course that I could have learned on my own. And I wouldn't have paid that money for it. The only reason people pay that money for it is because they want the connection to this course person, their connections and their networking, which was two billionaires. They wanted the networking. So like, of course, courses themselves aren't scams. It's what you're getting around the framing of the course. And then if you're upset, with what you paid for, like if you paid for something, and yeah, Mantis, it wasn't supplied exactly. That's the scam. But the scam with these guys is the scam around the narrative they're selling, that they're all rich, that they're all successful, that women want them. Like Dan Balzerian, the scam around Dan Balzerian was that he was worth a lot of money and women wanted to fuck him voluntarily, which was not true. He was worth some money, not a lot, and women were really paid to be there or wanted to network with him. So the scam is around the narrative because it's a false narrative to sell an image. A lot of the Kardashians, a lot of those people you see, they're also like, that's the entertainment factor, which you could call a scam or just an entertainment factor of the Kardashians. They make up drama, they fight. Even on YouTube, haven't you seen YouTubers like farm for drama? The other day, we just had a panel on this and I said, you're farming for drama. You made up drama. People make up shit just to fight with people on the internet so they can make up drama and make money off viewers. That's why my job is to be like, I think that's fake. And you're not supposed to say it out loud. Like there's, they want to work with you. They want to like do shit with you. But if you say it out loud, that's why, okay, that's why I'm going to make money being the artist that just says it out loud because I think it's funnier. And two, everyone, like Sneeko says, everyone knows you're doing it. So me saying it out loud isn't even saying something the audience doesn't know. It's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the irony. Sneeko's right. I know you guys all know it's happening. You just convince yourselves it's not happening because you're watching a YouTuber and you think YouTubers are real. They're like me. But they're not like you. They're selling you something. They're selling you a narrative that they're good debaters, that they're good at content, that their drama is worth watching. And yeah, to be honest, I love reality TV, bro. And it's fun being a character in it. But this is a job. We're at work. We're paying tax on this, girl. So enjoy it for entertainment's sake, but you can't start believing Andrew Tate or Sneeko or any of these debate bros. Stop believing them as real people and start just being entertained by them. So stop buying their courses, stop buying their shit, stop giving them money and just enjoy them for views. You're already giving them money by viewing them, you know? But it's like, it's, it's silly. It's silly. It's not, real men are not doing these things. Like real adults are not in this sphere, guys. We're fake adults. We're having fun. We're watching anime. We're fucking partying with our friends. Not me. I'm old. But you know, it's not like what adults are really. The world isn't being run by Sneakos and Tates. Okay. It's just like one part of the bubble is. Do you get what I'm saying? You can be a part of it. I just, it's bullshit. And then people get hurt along the way. They hurt women. I absolutely know for a fact that Sneeko has fucked over women. I know for a fact people be out here fucking over women left and right. Don't fuck these men, girls. I swear to God, listen to Auntie Brittany. Do not fuck these girls. I mean, do not fuck these boys. Who are girls? I'm just kidding. Don't fuck them. Dumbass. Capitalism. That's life. That's business. You're just first realizing how money is made. Money's already printed. You got to take it. He's helping people out so that they don't get scammed by Iman. Broke. You're broke. And you might be wondering, why was Sneeko so eager to defend this guy? And uh, the answer is one word. Dubai. Dubai's a bit. Why did you choose Dubai? Like, oh from my God. Red flag. People who love Dubai or say they love it and they're not from there or have no connections to Dubai. I know Dubai's, Dubai is probably lovely. I'm sure it's really great, but don't trust these like finance bros that are like Dubai, 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 Dubai. 
For me, I think Dubai to live is the best place on earth. You can, you can be in Dubai like three, four months a year. I'm, that's all you need to pay zero percent tax. Yeah, I can leave a half million dollar watch on the day bed at a beach club when I go in the water because I don't want to go in the watch. Right. I come back, I have no downstairs. There's no, there's no brokies in Dubai. No, there's a lot of brokies. Really? Oh, there's just staff. There's, yeah, there's a lot of brokies, but obviously they have their passports. In Dubai, like if someone <laughs> works for you, um, you you take away their passport. Habibi, come to Dubai. Habibi. Fucking losers, bro. I love them. They're just fucking losers. I love it. I fucking love it. Thomas says the thing is there's also women staying a saying go orbit one of these dudes and manipulate them for money and fame. They all deserve it. They all deserve each other. The women that use these men for money, the men who use these women for pussy, they all fucking deserve each other and she, they should go do that to leave the rest of us alone. I want them to all go fuck each other so we all don't have to deal with them. Stop thinking you're going to change these men, bro. Leave them alone. Dubai is great. I've been hyping it a lot of my live streams talking about how the West is dead. The degeneracy. Yeah, Dubai. A place famously known for having no degeneracy. The wokeness will destroy <laughs> you. It eats away your soul. And this is a place that's like a utopia away from it all. <laughs> this is what being out of touch looks like, okay? For those unfamiliar. You hang out with millionaires for one week and suddenly you're equating wokeness with... Why do they love Dubai so much? It's just business. It's just networking. Like I said, okay, when I read Fresh and uh, Myron's book, Why Women Deserve Less, in the front cover of Myron's book, he's like saying thank you to eight different dudes or however many different dudes, Sneeko being one of them. All it is is networking. People go to Dubai. There's a lot of business in Dubai. And to be fair, Dubai is putting itself on the map. All of that area, right? All of that area. They're trying to contend with the world. And I think they should, obviously. Like it's a, it's a business world. But they're all like promoting each other, right? They're all like lifting each other up. So when Sneeko does business with these guys, it's all just networking. That's why I say I don't want to be part of these little fucking YouTube clicks because you have to suck dick the whole fucking time, whether you're straight or not. Like, okay, it's a little bit like it's a metaphor, but like, you know what I mean? So again, like I love a YouTube click, but also you have to fucking be shitty in some aspect, hide someone's trashy life, hide someone's secret, hide someone's something. I'm like, oh, nope. So Dubai is just like a networking thing. And it's fine if you want to network in that bubble, but like it is a networking decision. And so you've got to, you've got to be able, like even women, I follow, uh, I see a lot of women on TikTok who like are always promoting Dubai and they're just influencers. They're just paid and they're given every opportunity to go there where it's easy. But yeah, like they're obviously, it's all just networking guys. Like that's why, that's why Sneeko thinks, I think he's a 2A maybe. I feel like he popped all these bubbles and realized like, oh my God, wait, is it all like a construct and everyone's playing a capitalist game and like nothing fucking matters. But instead of hopping to a four where he actually popped all of the bubbles, he just popped enough of the bubbles to realize, I think just enough to realize like, oh my God, are we all just like in a capitalistic game? I'm going to fucking like, I'm going to fucking do it. And I was like, okay, I, okay. And like, that's the thing. I think people get stuck in this like materialism or like beat the capitalist game bubble and then they never find peace and they're fucking 45 years old and they're just worried about nice abs, which is just as superficial as the girls who care about their fake tits. I love fake tits, by the way. We're very pro plastic surgery here. Bodily autonomy is valuable. Anyways, but it's like, you know what I mean? The same girls they shit on for a living are the same kind of guys they are. They're all just each other. So again, peace and love, like this is all just like networking and connections and getting to the next game they're playing. Um, but yeah, I hope he pops this bubble too and realizes like, I'm not fucking happy. I'm fucking 35 years old. I hope in 10 years he fucking emails me and goes, um, and I'm like, I know, I know, but I'm poor. I can't seduce Sneeko unless I was rich. If I was rich, Sneeko might listen to me more. I'm just not rich, bro. I'm not rich. Poverty. What's some weird shit in Dubai? I heard that they like did pee on poop on the girls there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. You want, you want to lie? <laughs> yeah, when the rich elites are partaking in actual degeneracy, well, that's just partying. But when brokies are partying, well, that's degeneracy. Why do you exactly. think these millionaires who sell courses flew out Sneeko and other men's self-help guys to their private beaches and big mansions? Gave them gifts and experiences only money can buy. Did you all know this was happening? <laughs> I, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. Why are you leaving the cameras? Oh, yeah, you're left. I ain't fooling sanity and I These finance bros know that good faith and promotion can be purchased. And that this red pill wave attracted a lot of dumb money. Mainly from ambitious, naive kids, but also just people who wanted to improve themselves. This guy got exposed for deceiving his own audience. An audience that has a lot of crossover with Sneeko's. And, uh... That's life! That's business! He couldn't care less. Okay. Okay. This is something my parents taught me. And again, I think my parents parented probably their older kids the worst and the best. 
the worst and the best. But like my parents taught me this. So when I come into a bubble, I'm like, oh, you're lying. And then I learn it. The thing is, like, not everybody learns it the same way. My parents still like Tucker Carlson and Trump. I don't know how that's possible when they taught me to look for a scam my whole life growing up. How can they not tell Trump and Tucker are scamming them or like lying to them? What's a better word? Like I look at Tate or Tate and I look at like Sneeko and I'm like, oh, you're playing like that weird game. Like, how did my parents raise me to know when people are fucking with me and my money? But then they don't know that Trump and Tucker are fucking with them. And then people don't know Sneeko is fucking with them. And Andrew Tate is fucking with them. How do you not know? How do you not know? But then you don't know because like you kind of refuse to believe you've fallen for a new one. But then that's the thing. If you put all your faith in a human and a human is flawed, then of course they're going to disappoint. I don't know. I think it's fear. I think people are afraid of missing out. I think people are afraid of like not like they're afraid of being tricked. And because they're being af they're afraid of being tricked, they're willing to be tricked in a way that feels better. Like humans are going to human. The only real answer to the universe is like having a better relationship with your consciousness and then we go from there. But instead of facing ourselves, we project it into materialism. Right? And so it's so interesting. It's fascinating. June says, uh, Brittany, are you on Twitch? I am not on Twitch. I mean, I have a Twitch, but I haven't started using it yet. I'm a little overwhelmed with streaming on two platforms, so I, ju I just stream here for now. He doesn't want to risk losing his Dubai hookup. So what makes him think that he'd be any less corrupt than the wealthy elites that he always goes on about? What they should be angry at is the elites, bro. The government, the powerful people. If anything, he'd be way worse. I mean, he frames it as wanting to, you know, network or learn from all these rich guys. But from what I can tell, there's only one lesson that he's learned from these sleazy pricks. Meet Sneeko, the hundred thousandaire who escaped the Matrix by sucking cock. Oh, wait a minute. It's time to stop scrolling and start monetizing. The Creativity Kit. Welcome to the Creativity Kit. What a beautiful name for a course that literally just teaches you how to clip chimp. We're gonna teach you everything you need to know to make money online. And be as generic, as standardized as humanly possible. We're gonna obviously watch the video and we'll give a breakdown as you go along. What do you do? What's your life? What is this? What's been on? Uh, this was perfect. There's a part of the reason it got 15 million. Confused, aggressive, feminist looking type of asking question -y woman. She gives off that vibe a lot. Like they actually do know how it works. If you wanna get views and get clout really fucking fast, you just focus on outrage. To get your perspective. But no, 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 what does that benefit for you? There you go, she's always asking. This one was great. She was great. If you're watching this, you're a bit of a bitch, but you're great. You know what I mean? So just shit on like bitchy looking women or like trans people doing, you know, outrageous shit. Mm -hmm. Answer, Answer. She's giving a big feminist type of vibe. So it's that controversy, like I said in the previous episodes, is always good. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is, uh, well, easy come, easy go. You make content as cheap and cookie cutter as this, your relevancy will entirely depend on your output. Because, uh, yeah, that shit's a dime a dozen, bro. Mm -hmm. It's a good grift, I guess, apparently, but uh, it's cheap. It ain't quality. This guy's entire brand, his, I mean, mission statement, Ugh. basically, as a creative, is quality over quantity. I mean, even his clothing brand. But man, he had so much quality back in the day. Sneeko's old shit was so good, bro. It's just called quality. Quality merch just dropped. Quality I mean, yeah, it's ironic because the designs are kind of dog shit. Thank you for your money, merch drop. Thank you for your money. It's kind of funny, though. It is pretty funny. I think it's pretty great. Like, I'm not going to lie. Thank you for your money. It's pretty funny. Let's get this bread. Let's get this bread. People like simple and funny. That's what they like. They like simple, funny, in this bubble, right? The message of this collection, man. People have this weird idea about money and about selling out. And they're like, well, well, no, this is an acceptance of it. Like, I'm convinced that I could probably make better merch in like three days. Oh, did he? Well, you might not be able to kill an idea. You sure as hell can kill a person. Bad faith. Sounds kind of cool, to be honest. I think I'm going to make that my first merch line. It's been such a long time coming. Oh, damn. Going back to the course for a second, probably my biggest complaint is that for about 30 minutes, this notification is going off. Today, for example, I hit 200,000 subscribers non-stop. Nor distractions and stay focused. The bigger picture is creating art, inspiring people, spreading truth. I don't take advice from people less successful than me. I love every single part of it. Simple comfort food. Oh Something you want. Yeah, I like to watch him. Uh, do not get complacent. I mean, aside from being annoying as hell, it just kind of makes it obvious that there wasn't a ton of effort being put in here. How do I edit TikToks? Literal arts. Just YouTube it. 
Do a quick Google search. Wait, you're not going to teach me that? In this course, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to make money online, finding clients, how the algorithm works, how to edit properly. All the information in human history is right here. You don't need school. You don't need a book. You can search up and find out and learn anything right now. Social media is ruining the youth and has too much influence on culture, but also everything you need to know is in that phone. Welcome to the Creativity Kit. Haters are always gonna hate. You cannot listen to them. Why is this problematic guy here? Drop your ego. You can't start trying to create art online to try to gain followers or try to flex on other people. I miss the old Nico. You fell off. What happened to you? They don't know what they're talking about. Haters gonna hate. Ignore I think he just, I think a part of him really did get upset, right? With the fact that his, and it's true, like, look, it can get upsetting when you're making content you really love. I think he said specifically it really bothered him when he realized, like, the quality content he was making was getting more views when Hassan watched it than on its own. And I think a lot of content creators might feel this way. Like, I mean, the guy who did this video, like, he was in chat earlier, and I hope he knows, like, I I hope this, like, I hope he's not upset people are reacting to the video. I don't think so. I think he's cool with it. But I'm sure it can get frustrating to see people react to your content. and. I don't know, like get more views, I guess, than the original in some way. Like, I'm sure that's very frustrating, but selling out is such an interesting decision to make. But also that's why Sneeko always feels like he's doing a very big project. Like, doesn't it feel like he's doing a very big film project? And I've said this from day one that I think Sneeko is playing a character to like put together a larger project, but I don't know how intentional it is. Like, I don't know if we're, if I'm making like a prediction, you know how I like I make my little predictions, just like numbers wise. I feel like he's more, it's more probable, right? It's more probable that he is in 10 years going to make a wonderful documentary about his time on YouTube and how he fucked up royally or whatever pro platform he'll be on, right? Um, then for him to keep going in this direction, but he could keep going in the direction and that would be very strange, you know? That would be very strange, but possible. It feels like he knows too much to keep doing this for too long, but also maybe. But it feels like he's living a really authentic life in the sense that he really thinks he's doing something, but also might be a part of a larger thing he doesn't even know is happening. Like, you know when you live your life, like you meet the, you meet somebody for the first time and you have no idea they're about to be your husband or they're about to be your best friend. I wonder if Sneeko doesn't even realize this is about to be his greatest documentary ever done because he's living a life that is so outrageous that in 10 years, 20 years, he's going to have to make it into a documentary. Something like that. Mantis says, you might be giving him too much credit. He might do that, but I doubt it's been intentional. No, no, no. It's not about it being intentional now. It's about the fact that he, I don't know if he even realizes, like this could be the potentiality for him looking back and having like one of the greatest documentaries ever. Not that he knows he's doing it now in the same way you don't know you're talking to your husband or your wife for the first time when you meet them. Like, you have no idea, but then you realize, like, oh, my God, that guy who said hi to me at the coffee shop, I ended up marrying him, and I had no idea that day when I saw him. Something like that feeling. I don't know. That's my prediction, um, and I'm only giving him as much credit as I think he possibly could deserve based off of all the work he's done, but his introspection, he's got to pop another bubble. He's got to pop the big bubble, the big one, um, to really get it, but I don't know if he will, and that's what we'll have to see. Or Delusion. They live in delusion. They also promote you to do some affiliate marketing for them. Chat, by the way, you should clip this up. This is going to definitely go viral on TikTok. And if you want to learn how to do it, creator kid just drop. Well, people tell me not to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway because you want to make money as a team. If you want free clout, clip up the stream and make a bag on TikTok, bro. I'm putting you on a free game. I'm not even going to make money off that. This is how a lot of these guys were blowing up, okay? People would be posting clips of them nonstop for free in the hopes that somebody would buy their course and they'd get a commission. If you can complain about a multi level marketing scheme, then don't use my affiliate link. Don't sign up for the creativity kit, even though there's a lot of value on that. The rest is basically teaching you how to make money from giveaways. Do a giveaway. All these iPhones, iPads, this, that, PS5, everything. Drop shipping. Shopify, drop shipping. It might look simple it might look really easy to do and that's because it is and farming social media you can buy like, a page like a meme page or anything like that grow the page and then sell on for more the more followers it has the more valuable it is eh, who cares you can probably watch a video about um all that stuff hey i mean even sneeko says the real value lies in his discord right i go on discord to network with people what's really important about making money is being surrounded by like-minded people everybody in the creativity kit discord is just like you has just learned the same information and wants to go and get it so let's talk let's network let's share knowledge and let's get this money i'll see you in there Hey, I want to wear a parachute scary like this. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be butt ass naked so the wind can just be hitting my balls and shit. Hey, bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! Yeah, Sneeko's Discord is one of the least productive places I could possibly imagine. I mean, half of the. No 
my discord is very productive and full of very enlightening well lots of enlightening moments let me tell you okay how do i say your name go conaru i'm very bad at saying names somebody spell this out for me because Brittany's an eighth grader thank you zero stress i'm glad to see people reacting to this thankfully even okay good 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 because i love reacting to content look i've oh my god this has been so interesting so far and it's very well done right you said, I think if the video is good enough, I can only gain more from people watching it, even though, even if it's through streamers. I agree with that. Okay, I agree with that business model. I agree. I feel that way. I, I mean, I always get a jump when people watch my stuff. So hopefully you'll get a jump as well. Um, Goka. Goka? I want to say Goku. Every time I see it, I'm like, Goku. Goku Naru. Goku, Goka Naru. Goka Naru. Goka. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Notifications are him getting pissed off at the members for not providing him content on a silver platter. I'm serious, okay? He's that lazy and Sick of Abba and Preach. Shout out to Abba and Preach. Send me the clips of the memes of all the shit they've said. His fat well wife and Abba milking and getting his ass ate. Okay, first of all, it'd be an honor to eat ass from Abba. But also, you don't know anything about Preach's wife. Shame on you. And also, yeah, like silly. He's like a little child, bro. Interesting. He literally gets pissed off at his members for not doing his job for him. I also love the time that he accepted a sponsorship from a private jet company and then sent it out to his Discord members. <laughs> Advertising private jets to people who paid him $250 to learn how to make money online. He then oh. wanted to flex himself at the club with new cars, on yachts, basically selling himself as a success story. Just another lesson that he learned from his rich friends. You want to become a millionaire, you have to become a millionaire. I mean, everyone knows that if you're going to sell a course on how to get rich, you got to at least pretend to be rich, right? True. 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 This is the greatest marketing. This is so true. No, guys, this is literally so true. And people eat that shit up. How many Instagrammers got to tell you how much of their shit is literally so fucking fake? You got to pretend like you're living the life you're not living until you can afford to live the life you can live. It's until you can live the life you pretend you're living. It's it's a weird fucking it's a it's so true. Because your shorts have to be You're broke and I'm up. You know, how else are you going to escape the matrix? So at the end of the day, what does Sneeko preach as the way to escape the matrix? Well, it's pretty simple. Dedicate all of your time to the matrix. The way to make it out is internet money. All this is what I fucking said, bro. Bubbles be the same, bro. Didn't we say that? We literally saw this in the hippie commune. They're like, we're going to escape capitalism by making our own business and selling our own hammocks. And I'm like, that's what I mean. Everybody goes, oh, I can you can't escape life. You must learn to suffer with wisdom. So suffering wisely. Okay, you must literally face your life. You cannot escape it. You cannot scam your way through it. You cannot avoid responsibility. You cannot do this. There is no fucking easy trick to fucking skipping the hardships of life. Life is just this, okay? This whole, like anyone who's trying to sell you a way to do anything without the responsibility of the action you take, anyone who's trying to sell you anything, any belief system that's trying to guarantee you something without the responsibility that comes with it, even if they pretend it's like, oh, I'm selling you responsibility. <laughs> okay. This is why it always like hedonists, Bugattis, materialism, all these people that are trying to sell you something that's about skipping the hardships or responsibility of life. Bro, you can't. Day, working on videos, talking about the program, and visualizing how I'm going to start making money. They'll tell you making all your money online. Start making money online. As a self-employed entrepreneur. So become an entrepreneur. Is the best way to live. Fuck a job. Internet money's away, bro. But to be honest, I think he's just trying to convince himself. They call me a peasant. Multi-millionaires look at me peasant. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I want to be rich like you. Tell me what to do. I'm switching my mindset and I'm starting to think like a millionaire. You're broke. And I'm up. I'm working, 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 working. Even when I'm relaxing. I don't want to waste any time anymore, right? I'm just echoing what they told me. <sighs> This is a guy who's constantly monetized his own love life. My last three long-term relationships were all very well documented online. Yeah, I have a, I have a couple girlfriends. One of them runs my Discord server. I have one that wants to become my assistant, and I'm training her to run my accounting. So I would bring them in my content. We do videos like, girlfriend cuts my hair. I might have talked about it on a podcast. It's true. Lots of people monetize their relationship. You know, I know I criticize people's relationships for a living, <laughs> which I love to do. But people in chat were like, oh, Brittany's relationship is on the internet, so she can't talk about other people's. Nah, I'm just smarter than all of you. 
and I'm monetizing my relationship for views because my marriage comes first. Like how many YouTube relationships do you see that monetize their love and relationship and they absolutely talk about how it impacts their relationship? Um, Casey Neistat talked about that with his wife and Casey said, oh, it started to weigh on the relationship. Even recently, I saw a great piece of wisdom from Papa Gut who said him and his wife were literally hesitating to talk about things in private so they could save it for the podcast, which ended up impacting their relationship long term. And I think that is such a wise thing to recognize because, yeah, like if you give all of your love and attention to work, the intimacy of a relationship is never going to happen in the closeness that it really needs in private. If you're that's what I'm saying, like if you're going to work, work. But if you're going to make it a priority, your relationships probably will suffer to an extent. It's why I prioritize my marriage. My friends and family understand that. And I prioritize my job right now. OK, but. Absolutely, Sneagle use that for views and absolutely people use it for views and absolutely everybody out here using it for views. Now you can do it in a way that's healthy, but the balance is key. And a lot of these people lose balance, bro. They lose the balance. Every family vlog, every couple, they tell you, they warn you, bro. They warn you. So just if you're going to share your relationship, that's valid. Just like balance, guys, balance. On the podcast, but not with me. It is what it is, man. If they were completely useless, I think that's not worth my time or theirs. So you're just using me. Love. who's alienated his own family with his arrogance i'm not going home for christmas i've been like you don't know that we don't know that we we don't know that we don't know if sneeko alienated them or he alienated them. we don't know that we don't know if sneeko's using this to push a narrative out that his quote progressive family won't talk to him anymore we don't know that right if sneeko's such a liar why are we trusting him on this narrative if sneeko's a liar why are we trusting any of these people as a narrative except the people who haven't talked Uninvited for Christmas. I remember telling my brother that cheated on the standardized test. He's like, why would you do that? Shut up. I called him a slur. Shut up. Up. So your brother's- He's in college and he should not Aww, be. Aww, cutie patootie. So he bought? <laughs> He's a bot. And he got boosted. My family got indoctrinated by the, the liberal bullshit. Who's only interested in befriending people on a similar path to him. Your friendships need to have mutual gain. You're That's really normal. That's every- most people do that. You need to be making money with your friends. Do we believe in the same thing so we can talk about the same thing? If there's no return on interest with the time spent, it's a waste of time. What are we going to be doing together if not working? Who's already coming up with reasons to not raise his own kids? You're going to emasculate me if I'm there all the time and I'm changing diapers. I am going to lose what makes me able to provide for the house. By the way, these podcasts too, that feel like Center, uh, uh, Fresh and Fit and Tate and all of them, like they're also at fault for boosting these guys, bro. I mean, I'm at fault. I took down my Sneeko podcast, to be fair. Um, I was too nice to him. And to be fair, it's because I'm such a mom, bro. He's just like a little kid. Just want to give him a noogie. He's so sweet. But also at the same time, like 2024, Brittany's a little, no. Okay. I'm going to hold you all accountable through my own values, bitch. His happiness, his self-worth is completely dependent on the numbers he sees on his screen. I was at my first 100k month of 350,000 subscribers mm -hmm. in three weeks. Big 500k, big half a bill of the second time. I just want to take a quick moment and say, if you ever hated on me, suck my dick. He's put his entire life online. Like a diary. I've grown up online. I've shared everything. So I'm not going to keep anything private. Yeah, I think that's what people don't really understand. I'm not going to keep anything private unless it's shit. Oh, yeah? Can I tell him what I know, bitch? I'm not going to keep anything private. Can I tell him what I know? All these guys, pay attention. Oh, my life's online. I'm totally transparent. Can Brittany tell them what they, she knows? Y'all shouldn't fucking tell me shit. And then your whole brand is, oh, everybody knows that already. Everybody knows that already. Oh, do they? I would love to see a video on it. I would love to see the details on the internet. Are they? This is what I'm saying. I'm looking at them like, you're lying too, bro. That's what I'm saying. They're all lying, bro. I'm never going to listen to anyone's secrets ever again. I hate knowing people's secrets. But let me just tell you this. Everything is not online. It never was. This whole, like, everything's online. And Sneeko's not the only one who does it. Okay, I'll tell you this right now. All my shit is not online because I have a private life. This is my job. Do you tell your job everything in your real life? No, because I'm not a fucking idiot. Only people who pretend to tell you everything at work. It's like an employee being like, yeah, boss, I'm totally transparent with you. Hey, why aren't you feeling good today? Ah, uh, it's just like a food poisoning. Bitch, I'm hungover. These boys be coming to work saying they got a bed bug, like a oh, bed bug. They've got a stomach bug. They're hungover. And everyone's just like, oh, they got a stomach ache. They're hungover. 
understand is that you have been very honest. But YouTube used to be like an extension of myself. And now he's trying to convince you to do the same. You gotta fix your fucking rookie wagey mindset. Yeah, personal brand, I think, so worthwhile sacrifice. You do sacrifice your privacy, and then also you get scrutinized. If you get over that, it's really worth it. What if my parents wouldn't let me not go to college? Don't listen to your parents. Just think it could be valuable looking for certain people. It's not. With the power of the internet, there's absolutely no reason to go to school. Especially if you don't know what you want to do, don't waste your time. All the time you spent is essentially like money being spent. If you, your relationships aren't transactional, then you're wasting your time and you're you're upholding a lot of relationships with people just for the fact that you have a history or you knew them for a long time. You're upholding them for the wrong reasons. So tell me, what is the escape? Do you think freedom is just acquired? No, freedom needs to be consistently earned. When you grow your personal brand, you know yourself become uh, an asset. Because to me, that sounds like someone who's deeper in the matrix than anyone working a nine to five. Amen. Amen, sister. A fucking men. No, don't listen. Again, not to be so religious because you know your girl an atheist, but growing up Catholic, growing up Muslim, growing up Jewish, I'm telling you, growing up anything, I'm telling you there's a reason there's a consistency with materialism being not a good thing, okay? Because again, the people who are the most trapped of in the world are the people drowning for the world's validation. The most humble, the most meek, the most thoughtful, those are the people who are spending time with their families, loving on people, doing good for communities, volunteering, teaching, being a part of actual society. The thing that is building society the most, like look, I don't have a building society job. I know I don't. Okay, I have a job that I'm hoping to help as many people as I can, but mostly I'm here because I love this job, right? Okay, it's good money. You guys are great. Like, I love this fucking job. But ultimately, the people that are the backbone of the world are people who are service workers, are people who are teaching, are people who are doing those nine to fives. Ultimately, society is built off those nine to fives. And so this idea that like, you know, oh, like that's like, oh, that's brokey. That's not this. They shouldn't even be broke. The system like should be paying them more. We absolutely should be like respecting those jobs more than these fucking gurus. But it's also a reflection of the majority. It is true that these people are making money off views and the people willing to buy their courses, which is fine. But you don't have to spend your money on these guys. These guys are not they do not have your best interest in mind. So instead of seeing them as someone who needs to go away, Look at them as people that like don't have your best interest in mind. The people who have your best interest in mind are going to be the community members that are going to have your children's interest in mind, the future in mind. Now that's going to deviate based off bubble and cultural expectation, obviously. So like the, you know, LGBTs are going to have a different idea of what's good for kids versus the conservatives. Okay. Obviously I'm progressive. I'd want to move in a progressive direction, but with an understanding that people and diversity is valid. So like religion, all that stuff can stay, whatever. But the point is, is like they have more of your interest in mind than the gurus and their fake jets, who they're renting and all this stuff. Like how many rich people, I don't even know how many fake rich people I have to meet in my life before I stop being shocked by it. I have literally been in $15 mansions and the guys are like, I definitely own this mansion. I'm like, oh yeah, these boomers, bro. I just Google, I'm like, it says you're renting. And they're like, like these boomers don't even know. We can tell when you're renting, bro. We could just look it up. But anyways, it doesn't matter. The point is, okay. Doom says, am I a bad person if I always keep to myself to the point where I barely interact with whatever community? No. I do not think you are a bad person because you are practicing your own version of harm reduction by not contributing negatively to your community. It is better to be like in your zen, in your peace, in your seclusion than to be an active part of society in a way that is detrimental. Like if you're going to participate in the community, be a good part of it. If you're not, it's okay to be alone. You're not obligated to be participating past that. Pay your tax, drive safely, be nice to people. You know what I mean? Like I never leave my house, Dooms. I never leave my house, girl. I love my house. I never leave. I love Croatia. It's a beautiful place. I like minding my own business here, right? But if I am going to go out in public, if I am going to socialize, I, I am a good neighbor. But yeah, I mostly stay inside too, girl. Living my life, watching my anime, watching my YouTube. Like that's the name of the game. That's why it never stops. At least they know they're not free. You just care about money, 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 money. Money buys freedom. You've just deluded yourself. Nobody grows up and like, I want to be a uh, kindergarten teacher. I want to be a, a plumber my whole life. Okay, I, I don't grow Yo, plumbers be making over six figures, bitch. You dumb for not wanting to be a plumber. That's what I'm saying. You guys are blue pill. The red pill is just the truth. That's the whole idea. It comes from the matrix. The red pill, the blue pill. The red pill wakes you up and you see the reality of the world. The blue pill is just being. Mm. Like I start to question if these guys have even seen the movie. It really felt like I was Keanu Reeves and this was Neo trying to unplug me and trying to help other people. 
you know, Neo and Morpheus, they're trying to free humanity, right? As the drones get locked up in their house, we're gonna get rich again and again and again and again, over and over. They want you to spend all your money in school, learning a stupid ass skill, and we can get out of that. I'm trying to encourage my chat to get money so we can get out of it. I mean, am I the only one who sees the obvious contradiction here? If you think you need millions and millions of dollars to be free, well, I don't think you're trying to escape the Matrix. You're just trying to get to a higher level within it. A fucking men. Rich as fuck. Rich people have made it out of the system. You know, you basically go from being whatever, an employee, a wagey, <laughs> to an employer. You have your own wages that work for you. I mean, that's literally just business as usual. This is exactly what I say when I'm like explaining the matrix to people. And they're like, but if everyone did this, it wouldn't work. And I'm like, exactly. That's why the system is in place. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> Good job, bud. Oh, and those uh, liberals that he's constantly complaining about? He's really not that different from them. You know, he'll complain about how they focus on identity Deadly politics. Look, I have a black friend, so I can champion for coloreds. Pride flag has become the cross for a lot of people. White people in the chat, type a one right now if you feel like you can't properly voice your opinion because they'll immediately call you alt-right. How they have too much trust in corporations. It's like Bill Gates and tech CEOs are running the world. These Yo, that editing, though. That editing's so good, bro. People have all the control. And point out their fixation on imposing rules. You can't fly if you don't take this. You can't go to school, can't go to restaurants. You have to keep in mind that him and his anti-establishment friends, they follow all those same protocols they're absolutely obsessed with identity you're not a real man man men are being men anymore and women are becoming men. this is what i'm saying bubbles be bubbling humans are being human i love a bubble i live in bubble you live in bubble and that identity part is a part of being human we all have identity we all believe in identity we all push identity these people who claim like my whole life's not about my identity oh really what church you belong to who you vote for who's your favorite football team don't fuck with me bro Men. They love, love when billionaires are running their government. W Trump. W Trump. And yeah, they love rules. Straight up. They love imposing their fucking rules on others. There's something we just shouldn't accept. You think gay is one of those things? Yeah. Do you think women should vote? No, absolutely not. Wouldn't it be great if Islamic law ruled over America? Women should vote, but a female's vote should be half of a man's vote because of selective service. But I also think that very few people should vote. As if a world ruled by them would be any better for anyone. You know, a landlord knows infinitely more about how the country works than a 19-year-old student. Good point. Hey, by the way, it's Nick's uh, birthday. You want to say happy birthday to Nick? Uh, sure. Happy birthday, Nick. Happy birthday, Nick. So as much as they want to posture and pretend like they're revolutionaries, there is a revolution starting. Can you feel the start of a revolution? But there's a revolution for the spiritual warfare going on and trying to fight the system? Then ask me to start a revolution. Uh, the revolution has begun. On a holy crusade. Like, they're trying to help people escape the Matrix. In reality, they are not- I swear, before they go on stream, they're like, bro, 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 we should talk about the crusade and uh, saving people from the Matrix. I swear they talk about what they're going to talk about. Then they go live and they just play up the characters. Not a threat to the establishment. There is not a revolutionary bone in this guy's fucking body. We're not here to change the world. We're here to make our Bag. None this guy's, none that guy's, none of them. You need the slaves. You need them. You want them. You make, you're frustrated. All these men, Justin Waller, all of them. I'm the most leaning on Justin Waller because I think he had a tough childhood. But otherwise, and they all had tough childhoods except for Sneeko. I don't know if Myron had a tough childhood, but I know Justin Waller and Tate did. How about that? I know they had a tough childhood, both of them, right? Their, um, their parents sucked in different ways. And they were raised in broken homes for the most part with uh, shitty parents, kind of. So that's that sucks. Um, but also, you know, um, they both love their dads who both were kind of losers. But anyways, okay, so like peace and love, right? I don't know your dads. I'm sure they're, from how you describe them, losers. But anyways, I look at neurodivergent too. Justin Waller's ADHD. He's neurodivergent too. I wonder if Tate is a neurodivergent. They're all fucking nerd. I'm telling you, they're all fucking nerds. Myron's a nerd. Fresh is a nerd. I'm telling you, they're all fucking nerds that mimic what they think cool guys are like. And teenage boys fall for it because they think that's what cool guys are like. And then they fake being cool guys with getting the right hair and clothes and like ways they speak. They basically convince women to be around them. Our women have so low self-esteem. They decide to associate with these men. I'm telling you, they're all fucking nerds that know how to work out. And then she, they literally convince their viewers that they're, they're losers who grew up in shitty neighborhoods with shitty parents who never loved them, with shitty educations, being neurodivergent as fuck, like wanting to do threesomes and sleep with men. All of them, they got stories. Myron got pictures of him kissing men. Everybody got fucking gay stories, which I love. And then like literally, now they're just on the internet convincing you they're the cool kids because they rent some Bugattis or bought some Bugattis with some bullshit money they made. Beautiful. I love that. Listen, if you want to play in this bubble, play in this bubble, girl. But they're all losers, okay? Fucking losers. And you know what my dad calls a man who cheats? A rat. So as far as my dad's concerned, they're all rats because they all fucking cheat too, okay? They're rats, losers, no discipline, bro. They can't even keep it in their pants, bro. They're literally controlled by their dicks, bro. They do sound gay. I'm just kidding. <laughs>
I'm just kidding. I love my gays. I'm just kidding. There's too many slaves. I promise you, my friend. <laughs> you want the slaves. You need to have, you need to have 95%. They're not even hard, so they're, they're just NPCs. NPCs are really Yeah, I guess. Let the wages be wages and just fucking hire them. So then you take a step back and you realize, here we have a guy who claims that he can help you escape the Matrix. He's going to a bunch of people and calling them NPCs for basically supporting the status quo. Not realizing, apparently, that every fucking aspect of what he is doing is completely and utterly in fucking service to the status quo. So really, when you stop and think about it, He's more of like a poorly programmed NPC. Mm. Oh, bright, uh, uh, bright flashing lights. Nobody get triggered. Ready? Nice. I didn't set out to uh, have some like grand moral fucking victory over Sneeko. I pretty much was just looking for a fight. And uh, to be honest, I'm still looking. How was that for you, huh? <laughs> Me personally, I had a blast. But uh, either way, hopefully you're gonna stick around and see what happens next because uh, if it isn't obvious at this point, I'm just getting fucking started. Damn. Damn. Okay. Well. Oh. Wait, it's not done. Wait, fuck me. Oh. Oh, that's hard. A little bot. Bot globe. W clown hat. Oh, am I just a clown? I sometimes have moments of such Wait! Sh 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 what? 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 Yo! Code, like Wait, robot. that was hard, bro. Moral. That went hard, bro. That was so good. Okay, I'm gonna subscribe. I'm gonna like this video, guys. I'm gonna put the link in the chat once again. And the man himself was here which we love to see content creators in the chat. We appreciate that always. Guys, check out the link. Make sure I sent the right one, right? Wait, did I just post the right one? That kid. 
That kid, Sneeko. I can't believe Joe Rogan. No, no Sneeko's name, bro. Okay, I'll put the link in the chat, guys. Go like it. Go leave a comment. Go do something. Boost his algorithm. Oh, he's still here. Thank you for watching. If you ever want to see the ending is alluding to looking up. Okay, I'm going to look this up. I recorded my action to the stream while on a voice call. Little did I know Sneeko would rather private the stream leaving me as the only non Sneeko simp willing to post the footage. I've removed as much of my commentary as I could and patched the audio the best of my ability. The stream would have been lost media if I wasn't recording. Whatever audio could not be saved, I added subtitles to enjoy. What? One day of eating as a gulag prisoner. My captors haven't fed me for a while, so I started digging through the piss cave looking for rocks. I like to suck the minerals off of them and then spit- Oh, so Sneeko's reacting to him. ...them out. Just kidding, I'm a fucking man. No spitters in here, right, Sneeko? They felt bad after watching me swallow the rocks, so they gave me some oatmeal, and it was pretty good. Just kidding, that shit was drier than Sarah Safari's pussy after a signature Sneeko slap. Uh, I guess it's time for my weekly shower. Finally around lunch, they gave me some jam, so I got to work making Charlie's signature gulag protein shake. Now you might be asking, Charlie, where'd you get the protein? And well, it's pretty simple. Fuck off, I'm not telling you. For dinner, they just chucked a bag of coke at me. It's not Christmas, so there must be a reason why they want me to relapse. Throughout my time in the gulag, I've maintained an active income, gotten in better shape, in on NoFap, and gotten closer to God. It's yes, honestly sir. crazy what you can accomplish with just hard work and a clear mind, so I don't need this. I ended off the night doing some painting, and... Okay. That smells kind of nice. Well, I mean, this is an eating video, right? What's the harm in having a little taste? If I die, just tell them it was a coke overdose. Or the Jews. What?! Where am I? Uh. video game. I'm on fucking Kobo. What, bro? Yo, it's like a Saw movie right now. <laughs> it's like a Saw movie. Oh my god. Do I do it? Fucking work has What the fuck he said or what did he say? Hold on, the audio is muted right now. Yes or no, yes or no. Oh for no idea what he said. Yes, 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 of course. Oh my god, it's so loud. Hold on. Well, I, I just I just friended him. Tell him to friend me. For, I don't know what he said. <clears throat> I'm calling. It's a trap. It's a trap. I'm calling White Rabbit. Sneakle kind of look like a rabbit, bro. Chat, what the fuck is this? No one's picking up. Hello. I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. Uh, what's Thank up? You for following the way I'm here. Are you ready what? to what? Are you ready to what? Hold on. I'm missing shit too. Hold on. Hello, Fico. Uh, what's Thank up? Thank you for following the way I'm at. I'm here. Are you ready to begin? Am I what? Are you ready to begin? I'm ready to begin. Who is that? Don't worry oh, about that. Don't worry about that. Come on. Question one. Where is you, babe? It's right here. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, this is like 7D chess, bro. That's the thing at the end of the first video, bro. Perfect. Question two. Can you name three Roman emperors? Julius Caesar, um, Brute, the guy who killed him. 
and Augustus. Marcus Aurelius. Okay, yeah, I got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got it, I got it, okay. So that's good. Question three. What did Zeus say to Narcissus? What did Zeus say to Narcissus? Um, if I get this wrong, is he gonna die? Like, what happens if I don't get this? What did Zeus say to Narcissus? Um, stop being so narcissistic. I'm joking. I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. God, help! You're saying these nuts. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> No, someone... What is it? Is this a bomb? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. That's what he said. That is correct. Don't kill that guy, man. What's the next question? Question four. What is the most predictable of all human responses? What is the most predictable of all human responses? Uh, fear. The most predictable of all human responses. Um, chat, help me right now, help me right now. What the fuck? I don't know, I don't know. Tell me. Tell me. Fear, 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 fear. Thank you for your response. Is that right? Okay. Why am I holding this? Do I need to hold this, White Rabbit? Oh my god. He's Get dying, he's dying. Get rid of it. Get rid of, him. of the thing. He, he... Question five. What do all men with power want? More power. What do all men with power want? Mm. Correct. Yep. Sneak will be on top of him, bro. Look at him. He's like, I know things. You feel like you're in control? Yes. <laughs> Is this an IQ test again? Am I going to get screenshotted? <laughs> Fuck! So is Sneeko right now playing along with it? And is that why Sneeko's like fun? Because he'll play along with things? Or am I too, right? I'm assuming like Sneeko doesn't know what's happening, right? But that's like the question. Does, is he just playing along naturally? Right? Because he must think it's like a skit, right? I don't know. Is there another question? Hello? Question seven. What is the matrix? What is the matrix? What is the matrix? Did you just ask me that? The matrix. The matrix is Zionism. What? Thank you for your response. What? Yo, angle that one. Uh, he said, ain't gonna lie, you're slow with these questions, Rabbit. Question eight. What did the devil really give to Adam? Eve. I'm joking. Uh, uh, um, what did the devil really give to Adam? Well, he tried to give the apple, but he didn't take it. Choice. Free will, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did you say? Yes or no? Wait. Apple, yeah. Free will, exactly. Who was the who was the voice? Fuck! Fuck! Um, um, free will! Choice! Knowledge! Choice! 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 Fuck! Uh, it, this, this is it choice? He's not. Question nine. Okay, he's not there. Would you like to speak to him? Yes. Oh wait, someone's calling me? Uh, you're the Charlie, the Gulag prisoner. What, what, what happened? Uh, I don't, I'd rather not talk about it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> this is Sneeko, right? Yes, yes, it's Sneeko. Oh, okay. Do you think you're a good person? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. 
I wish I could say the same. Uh, do you believe someone can ever, be... Uh, to be beyond redemption? Beyond redemption. E is there too far? No, I think everybody can be redeemed. Do you really no, believe no. that? I, I personally so. don't, but... You do. That's I think fair. it's the right thing to believe. <laughs> okay. But I'm asking you. Me personally, no. I, I, I don't, if I want to be honest, but I think it's a flawed belief that I have. But no, I, I think I think there are some people are too far gone. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well. I are you okay? To... Are you? What's going on? Do you need me to help you? What do you want me to do? Um. I think you should just. Um. Just answer. Answer honestly. I think you should. You should just. Um. Uh, just go with. Go with what you you believe. Or. or I don't know. Just. Do what you want to do. Huh? Okay, there's 12 seconds. On, okay, yeah, yes. There's, there's, yeah, some some yeah. people cannot be redeemed. Okay, let's go. All right. All right. Ah. And you're dead. Okay. What's up, White, White Rabbit? Um, it's me and you. Question turn. Okay. Will you open the briefcase? I will open the briefcase. I didn't even notice it was there. Uh, open. Open sesame. Oh, I can tell because there's editing on the screen. <laughs> it's too smooth. Yeah. <laughs> the way Sneeko's even getting into it. Okay. Nice fine, plug. Fine. <laughs> Audio's muted. Uh, it's just it's just a channel. I surprise. Wait. Nice promo, nice promo. L funnel. I didn't know. I really didn't know what I was getting into, but uh, that was fun. I'm gonna get rid of that um, that snow cone, or whatever. Pull that thing. Oh, okay, so white rap. Not sure what he said. That kid named Sneeko. I don't know what that kid thought. First of all, he's so silly for doing that, for agreeing to do that with Sean Strickland. You're about to have a really bad day. Yo, this is recent, bro. I'm so confused. Did this just happen like yesterday? Is that what Sneeko looks like now? Wait, now I'm super lost. This just happened. If Sneeko can see this video. How that guy's doing right now? Not doing well. Oh my god. Because it's so hard to watch. What he beats that guy. Chat, this video is two hours long. Ain't no way, bro. Should I have let this guy die during that challenge? Damn, he got that Sneeko marketing, bro. Yo, that's why he gets Sneeko so well. Look at that, he's good marketing, bro. Look at him coming into my chat, bro. Marketing genius, bro. Look at him, the way he's got us watching two of his videos in a stream, bro. Is he still in my chat, bro? Look at you, Sneeko Jr. over here. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I wonder if Sneeko, I wonder if Sneeko, a part of him is depressed that he's not making content like this anymore. And this guy is. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if, if, if he's jealous of Goka for making like content the way he used to make content in a way. I think, I think Goka might be better. Goka Naru, Naru might be better. In terms of like his music production is pretty fucking good. His editing's for like surreal almost. But so like I would say that he's 
better than Sneeko in a lot of ways in terms of filmmaking, but Sneeko was making really good content. I wonder if Sneeko sees this and misses it, you know? Friends. Nice. What am I looking at? Bryson says he's out here moving us like pieces on a board. Bro, we're part of the skit now. Bro, we just got like fucking, we're part of it, bro. What the fuck am I? Oh my God, so loud. I know Sneeko likes it. I know. I know he knows quality when he sees it. Continue, yes or no? Feels good to be back. Self-help as a genre has gone through a lot of evolutions throughout my time on the internet. There's always been prophets and preachers, truth seekers and self-deceivers. With the amount of options and personalities available to you, it can be pretty easy to get lost in the sauce. The Bible says God created the world in 24 hour increments. Evolution is nonsense. Equal rights can also mean equal fucking lives. I'm actually gonna teach you how to grow a bigger pee pee. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck! But uh, I'm not really interested in giving you some objective analysis of all the self-help content available to you. It doesn't really interest me. In fact, if I'm being completely honest, right now, well, I'm just looking for a fight. <laughs> Let's see, who's there to take on? There's the Death Star Delt himself. I will butt fuck you, dude. <laughs> There's Adonis. I've been a little bitch my entire life. There's a testicle munching <laughs> false god. The man has been eating cow testicles. I mean, there's plenty of options. There's really. no way. Thanks, Nico. How's it going, man? You wanna know why I picked you? It's pretty simple, really. You and I, we have a lot in common. We both got ourselves- Is this no, no, no. my fucking house?! Making Call of Duty videos, we both learned and grew on YouTube. We gained popularity for our opinions, but also, because we've got style. Our viewers have seen our highs and our lows, and we wear our flaws like badges of honor. Same height, same age, both addicted to coke. Hey, but that's enough about me, okay? Let's take a look at who you are. Nico is a thought leader who lives by trying to Nico, seek the truth. Even though Nico was born on September 8th, 8th when he first joined the Kissing Forum on April 9th, he helped truth. Don't talk about the issues. All right, that's enough. Sneeko, you already know who you are, right? Who am I? Right? You see, despite the projection that he's always tried to maintain of himself as, you know, an independent creator, a free mind, a thought leader, Sneeko has always been looking for a master. That's what I'm saying. You know how Sneeko says, like, this stuff isn't as, like, um... Creative, like, fulfilling for him how he's just making money now. I wonder if he's going to make as much money as he wants and then bail and go back to creative stuff. I do wonder that. You know, someone to raise him up, to lead him down a path of success. That's right. Sneeko's always been looking for it. You see, Sneeko, you found that with Mr. Beast. With Mr. Beast, it was crazy because I knew him for years. And then out of nowhere, he blew up. Anyhow, which was a great opportunity. He paid me well, but it hurt your ego for him to go from being your peer to your employer. I just couldn't get over the fact that I was working for them instead of with them. I didn't want to be the guy in Mr. Beast's videos. I wanted to be Mr. Beast. The last video we did together got crazy views. It was number one on trending. But then I didn't get the call back to work with him again that summer. His manager said, nah, you don't need to come anymore. Never mind. I don't think I'm getting the credit I deserve. So naturally, you made an exposed video on him. Right after I got fired, I was tight. I made well. like a, a Mr. Beast exposed video trying to like get some redemption from it. It's funny that he actually video. Videos. Nobody saw it, bro. Don't make that video. Don't try to expose him. But I did it anyway. You found that with Keemstar. I, I had an opportunity to work for him. I got the job. You see how he screamed like, nobody saw my video. Nobody even saw it. Right away. You wanted me to do a reading. I did the reading and he didn't like it. And then when I told you it wasn't good privately, instead of taking that as professional criticism, I just thought, who's this guy to tell me my work isn't good? You couldn't accept the fact that you did a bad job. I'm the talented one. Heard I was talented my whole life. Glad that it was bad because I'm not on his channel right now. And then you made an exposed video about him. So I made an exposed video on him too. I wanted views and subs. And I disguised it as this whole morality thing. Like, I'm too good for this content. What happened was I realized that you are not someone that I should associate with. Don't cry, dude. I'm just enjoying watching Sneeko react. Like, his face, he's not saying much, but just watching his face is interesting. But that isn't the reason I didn't get the job. I don't like Keemstar. You gave me the finger. You, you disrespected Look me. Look a little. Just, wasn't good enough. just to show everyone here what a fucking ungrateful person you are, your channel got shut down. Me and my team sat there and worked. He's not talking. It's muted. I can't hear him. Oh, he fucking reacted and I couldn't hear him. Because it just goes to show what a dishonest, unloyal, untrustworthy person you truly are, Sneeko. He found one in Andrew Schultz. Yeah, this happened repeatedly. Andrew Schultz. Schultz me a job, like an editing job. But he was too Jewish, so he made an exposed video about him. I sent, like, laughing emojis when I said no. That's what you get, you cocky bitch. You fucking Waluigi-looking cunt. Dave Chappelle. Gave me this $100 bill. It says, 
Dave Chappelle. But apparently he talks about trans people too much. It's weird because like he said that he made this whole thing about kindness and then did 30 minutes of trans jokes. Chappelle's last special was very mid, yo. It's just like, why do you keep talking about trans people over and over again? Oh. It's just like, yo, shut up about trans people. This fucking idiot, that fucking idiot, you're super shameless about who you'll fucking latch on to. So, he started streaming and that- <laughs> This is I can't even, it's very fitting that there were TTSs earlier in the stream complaining about me not making art pieces anymore. This is really well made. Two there hours is nuts, bro. Am I gonna cry? Why? Yeah, yeah. I figured I figured Sneeko would say that. He would say it was well made. It is well oh made. Oh my god, bro. When he discovered a truly worthy sensei, a wise man who opened his eyes to the true nature of the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're rogue. You're poor. <laughs> Daddy. Bro, stop saying I have fucking. Bro, I, but my dad oh, is my dad. Fuck. Daddy. I don't need a father figure. I my dad is my dad. The fuck? Yeah, he's got a dad. My role model. That's. I don't understand why this comparison. This is not. This is. This is, this is oh, he does have a dad. He should go home to him. Oh my God, bro. I want to tell you. How do you know everything about my fucking life? My boy. Yes, daddy. <laughs> this girlfriend, I really like her, but she has these male friends. Make her choose. You were the friends. She's gonna fuck one of them eventually, otherwise. Like, what are you delaying this for? She obviously is gonna get drunk one night and suck some dick. Oh my god, dude. Did he make a song? I, let her out of my sight. I literally agree with everything he's saying. <laughs> dude, I wanna learn this. You think Tate is goofy? Who the fuck do you like? Who do you oh. look up to? I don't look up to anyone, bro. You should have a role model. Why? Every man should have a role model. Or else, how do you act? How do you big act wrong? Someone like this. This is my fucking boy. I can't watch this, bro. I can't watch this, bro. I can't watch this, bro. Yeah, right? Yeah. Man, people who don't understand the appeal of Tate are so out of touch with this. <laughs> Tate lives the exact lifestyle that young kids have been programmed to desire since they were fucking born. He's rich as fuck. He's uh, a fucking kid yeah. named Sneeko. I don't know. Dude. Oh, my God, dude. I don't look up to anyone, bro. It's your it's like fast fortunes. I mean, hell, he's even having sex with the girls in these kids' classes. Her hall. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck about me. 21, I don't care. If he were to start lying and saying, I'm fucking all these 15 year old, not 15, sorry, 16 year old women or 18 year old women. <clears throat> it's even funnier the second time. It really is. It is a funnier, it's a funnier video the second time, especially with Sneeko in the corner. For the law is America. 18? It's 18 usually. You 18. get married at 16. All right, in Romania, 16. Sorry. So Vivian's been with me six years. She's completely out of her heels. Love me. She wants kids with me. Everything, everything, everything. And we met and we whatever, we're in love. When I bring on new girls, I usually pair them with This is the echo chamber that I'm talking about. This guy made a fucking documentary about. Okay, no, no, oh, God. Because <clears throat> Vivian's younger. Melissa's like 28, Vivian's like 21. Bruh. One of my main chicks has 200,000 Instagram followers, and I took her virginity when she was 17. I want to earn my respect. Well, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <Whoa! laughs> I think, I think, chat, this is the first time. It's a, sometimes you guys walk the Red Bull race come back. I think we hit full circle. I think the echo chamber has reached full. Like we, we started. This is this is the pinnacle. We reached the end point. End point. Don't skip. You guys all wanted to skip in the beginning, and now everyone's in oh, Now the chat's moving. Two. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be like that. So it's no wonder why kids and this idiot would defend him to the death. He's their ideal. Ego. This idiot. Is this a fucking hit piece? <laughs> Dude, you're gonna call me? You mailed me a, a snow globe. <laughs> an attack on Tate is an attack on their identity. Like a lot of people think like you too. They're like, I don't agree with everything he says. I'm on fucking Kobo. Watch, bro. Fire, too. I added this fire. hit piece I've ever seen. I'm never streaming again. Bro. I got jumped. Wish this was real. Really hope this is real, not gonna lie. What are you, a heat aid? A bullet should have been used. You see that chat? Bots. And God's gonna frown on you forever for that. The world is healing, yeah, and you're broke. <laughs> NPCs. Bots. And this is why you need to be wary about what you do on social media and celebrate somebody's death. Oh god, oh my god, I can't, bro. I, I can't, dude. I can't. I can't. And wish death upon him. Say, like, it's next time I should have been a bullet. <laughs> Your life sucks. Nothing happened to me. I'm a good person. Sneakle loves it, bro. I got angels watching me. You'll pray. Pray to God. God's not listening. This is the God stream. <laughs> Suck my dick. Oh! What the fuck? 
Skip or no chat? Oh. Oh. oh I'm never. But what do you think I everything? Jesus was there to spread his message. Muhammad was a prophet. We are all his creation. Bro, how did you do this much analysis on everything, dude? Holy shit. Stop skipping. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, let me pee real quick. Let me pee real quick. Okay, then we're gonna <laughs> work in. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'll, uh, uh, fuck. Let me just pee. Let me just pee. And I'll just play the shit I skipped. Fine, fine. Okay, well, I pee. It's not worth it. A lot of people are very angry at me. Um, a lot of Ahmed's and Mohammed's are in my DMs. Um, they're, they're very different. I'm getting a lot of difference, personally. Um, Islamic people take their religion very seriously. They're, they're, they're a religion of people. They're told to act um, in violence if. Uh, I'm gonna skip. Cause it's just the video. I want Sneeko to come back here. Sneeko's back. Have room to a dossier on your real. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It's muted. It's not you guys. I'm not hearing anything. Any fucking idiot. There goes. I can say no shit. Don't anywhere on the internet. I have his okay. fucking. Okay. I. His ex girlfriend. <laughs> fucking all of it. Standard <laughs> protocol. I'm all of it. I'm all everything. Because I'm all. Find out shit. This dude's just okay. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This dude's a fucking weirdo. So wait, 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 wait. Okay, I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is a fucking. Okay, at 789 views, 20 minutes, he sent this video to Sneeko. What the fuck? Is this planned? Bitch, it was Sneeko. Is this planned? How the fuck did he get Sneeko to react to this video on stream and with the 20 minutes of uploading this video, got Sneeko to start watching it on stream? That's wild, bro. And now I'm watching it four days later. Kit shows up in my chat. All of a sudden, we're watching this video. It is the the Matrix is real, bro. The Matrix is real. That's a joke. Matrix is not real. Weirdo. I want to join. Good to meet you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Social media influencer Andrew Tate has been. A Like I can't even tell if he's a if he's a fan or if he's a hater. Like what the fuck, bro? In the video, he talks about how you can lie about how much taxes you're paying on. Mm -hmm. What law is that breaking? It's, it's illegal to make girls fall in love with you for the express purpose of bringing them back to another country to make them work as cam girls. Yes, it's called sex trafficking. That's yeah. not sex trafficking. It's called pimping. Yes. Uh, you never had a girl okay. fall in love with you. Tate actually say he took their passports. Yes, he did say that. Okay, so that's how they can't leave. Then he actually takes the passports. And he probably lies oh. and he says it's for tax reasons. They could ask for it back. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we would make a great double date. I like you on the left. Girls, I'm gonna kiss you guys. How old are you? Underage. Well, oh. you just uh, like, yeah, like how, how how underage though? Like, like your birthday's next week type shit. Yeah, I'll be turning 15 in a month. Change my state of mind. Ladies and gentlemen, he got him. <laughs> <laughs> he got him. Look, here's the most important thing to understand about Snake. Who he talks to. He's a chameleon, constantly trying to fit in with whoever interests him that week. I mean, there is a catch every right. wave. He'll happily thinks is cool scrapping his prior code like a good robot i mean he talks to this guy the bot is got one you know two hours of this is not like if you don't like this is what i don't get about a lot of the people that say they're haters and then like you've seen every single thing but you claim to holy shit imagine carrying what Interesting. Yeah, no, bro. This, this... Dude, like, at the same time, like, you sound like a hater, but you mailed stuff to me in my P.O. box. Hmm. It is an interesting question. It's muted. Oh, no. it's like, wait, oh. Yeah. <clears throat> the absolute annihilation of Sneeko. Like, he, but it's, it's this is like the weird part about the internet because how you're saying the absolute audio is blocked. I can't hear it. Like you've seen every there single is. detail of my life, of everything I put out on the internet. But you say like you don't like me, but you've seen everything. Clearly, it's been a giant source of entertainment.
<laughs> like he did a parody of my stream intro song. It's muted. I can't hear it. <laughs> can't hear it. Can't hear it. Nothing's coming in. No sound. There you go, sound. No sound. Yeah, I can't hear it. <laughs> Holy shit. No sound. So, so why do you, like, I don't get it sound. about that. Yeah. Why, why are you so invested if you believe this? Mm -hmm. I really think we're invested because it's like reality TV with similar levels of fakeness, but more real. But there is a fakeness to YouTube, right? There is a fakeness to Sneeko and all of us to an extent. I mean, I'd like to think we're not all fake, <clears throat> but some of us are like reasonably private. But I would say that it's more interesting because it's like it feels more real. Like this feels more like we're interacting in layers with each other in a real way. And at the same time, I can't tell. It almost feels hugely orchestrated. Like a part of me thinks Sneeko's in on it. But of course, like, I don't know that. And if he's not in on it, it's also like so wonderfully made. And so you also got to like give credit to like how perfectly the universe syncs up in a way. Like he mailed this thing. He got him to open it. He did it on stream. The video went live. He's watching it. He's skipping to the best parts. Is he going to stick around to see the snow globe? Like that's the thing. Like that's the thing that I'm waiting for. Is Sneeko going to stick around long enough to see the snow globe? And like, what are the chances? And this is this like Sneeko reacting? On, like, there's so many questions I have just watching this alone. Okay, can't hear it. Can't hear it. Can't hear it. <laughs> Jreg, bro, can't hear it. Oh, Gokunaru says, believe it or not, he was not in on it. This is crazy. Like, this is the gods were watching on me favorably that night. Bro, this, this is so, how did you even know Sneeko would, like, end up watching it? How did you do the timing, like, favorably? I, I think I read it right. But, like, yeah, like, how did you even know? Like, everything that, it, it's almost too good to think that it happened organically. But, I mean, I believe you if you say this all happened organically. This is insane. I do think Sneeko misses making art videos, though. I do. Can hear it. Can't hear it. Oh, he didn't stay. Damn, I want him to see the globe. Go back up, ho. Yeah, well. This has got to be like a... Did I let somebody put a camera in my house? Rabbit. That shit is the definition of parasocial, bro. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Gokunaru says, uh, my thinking was this. If I know what his chat would do, I know what he would do. I knew his chat would want to play the game, so he would. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. Like, I am fascinated and the little bit I know Sneeko, I, I do feel like I'm holding out for him to go back to his roots. But then, like, it's interesting. Um, are you, are you, um, do you, do, do you talk to YouTubers? Do you want to come on my, uh, are you on Discord? Do you want to Discord me and talk to me? I want to know, like, you don't have to. I just want to know, like, um, I want to know what the point of this was for you like truly right you must have something in mind I know you said you wanted to help people who were kind of going over to the Sneeko Tate side but also do you have some thing you're holding out for like did you and like you and Sneeko are both creatives did that stand out to you were you trying to match his energy or were you guys or you see somebody like who came up with you so you kind of feel like your peers <clears throat> Can't hear it. There's no sound. Yeah, no, that's that. Right. 
a while. I mean, like, all right, good effort into the video. All right, not right now. You don't have time. That's awesome. If you do in the future, let me know. No pressure, of course. Um, but thanks for sticking around and chat, and thanks for sending me the video, the second one. Uh, I'm glad I found your original one. It showed up on my timeline, so your video is going to get around. I'm sure it's going to. I'm sure it's going to do great. And if you're connected to J Reg, you're in good company. Um, thanks for being in chat. I appreciate it. Please enjoy your night. Shit is creepy. Yo, the fucking is this his desktop? Is this his fucking desktop? Oh my anxiety. <sighs> Oh my god, my anxiety. Is this his desktop? Oh my god, it needs to be organized. Mine is all in full. Oh man. <laughs> you um Goku Naru says, uh or Goku Naru says, but yes, it's about making a spectacle, showing respect as an artist, but also trying to prove an edgy progressive perspective. Young dudes like edgy stuff. Hey, that's true. You did a good job. That's like the type, that's the reason like people like that generally chat are like the reason that I walk around with the gun everywhere I go. Genuinely. Oh my god, where'd the video go? Fuck. The video always does that. Sometimes YouTube, like, the video comes down for some reason. I don't know fucking why. It's okay. You didn't miss anything. Sneaker releases the VOD and react to it video in full. RIP bot. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're done. That was crazy. And cool on you for being in chat. I appreciate it. Um, Like I said, go check him out. You guys want the link to a second channel? This is like the secret channel. You guys want a link to it? Here, I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link. The link is down below. Go check out the link, cause you're a hoe. Go check out the link. Restless says sad part, Brit, is a lot of desktops look like that. You know, honestly, no judgment, y'all. If you want to keep your desktop messy, fucking go for it. Um, okay, so you guys always ask me, because I know a lot of people like Abba and everybody's always questioning me about my fucking relationship with Sneeko. Look, I haven't talked to this kid in like a year, bro. Okay, peace and love. I literally have not talked to Sneeko in fucking forever. I don't even know the last time, okay? But yes, I'm still holding out for him. Yes, I still want the best for him. Yes, I think he's 25 fucking years old. And in 10 years, I'm hoping he's a different person. Obviously, bro. Obviously, I think humans are going to human. I really think we're like these little evolved animals on a planet. And we're all just trying to figure it out. And some people know a little bit more than other people. And everybody should be sharing their knowledge. But also, there's a lot of bias and prejudice and fucking liars, bro. And there's a lot of just fucking defeatists. I think people who end up going like not the total scam route but kind of like make as much money as possible money's the only thing that matters route i think those people truly think this is the only game to play and the way that people who absolutely never try a day in their life also think that's the only game there is to play i think the game of life is so nuanced and vast and you have so many fucking options and it really is up to you what game you want to play. But also, like, Sneeko always was going to be Sneeko and Andrew Tate was always going to be Andrew Tate. You can't be different than who you are. You can only change your perspective. And changing your perspective is really fucking difficult. It, it takes a lot of fucking work, you know? But I think Sneeko's got it. I do. I do think he has it. He's young. If he was older, maybe I'd be hesitant. I'm still holding out for Destiny. I'm still holding out for Trisha. I still think these people have so much potentiality to be so much more but at the same time like they're good enough the way they are because all humans are good enough the way they are they really are the bear is perfect the way it is but you know sometimes i dream about hugging a bear that won't eat me i really do dream of hugging a bear bro do you know that's one of my dreams i just want to hug a bear once in my life you know they never they never kill you on the first hug so i figure if i hug the bear once I can say I hug the bear. It's when you hug a bear for the hundredth time, the bear ends up killing you that hundredth time. But you can't even be that mad at it because it's like a bear. You know, it's like when you swim in the ocean, how mad are you really that a shark ate you? It's kind of like it's rare, but it happens. But also like, you know, you know, like what are you going to do as a shark? What are you going to do? Same with humans. Eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We, we risk our lives every day, bro. <laughs> Just interacting with people. Eh, what are you going to do, you know? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of breathing.
reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.